stupidity and then publicly trade the company so that you can invest in human p stupidity in the stock market and um, immediately, <laughs> that's just crypto, shut up. <laughs> right after that, uh, we would get so much investment from uh, the Wall Street bets, guys, like they, that we could memeify the crap out of it. It'd be great. How you doing over there, Black Flag Redneck? Thanks for tuning into your YouTube stream. Uh, let, let's play some Dwarf Fortress, shall we? I mean, here's the thing. Rockets are supposed to take off and go into orbit, fly around, and then come back down. They're not supposed to just blow up. If they're just blowing up, you're actually in the pyrotechnics industry and not in the space travel industry. No, I don't want to make the NFT boom. I just want to. I just want somebody to state out loud, unironically, that they just invested in human stupidity. Uh, also, King Neokai, hello. How are you doing? Speaking of human stupidity, is anybody else like quietly actually very sad that like Atari didn't make a bunch of hotels at Vegas? <laughs> is, is anybody else like kind of quietly sad about that? Because genuinely. Occasionally, I have to go to Las Vegas for work and other things. I am genuinely sad that that project never went anywhere. Like, genuinely. I, I just, more than anything, I wanted Atari to open an Atari-themed casino hotel in Las Vegas just so that I could walk in and be like, wow, that's a, they have a centipede-themed room. You didn't know that was a thing? Just Google Atari hotels. I mean, it, it never turned into anything, but... I'm pretty sure it's like a different. Yeah, they still the website's still up. <laughs> Stay and play. See, Atari hotels. Like it, it, the website still exists. Obviously, it never went anywhere. But like, I don't know. They were like, originally they were like, we're gonna put them all over North America in different cities, and then that didn't happen. And then they were like, we're gonna put it in Vegas, and then that didn't happen. Um. Also, how the fuck are you supposed to sleep in this thing with all those lights? Jesus. Um. So, yeah, obviously it never happened, but. My words? I'll tell you for a fact, I personally have not st started any wars in the last 90 minutes. We're in the DBZ park th theme. You know, honestly. Rest in peace, Akira Toriyama. Like, uh, re rest in peace. So honestly, maybe we should have a DBZ theme park. But see, in reality, why a DBZ theme park and not a Dragon Quest theme park? Just saying. Not really. If I was waging war, I would have been making videos attacking people which I didn't do, if you watched the video. I had to vent that out of my system and some people are taking it way out of proportion, which, okay, sure. But no, I'm not raging war against anybody. What, you okay? In that same uh, place that they're building the F1 track in Saudi, you know. Oh, okay, sure. I, I mean, fine. They have unlimited money and no brain cells, so naturally they would do things like that. You know, I, I've stated many times, we're never going to get a Dwarf Fortress theme park because this subject comes up, like, weirdly frequently. But what I can say... Why, why not... Why, 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 why can't Dwarf Fortress get just, like, an anthology series of animated TV shows? Like that, I like I want. Okay, I want Love, Death, plus Robots on Netflix, but Dwarf Fortress. That's that's all I actually like when it comes to like like not like non video game Dwarf Fortress updates things. Oh no, trust me. But like, there's times where I go, I would like to change the subject without explicitly stating that, and that's what that attempt was, which is dodging blame for being blamed for starting wars, ironically, and then moving on with a different subject. So, simple, you know?
and say, let's make a TV show. Yeah, but I, I'd only want it if it's a, an anthology series. And the last team sale, and you've been uh, devouring my tutorial videos? Devouring them. Well, just make sure that you leave some pieces for everybody else, right? Because if you devour them, then, like, well, it'll be tricky for, you know, other people to uh, also try some of them. So just make sure that you leave some crumbs. But thank you. I'm, I'm, I'm glad that they're useful still. I keep saying that. It's like, I'm, I'm happy that, like, the, the tutorials are still useful, like, a year later. Because a lot of them are, like, a year plus old. How about some likes? That works. Likes works. If you leave comments, I do actually see them. Unlike a, a lot of people on YouTube, I make the mistake of reading my YouTube comments generally. All right. So, um, to return to this fort. This fort's pretty endgame at this point. I'm kind of just, like, finishing up making it look rad. I don't know how much more of this fort I'm going to play. Um, although I said that last week. Last week, I, I think I was planning on ending this fort two days in a row, and then I started building this very big, gaudy entrance. So I think, for today, we're going to finish building this big, gaudy entrance, because I think that that works for you guys, right? Um, and then uh, maybe try and build the outdoor public tavern, which I started construction on and then just, like, almost immediately stopped because, like, we kept getting attacked. Um, so I want to finish building the outdoor public tavern. I want to finish building the big gaudy entrance. This is the base of the big gaudy entrance. Um, we are, we just attacked. Why do you have a raid them job right now when you just returned from raiding? I'm just going to cancel that. Because you shouldn't have that job at all. Anyway, um, so also we just got attacked, apparently. Wait, where is that? I'm going to read the names of the dwarves. Let's do that. The currently named dwarves are a devilish potato, uh, Aki Thorson, uh, Amethyst, Anander, Arande, uh, Ash, uh, Baby Blueford, Baki Glass, Bench, and Big Bang the Third, as well as Black Flag, Redneck, Bonesaw, Brewer, Bah, and Can't Find My Zombie, as well as Death Thor 2, and Diamond Destruct, Dominoc, and Dragon, Eternity, uh, Fallout Rain, Geotrack, Grunty Thirst, uh, Gonatank, uh, Henchest, as well as Hexalyn, uh, Judosi, and Just a Robotic Cal. Um, Kanord and Lazy Man, Lucas J. Fox, um, Lucky Soft, Lyagushka, and Mama is Wolfie, as well as Napalm Sideburns and Neokai, No Banner Flags, Notokasa, Nortrum, Orange, Raging Cave, um, and uh, Ryoshin Cat, uh, Real Manchuk, Rolf, uh, Royal, Green, Salty Tempest, Severin, uh, and uh Skobold, as well as spence stone uh stormwolf and talon artho terminal wetness uh transfem as well as ugdpy and uh van ori and winterzy and xylium we lost kind of a lot of dwarves recently because i attacked a thing but there are still unnamed dwarves if you know you know What's the benefit of having an outdoor tavern? Um, I'm, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this as, as straight as possible. I don't do things that have a benefit. I do things that are fun. Um, when you play enough of this game, there is a point where if I only did things that had benefits, nothing bad would ever happen. I would never have an issue in one of my fortresses. We'd be more or less sustainable, and I would have an impenetrable defense. I don't do things because they give the fort a benefit. I do things because they actively negatively impact the fort for my uh, for my entertainment. Um, so that that's why. Uh, Pluterino, what kind of dwarf would you like? Okay, so I need to move all dwarves with any kind of combat skills into this main squad here, because turns out I just lost most of my military. <laughs> So, um, because I just lost most of my military, uh, we need to just uh, go with whoever we got, man. Um, I should actually really go through this list. Uh, 
Uh, Roto MVP, thank you very much for the tier one subscription. The brand new subscriber. Are there any tavern keepers available? That's a good question. Can I say no? But yeah, because tavern keepers aren't something I really add. I kind of just, people ask me to be a tavern keeper because people are strange. Um, beard or no beard? Because I can make one. So I almost never just have them available. It's like something I have to make. Beard cat. I have no idea if this dwarf is happy or not. This could be a pissed off tavern keeper. This person. You're kind of pissed. Pluto Reno. Never acts without prolonged deliberation. Uh, to his own detriment and the harms of those around him. City Beards is your last name. That's a good last name. Uh, he's impeccably curious without any respect for property or privacy. He's a nervous wreck, and he is generally quite confident in his abilities when undertaking specific ventures. He tends to be passive in discussions and doesn't mind a little tumult in discord and day-to-day -day living. Occasionally overindulges and tends to be a bit stubborn in changing his mind about things. He likes a little excitement now and again, and he tends to make a small mess with his own possessions. He scratches his head when he's nervous and needs alcohol to get through the working day, and likes working outdoors and only grumbles mildly at bad weather, and doesn't really care about anything anymore. Dreams of crafting a masterwork someday, personally believes that peace is always preferable to war, has a negative view of those who exercise power over others, and values romance. Uh, he likes native platinum and uh, tin preys and bracelets and cows for their hunting moose and gigantic pandas for their lazy nature and the word of the fragrant sheen glimmer and the sound of the rhythm of drumming and impossible prefers to consume dragonfly, sheep cheese and rice beer and wheat flour and spinach leaves and absolutely hates jumping spiders um, you need some new clothes, but you're okay. Aside from that, you're lonely after being away from friends. You want to make romance real bad. I haven't been giving these dwarves enough breaks to actually make romance because we're getting attacked way too often but, um, yeah, you don't really have any family in the fort. You do have a pet duck. Uh, you've been here since year 527, so you've been here for quite a while. I mean, you're 541. Fort started in 521, so, like, you know, you've been here for a pretty decent amount of time. But, uh, all in all, I wonder if your duck's still alive. Nope, your duck died a long time ago, unfortunately. Um, so rest in peace to your pet duck. You had a pet duck in the past. And it appears that the enemy army immediately left. Well, that's good. All right, so the next little bit is I'm going to be building a new squad for the military because my military is, um, you know, non-existent. So it doesn't really value skills related to fighting. Well, that's the first one I got. Um, the next thing I need to do is how much stuff is paused currently? Most of the... Okay. A lot of, a lot of jobs are still paused. Which is okay. We the thing is we 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 turned down a lot of the jobs because the 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 combat machine up here uh, got a little messy a couple times and a couple dwarves have died a couple of times so it's been a bit mentally taxing on the dwarves to exist <laughs> for a while now. Um, but you, you know we we've we've been getting by and we're we're making a really cool front door so it'll be okay. It will be okay. We have we're getting a cool front door. I swear. Because you know that that's that's the most important thing, right? We 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 decided to attack a um a demon, and uh, it didn't go too terribly, but it could have gone a lot better. Um, putting it simply, could have gone a lot better. So I'm gonna go around, and we are going to find dwarves that would do okay in the military, and put them in the military, hopefully. Oh, uh, this is our pet rock. Chat was calling it Roxanne, I think. Uh, and the the rock there uh, is a is our spooking mechanism to make the necromancers uh, raise the dead. Which, honestly, pretty effective. Can't handle stress. Okay. Um, you're Obok the Leather Worker. Uh, Cradle Guild. There you go. Go join the military there, dwarf. After you're done socializing. What you? You're actually a bartender, uh, IRL. You consider that? I mean, <laughs> consider that uh, you're redeemed. Well, I mean, if you get the redemption, you can absolutely have any kind of dwarf you'd like. 
Within reason, of course. I mean, like, when people are just like, I want the one dwarf that likes gremlins. I'm not going to read the description of every dwarf in the fortress to find one that likes gremlins. Sorry, not going to do that. Um, but, you know, it's an interesting dwarf. Fath. Dabbling armor user. There you go. Coral brass. Good luck there, dwarf. Uh-oh. Snatcher! Protect the kids. Well, they run away pretty quickly, I find. Wow, there's a lot of them. How many snatchers was there? You know... I, I Maybe it's just because I never look at this menu. Has it always said kidnap? And what's the... Oh, I see. Uh, right. It's it's the job that they're actively doing. They're actively attempting kidnapping. Got it. Which means there's probably a child in sight of here, but maybe not. Hmm. Well, anyway, let's just line up here and let them defend. This dude, who's not even part of my fort here, who's some baron, is just running down and firing arrows out of his bow. Copper arrows, in fact. Get to him. Keep shooting. You got this. Have you got any kills here? No, you haven't. All right. You guys got a spouse and four lovers. All of his lovers. Wow, this guy's crazy. <laughs> Can... So this guy doesn't live in my fort, right? This is Kadi uh, Ruffolds, um, who is the Baron Consort of Crest Gloves, meaning he is the husband of the Baron of Crest Gloves, who's Ozul... Lavanth, la, 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 Lavina Cruel, okay? Now, moved here with his son, who was a peasant who died, um, but never joined the fort. He just, like, showed up when, when, we got the, when we got the queen and has since become lovers with not one, not two, but three separate baronesses who are just visiting here permanently. Got to get back to work. I know what you mean. Have a good day at work. Don't work too hard. That is really funny. You don't see that happen super frequently. But when it does, it's just kind of amusing. Basically, like, like, like you'll have a really sociable character who just gets along with everybody. And this, like, this guy's a really sociable character who gets along with everybody. So he's got a billion, like, you know, partners, basically. He's also the general of this entire faction. Also was the former head housekeeper of the place. Which is, I don't know, that's funny. That is very funny. Kind of wish this guy would join my uh, my fortress, but... You know, people always... It, uh, so I, I put up a video on YouTube, Ilmarin, of um, raising the dead. And one of the frames of that video is literally... I'm using a rock... I'm using a rock, and I, like, googled Skyrim rock and found, like, the most rock-looking Skyrim rock and then photoshopped it out and then used it as my thumbnail. So we are slowly resurrecting some zombies, by the way. Um, this is one of them. This is Onul, the dwarf stoneworker cold butcher. This is another one. This is Cole. Um, these are both zombies. Um, so I'm going to make a zombie squad. Now, there's something that you need to know about zombie squads, chat. The problem with zombie squads is that zombies, unless they've fixed it, which I doubt, can't really leave the map. Chat, is that the best zombie squad name or not? Please tell me if I am in incorrect. Can you force them to join my fortress? Not without hacking the game. Um, Ashtol, thank you very much for tuning in today. How are you on this fine, fine Tuesday? Uh, there really isn't any force anybody to join anything in this game. Something that's like a, a really good thing to look into is um, exclamation point ethics in the chat. It'll give you a link to the the default ethics, ethics of every faction. So dwarves kind of operate within the rules of their ethics, right? Um, and slavery is a, a big no-no. So anything that could even slightly resemble slavery is a mechanic that the developers avoid. Um, in theory, when we get playable humans in the long, long future, uh, outside of mods, mods don't count, uh, we could, in theory, be able to do that. 
Although I actually need to check if any of these zombies have actually joined the fort. I don't think so. Yeah, no, I don't think any of the zombies have actually joined yet. Yeah, no, no none of them have joined. I mean, obviously I have my necromancers, but... None of the zombies have joined proper, so they they need to petition for permanent mem for permanent citizenship. So whenever they do that, then we can do this. How many kills do you have? You killed Lanix? Okay. Uh, <laughs> how about you? Nice. Nice. You want to make humans playable? Although, I mean, if you go look at the roadmap, which anybody can do, which is still sort of relevant, um, because they're all features that they want to add, they're just not going to go in in that order. Um... Playable goblins and playable humans with correct mechanics and playable elves with correct mechanics are all standard, like, planned features that have been there for, for a very, 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 very long time. Oh, you can't grasp. Well, let's remove Raging Cave from this, then. I've got so many, like, random injuries and so many dwarves. <laughs> it's kind of, not a pain, but, like, it's a lot. This one will do okay. This one will do okay. I just need a full squad here training is really what I need. That's Black Flag Redneck. Would you do okay in the military? I wonder. In terms of mastering a skill. Black Flag Redneck, I'm probably going to put you in the military in a second. A little time for forgiveness. Generally, we'll seek retribution is... Uh, likes a little tumult. Okay. Thanks for the follows, by the way. Uh, he works square central tendency with respect to martial prowess. We're in an ad break. Is hunting or not? I have a question. Do you have a crossbow and bolts or a bow and arrows? Although dwarves can't make bows, you have to import those. Um, so do you have a crossbow and bolts and a quiver? And by default, ammunition is forbidden. I also, you might be in an ad, Luna. So I'm in an ad break, but doesn't handle stress well, but like everything else seems like this dwarf would be good in the military. Does want martial training too. So whenever a dwarf dies of any cause, I will be putting them into the resurrection chamber and resurrecting them, or at least attempting to resurrect them. Can I assign visitors to things? I don't think I can. Yeah, I can't. But something that's kind of tricky is like, I want to assign the... Oh, man. Says he was pissed. <laughs> I want to assign the... These nobles? Because I've got so many of these nobles just hanging out, right? To somewhere, but I literally can't. Because there's just nowhere I can put them. Which is a bit of a shame. So, if you have a brand new fortress, you should have am some ammunition. I I've acquired quite a bit because people keep firing at me and then leaving it here. Then you can just type in crossbow, if which you should see crossbows. Uh, unless uh, if you haven't made any, then you probably have no crossbows. Also, I'm just real. I'm suddenly realizing that we have a lot of whips. Um. Hmm. Let's. Assign a leader to this squad. Boot you out of this squad. Delete this squad. Okay. I'm thinking... The necromancers get whips. I'm thinking that the necromancers get whips. We'll just say armor, handwear, headwear, like, like basically whatever they want. They, they can just put on whatever is available, 
that they feel works. Fields or bucklers and whips. We're going to call this whips. Whips it good. And let's get them training. Well, mm, no, not there. They should have their own training spot. Like in here somewhere. What's up, Stormwolf? How is things? Let's unpause the game. Here we go. You must whip it good. Also need to get more Marks Dwarves. So I'm just going to toss anybody into the Marks Dwarf squad that seems even remotely interested, which is most Dwarves are not. Uh, but that's okay. The reason I'm doing that is because I just need to have Dwarves that are available for the job, regardless of their if they're actually going to be any good at it. Like, there you go. There's a fish cleaner. Let's, let's get you in here. Is, are there any peasants? Baby Blueford's a pet. Actually, Baby Blueford grew up. Hold up. How's Baby Blueford doing? Oh, you're 18. Look at you. Big old adult. Impervious to the effects of stress. Fantastic. By crippling shyness. Um. We're crafting a great work of art. Uh, she believes peace is preferable to war. Respects power. Believes it is important to conceal emotions and refrain from complaining. Percy sees his family as one of the most important things in life. Strongly believes that a peaceful and ordered society without deceit is best. Cause a state of internal rage, naturally, like any teenager. Um, Baby Blueford, you're gonna you're gonna run the the new squad, and you're also going to be a whip squad. I think I forgot to save it. <laughs> That's fine. I'm just gonna do the exact same thing I just did because I'm actually kind of curious. Like if I just tell them to wear literally whatever. What do they end up equipping? Can I check your dwarf at the earliest convenience? Not dead. Very happy. Weaving th cloth. Uh, bored after being unable to practice martial art. Do you want to join the military? There's space. <laughs> We're currently hiring. Uh... <laughs> The, is, you're impervious to the effects of stress and often inflamed by hatred. Uh, you do believe that peace is preferable to war, though. You have no friends. Uh, you're 75 years old. You're hauling pigtails red right now. You're bored. I'm going to toss you into the military, Stormwolf. But uh, very happy dwarf. And uh, Muthcat, the merchant's been found dead. That's unfortunate. Not one of my dwarves, but... Uh, the Baroness meets with the human chancellor. Oh, shit. So, this is a new... Also, Vale Legend is a really good last name for our dwarf. Um, or a really good place, or a really good name for a place. It's, it's Limul, of Va the Baroness of Vale Guard. Uh, meets with the human chancellor, Tolis. Now, this is interesting, because this is the first time the humans have sent a chancellor that isn't a necromancer. Not always, but most of the time, yeah. So, that's kind of interesting, actually. Okay, so let's... Go up to here. This right here. Maybe these guys. And you guys are going to... Train. I'm just curious about what, what kind of gear they go pick up. And then if I go down to here, are you guys currently training? Yes, you are. I think I'm also going... Yeah, you know what? We'll, we'll let the necromancers train down here periodically when they want to. Because they're off-duty. All right. Let's see what you get. So this is them allowed to literally equip whatever they want. Which means she might just go equip, like, clothing. <laughs> of course, if this doesn't work, I can always change it. This fort's running a little on the slow side, but it's not, like, anything crazy.
you know, I, I always say this as like a half joke, but I feel like a lot of countries, and this is a less relevant joke these days than it was previously, but I, I, the thing that I've always loved saying is like countries should abolish mandatory military service and replace it with mandatory, mandatory retail service because it's more used to society. But these days, like that just, it turns into a kind of terrifying argument whenever I make that joke. I do mean it kind of as a joke, but... There is an element of me being literal with it because I've seen so many people be mean to, like, retail employees that it's like, well, we, we, we really need mandatory retail <laughs> <laughs> or something. All right. Um, a caravan has arrived. The dwarves are here to trade. So this is, this is really good news that the dwarves are here to trade for two reasons. Reason number one, they showed up with wagons, which is good. And reason number two, they showed up with wagons and they actually didn't show up when we were getting sieged for once. Two weeks a year for life. Ooh, I don't know about that. draft dodging the retail shift or something no they would just no show their shift what are you talking they wouldn't need to draft dodge they would just no show just just don't show up Sim simple as that so this is my new uh entryway for the wagons come on i got a perfectly good road here why are you ignoring it ah. he's taking shortcuts napalm cannot access deep bulb what Dude. Did 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 I erase an entryway or something? <laughs> that's that's confusing. How can you not access the depot? Oh, are they in a burrow? Ah, there we go. There we go. Okay, let, let's um let's get some stuff moved down here. In fact, I think I got some arrows I I need to sell. Yeah, that I do. Oh, buddy, do I ever. Let's do that, and then let's, whoops. 264 items. Remove this, and then go through and just start selling stuff. Just literally everything. I don't even care if it's, like, good stuff that I could melt down. It's just literally everything. Literally all of the used clothes. Do not care about materials. Do not care about quality. Don't care who made them. Sell them. All of it. I have bone spurs. I can't stand for hours. I... Have weak knees from all of the football I played in high school. Instead, <laughs> I mean, isn't okay. How different is community service and retail really? Like genuinely, like how how different are those two things really? Holy shit, 260 iron gauntlets. This is why I keep telling you guys I can't actually sell the stuff faster than I'm getting it. Like 260 iron gauntlets. Mo most of them are damaged. And I have steel ones too. And I have like another thousand iron just lying around. It's kind of absurd actually how, how much stuff I have right now in this fortress. Although a lot of it, I actually, I probably can't reach because a lot of it's probably sitting in lava. <laughs> Which, you know, it's, it's fine. It's because I can't reach it. I mean, it's still there. We know it's still there. All right, I think that's enough trading items. Um, depends on who's running the community service. Because, like, I'll tell you this. I've been yelled at while cleaning up garbage um, for community service. And also, depending on the retail, uh, a community needs a place to buy food and a grocery store. So I, I would... Okay, if it's unpaid labor, then yes, it would very much benefit the corporation. But, like, otherwise, I don't know how much necessarily does. If they're forced to take on employees they don't want, that doesn't necessarily benefit them. Like, say you have 12 people on a shift, right? And then you're informed, by the way, you need you have another six all of a sudden that are currently doing their 100 hours of mandatory retail. 
but you have to pay them. I I don't know if that would actually benefit them. I, f I feel like that would kind of screw the shift over. <laughs> like, just think about this, right? Like, you're, you're, you're working at, I don't know, Walmart, right? And you have 20 employees scheduled for that day, and then suddenly 15 more show up for that day. You know, I, as somebody who worked in fast food for eight years, Vizek, it physically is painful for me to walk through a mall just to see like how dismissive people are of people who work in jobs like that. I realize fast food isn't quite retail, but it's a very similar environment. You're brave in the face of imminent danger. Well, that's a good sign. You're creative though, frail. Uh, Stukos, I think we'll put you in the Mark Store squad. Uh-oh. Dwarf ran by and then immediately vanished. Dreams of mastering a skill. Hey, great aesthetic sensitivity. He's conflicted by this for more than one reason. He wants to assume that he tends to assume that the worst of two outcomes will be the one that comes to pass. He's a friendly individual and he could be considered rude. Generally excellent air focus on the current activity. All right. What's your name? Tun. Actually, really curious about what they've equipped. Okay, well, you're still equipping stuff, so. True. It's tw like twenty. You you are, you are not wrong, actually, Ilmarin. It would be like six hours six hour shifts, basically, for weeks. What did you bring? You're a Fisher Dwarf, competent pump operator. Doesn't care about others who take the time to master skills. Well, you can go do whatever then, pump operator, fisherman. Nothing to fish here. You're an expert, Mark Dwarf. Mark Dwarf. Huh. I haven't been here previously. Adept Mace Dwarf. Are you actually a good military dwarf? Can't handle stress. It's funny. Sometimes the game sends in dwarves that have combat skills already, and they're, like, weirdly good military dwarves. It's like, wow. It's like the game knew. Uh, you know, let's put you here. How about you? Stingy with resources. Eh, you're even mastering a skill, so. In the face of minor inconveniences. Um, sometimes it depends on the minor inconvenience for me, I would say. You're an axe dwarf, so you can join this squad, Irvad. I don't keep peasants around very long in this fort. They 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 become something else very quickly. Which is another one of those jobs that people in chat tend to ask for. They're like, hey, can, can I be a peasant? I never fully figured out why, but... Chat, what are you brave in the face of? I really like the way this, this new entryway looks. This looks a lot nicer than the one I had before. The one I had before was, while nice, um, it didn't have, like, this same level of grandeur. This this thing is, like, massively gaudy, but kind of in a good way. I don't like the way these windows look, so I'm moving them. Um, this thing is kind of massively gaudy, but I don't know. I think it looks good. So, apparently... Um, for those of you who remember, just Dwarf Fortress things-wise, for those of you who remember, when the last major post was made, they stated that the week, if it doesn't go up the week of, or week before GDC, the week after GDC, we would get the other half of the Dwarf Fortress Adventure Mode combat video, which means at some point this week, at some point this week, we should be, whoop. My, uh, one of my recruits has been missing for a week. Didn't I literally just... Okay. Um, <laughs> all right, then. Uh, anyway, so at some point this week, we should be getting some more adventure mode footage. I'm not sure when exactly, but that's the gist, is that at some point this week, we should be getting some more adventure mode footage.
I, I, for me, it depends on the level of annoyed I am. Um, I was, I was doing some gardening using a bunch of outdoor stuff, and first spider shows up, catch it in a little container, put it outside. Second spider shows up, catch it in a little, because I, I brought a bunch of pots that have been sitting on my patio for like a year, uh, inside to like transplant some stuff. Move the second one outside. Third one shows up, move it outside. Fourth one shows up, move it outside. Fifth one shows up, smack! I didn't see a sixth one, so, um... It kind of depends on how annoyed I am with moving them outside. Eventually, I kind of just go, yeah, fuck it. You're brave in the face of food? I see. It's good to see you, GM Jalopy. I hope that you are doing well. Chad, how's your, how's your springtime going? My, my tomatoes keep getting bigger. They're getting rather concerningly large. Um, I'm slightly terrified of them. There is a small jungle in my closet. They're, they are like a foot tall. Um, so these are going to be the biggest tomatoes I've planted at the start of tomato season, to the point where I'm a little bit worried that they're too big. By that, I mean I'm a lot worried that they're too big. So you think you've already missed planting? <laughs> you know, it's funny. I for my, my brain was just assuming that you're in Australia because of your username. But, uh, I, I'm yeah, I mean, it's probably pretty warm down there already, right? Although, does it ever, depending on where you are in Texas, it doesn't, ever really get cold. Like, I'm sure it gets cold comparatively, but... Way behind schedule and the trees are waking up? As in starting to grow? My Monstera got two new leaves this week. Tis definitely new growth season for some things. Alright, so they all, all the dwarves in this squad have um, greaves, shields, whips, helms, and gauntlets. Pretty good. I don't really want them training here. Go train in the other one. There's someone just telling them a story. It's kind of funny. How are my tomatoes going? Very large. Very large. Um, here, I'll go grab one of them. Because we're bringing a lot of items to the trading depot. It is dripping. But big enough it doesn't fit in the frame. Yep. Mm hmm. If they start growing, it throws off the measurement data. Oh, okay, that's that's fair. That makes sense. In your line of work. Step one: put bill put get put on building committee. Committee. Step step two: order truckloads of soil. Uh, step three: open closet and pour a full out minor jungle of tomato plants. Y you know it, what, what's so as um Ilmarin is talking about here. I'm I'm on my building strata now. Uh, which is kind of funny because I'm the only tenant on our strata. Uh, and um, the <laughs> literally the first order of business was, here is a website that sells bulk soil that's affordable. Uh, now we're like ordering two truckloads. Not quite. Uh, we, we're, it's, we're ordering, ordering four cubic yards of soil, uh, which is a, not a small amount of soil, by the way. Okay, not a bad start. We did like 300 items. So how many dwar dwarves are trading item or bringing item to depot? Bring item. That's that's the job I'm looking for is bring. Eh, quite a few. I'm actually kind of surprised by how many aren't. Good lord. 
so much shit. There's also even more down here. And this is all the stuff that we're actively throwing out, which is also being sold. That's ridiculous. <laughs> so much. So much. Kiddo over there is getting some strength training, hauling those arrows. Well, we keep waiting. I really ha wish I had like an extra 150 dwarves right now, <laughs> just to have extra hands. Although, who am I joking? If I actually had that many extra dwarves, they'd all be in the military. Likes a little excitement now and then, can handle stress. Dreams of creating a great work of art, put off by family. Logan, we are removing you from the mining groups and you're joining the squad. This one. Is there a way to prevent fungus from going on silty, sandy layers of your fort uh, after penetrating the caverns? Two questions. Why does everybody want to stop that from growing? It's a net benefit. It allows you to put grazing animals on that dirt and they don't die. Uh, floors stop it. Um, but if you're just trying to keep sand there, um, you basically, ha if like if you want to keep the sand aesthetic, build glass on it. Um, otherwise, basically your only option is put grates on it. Doesn't look bad. You look bad. Yeah. <laughs> the fungus is beautiful and a natural flowering plant. But yeah, if you build floors on it and unbuild floors, it goes away. Um, but yeah, build floors over it, basically. Like, if you if you don't want to see it, build floors on top of it. Although that's me speaking, like, from an ASCII player's perspective, the whole, like, but those floors look nice kind of opinion is very much a ASCII player's thing. Because... Um, People who've been a you straight up have the cruel tag. That's cool. If you if you played in ASCII, the well here. Let me just show you. Like the cavern fungus looks super pretty. So the old kind of feeling is that, oh well, cavern fungus is pretty looking, right? So it's just really funny to see people be all like, but it's ugly. It's like, no, it's not. It's pretty. What are you talking about? What's wrong with you? If fungus was beautiful, you'd have never gotten divorced. Oof. Why'd you marry a fungus, then? Merchants will be leaving soon. Well, how much of this stuff have I brought? Not even close to half of it. Oh, boy. Are you trying to tell me that the fun, fun was a gas? You know, the thing, po po Politico X Gamer, um, po Polito? Politoak? Po po Politox? Politoxy? Politoxy sounds like something my doctor would prescribe. Um, it, uh, Ask you something that just, like, it comes with time, right? It, the, if you stare at it enough, it, you, it starts to make sense. Um, it's just something that comes with practice. You know, if you play ASCII games for a while, uh, Dwarf Fortress is dense even for an ASCII game, but if you play ASCII games for a bit, they all just kind of start to make sense after a while. And, you know, I've played a number of ASCII games and I've never found Dwarf Fortress to be that difficult to parse. It takes, it took me a bit. And I'd be lying if I said anything else. Like, it, it did take a bit. But I picked it up pretty quickly when I was trying pretty hard to learn the ASCII visuals, and I still feel that way. Like, it's it's not that difficult of a game to play in ASCII. I think a, a lot of people just write ASCII off as something that's scary that they're not used to, and then that's the end of the discussion, which, fair, I get. I get it to a degree, but I, I do think it's a bit of a shame because there's a lot of... Oh, wow, I actually was able to trade on old, not green. Um, because I, I think a, a, there, there's kind of this reality of... Scary new thing, me no like, right? And I, I think that pretty much everything kind of has that to a degree from like, you know, try, it's like trying to convince somebody to watch a horror film, 
you know? If you've watched a couple horror films and you understand the tropes, they stop being as daunting, right? Um, whereas if you're not used to watching that type of media, it can seem very scary and off-putting. And I, I think that very simplistic graphical styles like that can also do the, kind of have the same effect on people. How do you get that many books on trade? Uh, because I've been giving them lots of, lots and lots and lots and lots of value and buying all their books every time. So if you buy a lot of stuff from them every time, they will try and trade with you more. And so they'll bring more of the things that you keep buying. They played NetHack, yes. Although recently the roguelike I've been playing quite a bit, and actually I've, I'm, I've unironically been playing a game off stream. We're in an ad break. Bleh. Is Rift Wizard 2, um, which I uploaded a, a video of the other day. Like it's, that is a very enjoyable little video game. Like, oh my God, that game is enjoyable. Like a lot more enjoyable than the first one too. You see, I, I don't I don't like that that meme at all, Merc. I'm so tired of it. So tired of it. Also, Roto the Dragon Lord in YouTube chat. Thanks for the uh two bucks in super chat. Great you. Looking forward to making another wall of tutorials. It's still accurate? No, it's not. <laughs> I I don't agree that it's accurate. It's accurate in the literal definition, but I don't actually think it's that accurate. I think it, it participates in scaring people away from trying the, or it's one of the things that participated from, uh, and like, it, it took the effect of, here's a game with an obtuse art style and just made it a thousand times worse. It, it's, it's part of the, like community memes that made people less interested in even trying it to begin with. At least that's my feeling. You want to sit on a coastal map that does not have iron. I mean, you can turn down, turn up, like, like increase the scarcity of all ores, but I don't think you can change the prevalence of certain ores. Um, I'm pretty sure there's been a thing in the game for a little bit now where every single map will have iron, just very small amounts of it, right? Like this map has iron, but like, where was the last magnetite? The, the, the last magnetite pile I found had literally this amount, right? One, two, three, four. So every map will have small deposits of iron because people have been screaming for it for a very long time and eventually developers cave. Um, but I, I don't know. I, I, I don't think so, I guess. I have to click this checkbox. You're already on rare ore? Yeah, I even on rare ore, you're going to have very small deposits of iron. Just don't mine them, you know? Or mine them and don't use them. Like, make them into blocks if you don't want to use them. Like, you're going to end up with iron. Just start making uh, nobles' bedrooms out of magnetite blocks. No, like there's the part of the reason. So I never know how long people have been playing, but version uh, the the version that came out on Steam, version fifty, was the first version of the game that would even tell you what type of materials were on the map. Every other version of the game before this version. Um, didn't. And so the way you would find out what was on your map is you would embark and start digging. <laughs> and, um, there was a large enough portion of the player base that if they didn't have a, the exact stuff to make steel and clear glass on every map, they would just quit the map. So what they would do is they would embark. They would use DF hack to check for what was there. And if it didn't meet their exact requirements, they would retire. And a lot of people still play that way right? Or they just quit, right? Crash the game. Or they would then later use different TF hack tools to uh, only embark on locations that had those things. And 
I liked the era of Dwarf Fortress more when you didn't know what medals you were going to get. The game used to be very ambiguous. It was just, what medals do you get? Some metal, some shallow, some deep, or just some metal, right? I liked that era of Dwarf Fortress, where, like, you'd either know that there was going to be a lot of metal there or not a lot of metal there, and you never knew what it was. You know, sometimes you get speed medals, sometimes you get power medals, sometimes you get death metal, and it was it was always just, like, kind of a smorgasbord of, like, you never really know exactly what you're going to get. It was always a little bit of a surprise, and I, I liked that. And I'm honestly kind of sad that that got changed, and I still am. I... I realized that the tendency and of the loudest portions of the player base was just to, you know, retire forts and complain loudly on the forums until it eventually got changed. Um, but I don't think it benefits the game. And, I, and you know, like I, I still see, I still see people on like the forums and the subreddit and whatnot talking about the game. Like they embark and then reveal all and then retire immediately on repeat until they find an embark that perfectly meets their pre-planned layout for their whole fortress. Some people play the game that way. I don't play the game that way, right? So if I disagree with somebody who plays the game that way, it's not really my place, right? Because I don't play the game that way. It's just not how I've ever played the game. So it's, it's kind of difficult for me to state that somebody is playing the game wrong because that's just a shitty thing to do. I like playing on the scene in my pants, and I like not knowing exactly where I'm going to embark because I find that process fun. And I wish that this game still allowed options for that. Like as a toggle or something. Because I, I miss the era where I didn't know exactly what I was going to have in every embark. But, you know, like I said, plenty of people disagree with me on that song, which is also fair. You liked seeing elevations? That's always been a vanilla feature. At least as long as elevations have been in the game. It's just like, you know, there was a very loud minority of people who would complain. And I, I think this is the case in ASCII too. No, it's not the case in ASCII. So like, if you look in ASCII, right? This is one type of stone right here, this brown. And then this gray is a different type of stone. But apparently enough people complained that they didn't like the ground changing color that for this version of the game, they decided to just make it so this tile set's just one solid color because enough people complained consistently about that, that they changed it or decided to not do that for this tile set because it was a constant enough complaint. Whereas... I think the complaint they were getting was from a very particularly loud, hardcore portion of the forum community, but not the wider community at large, because since they've made that change, I've only heard people expressing their sadness at that change. Um, with the occasional person who's like, what? That's the best change they've ever done. Which is just interesting. Like that was always a feature in older versions that you'd end up, like if you didn't pave floors, you would end up with like crazy psychedelic multicolor fortresses, which is, some people th think is ugly and say is ugly and don't like it and everybody else really like it which might actually subconsciously be the same people that don't like fungus growing on the ground but i don't know can you just pave over them you could you absolutely could So currently what we are doing is I'm waiting for dwarves to die and appear dead. Um, I'm building my big gaudy entrance and uh, retraining my military to get back out there, basically. And start stealing books again. This is going to be a lot of work. Oh yeah, no, they're keeping the fungus carpet. <laughs> we will forever have fungus carpet. Fungus is very important.
Yeah, absolutely. The beautiful color left out, left behind by the mined out veins was just lovely. Something that I missed. But you've tried clicking on the stream several times to help with building. Well, thank you. I, I appreciate the effort. <laughs> There's a lot of clicking in this area. I mean, I, I, I've done that before. I'm, I mean, um, I, I've watched quite a bit of, you know, games where you can speed up and slow down time, city builders and stuff like that, and tried to, like, speed up and slow. Like, if it's a game that I've played a lot, I, I will try and, like, pause the game sometimes and check something or, like, open a thing. I've absolutely done that, so I, I feel you there. It's certainly not a, um, a unique thing to you. It's definitely a more notably common issue. Stormwolf seems to enjoy the new weaponry. It's nice seeing them like fully equip all their gear, even with like not being told what gear to wear. There's somebody in my in YouTube chat. A Twitch chat, how do I respond to this? YouTube chat. Why whips? Literally half a second later. Blind, why whips? Literally half a second later. That's absurd. You're absurd. Whip it good. Now that's capes. Although dwarves can't make capes, so I would actually say, yeah, no capes. Gazer beam, Dyna guy. No capes. No capes. Whips because ground beef. I prefer sky beef personally, but you know, if you want your ground beef, you can have your ground beef. That's slow construction, but hey, working on it. Dwarves, when we're done with all this construction, we, we can take a break, I swear. One of these years. Capes are very different from cakes. Also, chat, I have a question. Is $2 for three Van Halen tapes a good deal? Because I think it, I, I thought that it was. And it's also time to eat some pears. Unrelated to just about everything. But it's time to eat some pears. Holy shit, I have a lot of bears. I'm also going to eat a lot of bear cubs. I, I realize that's mean, but there's just too many of them. Uh, save the game streamer. Okay. It's literally the only reason I have DF hack installed. Installed just for this. I don't know what sky beef is. I was just, I was thinking, what is the opposite of ground beef? Obviously, sky beef. Should pay me two dollars to take them. Oof. You, Benadryl. Benadryl, can't sneeze if you're unconscious. <laughs> Benadryl, can't sneeze if you're unconscious. Yeah, sure, definitely noted. Thanks for the tier three subscription brought to you by Benadryl. Are you on Benadryl right now, or are you are you just thinking? Are you continuing the bit from the other day? Thank you very much for the tier three subscription for a 16th month, you absolute mad giraffe. Giraffe. Thank you. I was gonna say mad lad, but. No eating Appa. Appa is friend, not food. That bad. Me no agree with that. Continuing the bit. Gotcha. Okay. I, I thought maybe you were on Benadryl. I was gonna ask if you were feeling unwell or something. <laughs> but uh, thank you. It is a good bit, yes. Just like the one bit I got earlier from Mouse Beater. If you would like to beat Mouse Beater on the on the leaderboard, it only costs you two bits. Or you could get a shave and a haircut, allegedly. For that. You know what's funny? Like I, I follow Quill18, right? And he's up at the top of my Twitch following, and he's streaming Millennia right now. And his title is literally is like, is Millennia the civilization killer? Mate, Civilization hasn't released a game in when did Civ 6 comes out? Comes out? Wow. Civ 6 came out in 2016, so not eight years ago. 
How do you kill something that's been out for that long? <laughs> Luna, thanks for the 10 pennies. Suited Giraffe, thanks for the dollar. Luna, you had a very brief point in the spotlight where you were number one, and now unfortunately you're number two, but thank you for being number one for a moment. Just came out, has mostly negative reviews. Does it now? Oh, oh yeah. I didn't even realize it was coming out today. I thought it was already out for a while. These bits are brought to you by Calcium Crypt. Calcium Crypt, because I like to be sneaky on Twitch sometimes. Right, yes. I just realized I don't know how to spell millennia. Oh, wow. It's okay. It only, okay. In its defense, it only has 11 reviews. <laughs> no, I did not ask chat to kill eight-year-olds. Did you just ask your doctor that you need a hearing checkup? Because you should! What? I was shouting to make sure that you'd hear. This does only have 11 reviews. I mean, okay, so the first negative review I see, 17 minutes was enough time for me to realize that the pop-up text box was too small for me to read easily on my 3440 by 1440 monitor. And I couldn't find a way of changing it. Well, fucking lower your resolution. Jesus. Bad graphics, bad animations, no multiplayer, despite it saying it, there is. Wait, what? That's weird. It, okay. You know, actually, looking at Millennia right now, I'll be I'll be honest. I've heard people talk about this game and I've read articles about it. I haven't seen many screenshots of it. That does look pretty bad. Like that that does look pretty budget. UI seems fine, I don't know. The, like, the map itself seems fine. But that... Like, that that looks like Dominions. Is it charming bad? I don't know. I mean, it's not full price. Well, the premium edition is, but... So, I don't know. But it, it does look kind of not great. At least, like, Dominions has, like, that sprite kind of look to it, you know? Oh, I mean, like, I, I like the style of the robots. It's not it's not the style of the robots that I'm kind of looking at it going, eh. You know, Spiffing Brit could do a video of literally anything. He could do an a video talking about a glass of water. A perfectly functional, nice glass of water. And by the end of that video, you would be convinced that that glass of water is broken. He is an artist that is very good at making people think that things are broken. Minesweeper is inherently broken and a poorly designed game. So, I can break Minesweeper? That doesn't take much talent. <laughs> Wonder, actually. Hmm. I might make a little trading stairwell right here. I would not. I don't know. I, I don't like the spiffing Brit that much. <laughs> he irritates me uh, kind of a lot. Um, because he he's, he's a portion of my industry that bah, I don't even know. I've explained this before a couple times. Wait, like you 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 made an ASCII minesweeper? Like as a project or something, Zoom Zang? These bits brought to you by clickbait with a cool accent. I don't know if I'd say that. Are like you referring to spiffing braid? He's not clickbait, but He just makes videos about things that make the life for life for the rest of us in this industry hard sometimes. Which I wish he would stop doing that. <laughs> oh, okay. I, I was gonna say someone. Th there's already like four ASCII dungeon crawlers, or not ASCII, uh, Minesweeper dungeon crawlers. But if that's what you're trying to do, but 
In fact, didn't doesn't Microsoft's official Minesweeper have like a dungeon crawler mode thing? I don't think I'm making that up. Pretty sure that's real. I did not say that he makes videos that are art. I stated he makes videos that aren't, 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 and then stopped myself because I didn't want to finish the sentence. So I did not say the word art. I said the word aren't. <laughs> and the English language is bad and should be abolished. <laughs> Just, you know, those two things. So I, I know I did not say art. You heard art too? I did say aren't. A-R-N-T. Aren't. But like, aren't, art, eh. It's pretty hard to um, <laughs> speak clearly when saying words that sound so similar. But that's my bad. I need to enunciate better. The full sentence I was going to say was, aren't my cup of tea, but aren't my thing, aren't for me, one of those variants of that. But no, I, I don't have anything against him personally. I just wish he wouldn't make half of the videos he makes. <laughs> That's that's all. But we've talked about this many times. This is this has been a well trodden ground. I do think his video game breaking videos are fun. I don't think it would do Dwarf Fortress any favors if he made a video about it because of the type of content he makes. Yes. And if you mishear something, then your brain replaces it with something else. That it thought you said. Regardless of if it's what you actually said or not. Oh, I mean, being clickbaity is unfortunately how you have to exist in the industry now, so, which sucks, and I hate it. <laughs> and I don't do it 90% of the time, and then occasionally when I do, people get mad at me, so. They're just like, oh, you're gonna become a clickbait artist, and then people aren't gonna value your work anymore. It's like, but what about all these people who are very much clickbait artists and people value their work? I don't understand. <laughs> but, you know, tis what it is. You and me both, apparently, <laughs> suited. Also, I, I would say that was a perfectly well-formed sentence. So, I don't know what personal problem you're having with the English language, but I have many problems with the English language. So, I'm sure, as a team, we will get through it. Eventually. One of these months. Not today, though. Where is the... Upper area door. Ah, okay. We're almost through all of the flooring I queued up. Come <laughs> join you with clicking stream and helping build. You know, there, there's a, a few Twitch plugins, which I just get mad whenever I see them and immediately turn them off, which allow you to, like... I've seen one that's, like, a fly swatter, and occasionally a fly will fly across the stream, and you can, like, click the flies to swat them. I've seen a few like that. I don't think I personally would ever use any of those because, honestly, to me, they just... It's, it's, it seems like a really good way of, like, uh, increasing engagement and annoying everybody else. Um, so, like, I always just immediately disable those, but those kind of exist, so you could probably, like, m make a dwarf version of that, but... Occasionally a beer fly... No, you have to drink it, right? So you just have, like, a little mouth button... Okay, okay, you know, I just made all this bad. Ne never mind, no mouth button. Can, to just Please ignore the concept of mouth button. I don't want a mouth button.
That sounds rather annoying. Well, I mean, fortunately, you can just immediately disable them, which is what I always do immediately. No. Very different. War bears are indeed a thing, bruise. Well, grizzlies are. And those are what my bears are. Grizzly bears. Also, I have many war bears in this fort, and I've used them in many sieges. <sighs> Please integrate your smart straw into a Twitch. Brain Fist, I have a very important question. The fuck's a smart straw? <laughs> I'm glad Statue Sounds was in, the, was in the same, like, thought process as me. The fuck's a smart straw? Does it, like, tell you the temperature of the liquid you're con consuming? Does it tell you how much liquid you've consumed? Does, like, it... What, what ads does the smart straw sell? Like, what information of yours is it selling so that you get ads for, for stuff? It's called lifting the glass to your face, hold to consume a drink. Some, okay, some people need straws, all right? It is like a disability requirement. Like, there are people who need straws to, like, consume things due to disabilities, and people need straws to consume things to not get all of the stuff in their beard instead of into their mouth. It just tells many companies worldwide. Oh, I mean, that's most ad companies, but, like... What, what is the benefits of a smart straw? Does it heat the beverage? Like, I know they make smart coffee mugs that heat your co like keep your coffee warm, which is, like, kind of an interesting concept in, in theory, but, like, in practice, I've been told that it just burns your coffee most of the time, so I, I, I've resisted buying one, even though the morbid curiosity is there. The big thing is that, well, yeah, well, naturally, if it's a smart device, it can't work well as a normal device, right? Like, you know, smart lights are great until, like, your power goes out and then comes back on, and then even though all your lights were off, you need, you then need to go walk around your house and resync them all with your phone so you can turn the lights off. Actually, I, I vaguely know somebody through the internet who doesn't have light switches in his house because he only uses smart lights. So his in, all of the lighting in his house is connected to his phone. And if his power goes out and comes back on, which happened once for the first time since he set this whole thing up, um, he, when, when the power goes out and comes back on, he has to resync all of the light bulbs to his phone, which requires unscrewing them and screwing them back in because he doesn't have light switches. <laughs> um, which is just... You know, hold on. I'm just going to go to Google. Smart straw. What's a smart straw? Okay, so you want to know what's the first link I get when I go to Google and type in smart straw? WD-40 smart straw. WD-40 smart straw metal lubricant is a rust-proof spray that is equipped with a permanently attached straw that sprays lubricant two ways. Two ways? So all I'm getting, so it's a WD-40 thing. Uh, there's a set, yep, uh, garage lubricant. Apparently, Smart Straw is a brand name that is owned by WD-40. Why didn't he flip the breaker? Uh, I don't know, because he has too much money and lives in Silicon Valley and doesn't know what a breaker is, probably. Jeez, I for everyone! Yeah. No, I'm just I'm just getting WD-40. I'm three pages in. I'm just getting WD-40. So fortunately, I don't think anybody's made a smart straw. Anyway, a force that is vile has arrived, apparently. And there is more than a few of them. Well, I have a feeling they are going to walk directly into my trading area, which is right you know, here. So I'm just going to 
walk the three squads down here. Here they come. The ones that have actual training uh, will get here first, hopefully. I have some that are like missing shirts, but that's fine. I could be very wrong, but we'll see. Snatchers? Oh, well, they've ended up on the on an angle that I wasn't expecting, but that's okay, because I can just run some of the dwarves this way. Get them, dwarves! Oh, okay, well, they ran away pretty quick from the looks of things. Where's the actual invaders? Because they will kill my dwarves. I kind of don't really want to. I'm in an ad break, apparently. That wasn't game. I didn't get a notice to skip it today. That's unfortunate. I would have. Um. No. No, I did not, frog. Your smart straw plays your drinking sounds on your speakers to around you to annoy people. I think everything about smart lights are pretty bad, Drovian. But I just want my light switch to work when I push a button or flip a switch or turn a dial if it's dim lights. Imagine someone in your house wants to turn on the bathroom. <laughs> turn on the bathroom. I just, that's that's the sentence. And I have to scream, can you turn on the bathroom light? I think in theory, like, you can just, like, they're voice activated, right? So you can just walk into the room and say a thing and the light turn on. Because if you're doing that kind of setup, you also want to have, like, a Google Home or an Alexa equivalent in every room. You've never bothered to turn them on? I have technically an LED smart strip, but you know what? It has this very convenient button on it that I push and it just turns on and it's great. Like, could I make it pulsate different colors and patterns or sync it with Spotify? Certainly if I use their app, but I ain't downloading their goddamn app. Thing came with a remote. It's good, works for me. Jeez, for everyone. All right. I'm gonna say here come the military, but no. No, they don't seem to be coming this way. They're going up and over, which is sort of expected. Run the dwarfs over, up and over. Should come out this way. Right, here they come. Jeez, for everyone. Um. Oh, I, I was gonna say, why are they just walking past these? Goblins, but they're not. This goblin right here, uh, because of the multi-layers, it was kind of hard to follow, uh, actually got hit by a bolt before literally anything else happened, because he dodged, uh, it says the battle rages must press on, gets hit by a flying silver bolt that struck the goblin bowman in the hand, fracturing it through the troll glove, um, which is probably enough for it to drop most of its weapons. Uh, another one, an arrow actually hits it, which struck Jeez, it in the hand again, and then it loses long. a gauntlet, um, and, uh, then a grizzly bone bolt hit it in the lower leg, and, uh, it actually went through its leather leggings. Uh, the dwarves then pile drive on top of it, and, um, well, the fight's over pretty quickly. The siege appears to have ended, and uh, we got more bodies to clean up. Anyway, dwarves get back to work. I'm, and by work, I mean training. And by training, I mean go keep on becoming less terrible soldiers, please, slowly. Uh, up here, we've got a whole bunch of dwarves, including Baby Blueford, who's directly on top of a goblin who was lashing it. Uh, Baby Blueford says, I've been injured badly. I will not lose hope. Wait, what? No, you haven't. Oh, you lost the ability to stand. Well, you, you have some wounds. Um, your lower arm is cut open. Okay. Your lower arm is bruised. Okay. Your upper arm is cut open. Okay. Your upper arm is bruised. And that's making you lose the ability to stand? That seems kind of over the top, but all right. Like, I guess we'll come rescue you then in a moment. Um, is everybody underneath you also injured? Nope. Literally just bait. What even happened? You got struck. You blocked it. Oh, I see. You got grabbed in the neck, scratched. Oh. oh, that's fine. You just got scratched. You'll be fine. 
You'll be fine. We're coming to get you in a moment. Eh? It was a, yeah, it was like 10 goblins. It was like nothing. It was actually just like a kidnapping party. I love how nobody's coming to rescue this dwarf. <laughs> There we go. Recover wounded. Anathor's coming to get him. Unless you're already carrying somebody. Nope, you're just going up the exit right now. There we go. The other two uh, thirds are, I don't have a good spot in my bedroom, which I want to keep cool, dry, and dark. Ah. I, yeah, mine isn't a Timu product. Mine's a... Technically a name brand, but it's one of those online only name brands that probably also isn't a legitimate product. Okay, now that's a big siege. The scout we killed the scouting party. This is the actual siege. And this is why I'm using whips, because like every four of these dudes has a whip, basically. Where are these guys from? Let's see. Well, actually I can just check. The low fiend. At least they waited until after the dwarves were finished trading with us, which is very convenient, frankly. Actually, hold on a second. Let's go here and go pets and livestock cage. Okay, nothing's in cages. That's good. How about you? Just the two bug bats that I can't access. What was that? Uh... Rated zombie, hey? Eh? Rated zombie. Got a guess that's meditating on painting. Yeah, free whips. Well, I mean, as Devo said, you whip it good. Whips whips are powerful because they do both cut and uh, blunt and... That's interesting. Prisoned yarns. Your former pri... Hmm. Former prisoner, hey? Um, the whips are good because they are, are very strong in Dwarf Fortress. Maybe not good, but they're very strong in Dwarf Fortress because they do cutting damage and blunt damage. They're one of the... if I think they might be the only weapon that does cutting and blunt damage. So they do two types of damage. So if they're made of the right material, they are one of the strongest weapons in the game. Um, but they're just a very well-rounded weapon that dwarves can't normally make, which makes them quite strong. So let's slowly just start bringing the dwarves inside. Let's check this door. It's locked, sweet. So this one just needs to be closed. Silver whips are one of those weapons because whips are strong in both sharpness and in, um, are, are strong in both sharpness, but they're, what? Why? I can't access the, the, the that menu. Anyway, uh, cause whip, whip, whips are strong in both sharpness, but also strong in, uh, uh, b -b 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 smacky weapons. So so they're strong for sharp weapons, but they're also strong for um, other varieties of weapons. Uh, for bolt steel, uh, well, no, adamantine actually, or god metals, but the best readily available material for bolts would be steel. I normally make my bolts out of... Um, like bones and then just acquire whatever else is around. Eh, well, the dwarves gotta the dwarves gotta get to this. We gotta get all this rotten food out of here, because apparently there's a lot of rotten food in here. Although Am I actually loading everything currently? Yes I am. You know, I'm going to break my own rules. <laughs> I'm just going to load literally anything that ends up in this stockpile for any reason. Um, whoa, that was quick. Did you just get fired off? Where'd you, <laughs> where even are you? Raising the last of the wine I'm tasting to your health, blind. May your proverbial beard never suffer from armuck-induced misadventure. Or am I misreading this? 
Oh, there. Never mind. It's still there. Okay. Why is it invisible? All right. Uh, Claiborne, thank you very much for this 16th month. Welcome back. It means a lot. Thank you very much for continuing to support the stream after all these months as we sit here and wind up and gear up and prepare thy body for adventure mode. Oh, uh, that there's been one or three casualties. This, like, I, I kind of am sad that items in fortress mode in this ui version of the game doesn't show the kill count of items it would in adventure mode or should in adventure mode but you used to be able to click on a random sword and be like so and so got this many kills with this sword the game is still tracking the information because it's still listed in, in in legends mode but um you used to be able to check like kill counts on minecarts and stuff and i remember i, I once had a minecart that was like 11 kills and it was all puppies and children <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, uh, hmm. It's like, yeah, I have this great mine cart and I clicked on it and then just. Great mine cart. You're gearing up. Gotcha, gotcha. Well, seriously, Tona. Um, Claiborne, thank you very much for continuing to support the stream. You don't think you want to know that? Also, um,. I know this is a lot, but uh, in, in my mind currently, or not in my mind, but I personally have a goal of uh, re retaining 1,000 uh, Twitch subscribers once again. We're currently at 833. I'm just going to say that out loud. That's it. Minecart best campers. <laughs> 99 to 0, Katie. I mean, it's pretty hard to die as a minecart. I guess being like melted down would be considered dying. Um, No. I, I don't think you can rename minecarts. There isn't a, like, rename button. It's not considered furniture. Furniture has it. Minecarts don't because they're not considered furniture, so I, I can't. You could call it Christine if you want. Why do you want me to call it Christine? Okay, bear's there. Can close this. That door is shut. Now I just need to close this one. Now we wait. I could rename the minecart rope, but I'm not going to do that because it's already called trash and I don't want to be, um, you know, mean to whomever Christine is. It's a Stephen King reference. I am not familiar with that particular Stephen King short story. Turns out he writes enough that he forgets what he wrote, and he also writes enough that I don't know half the shit that he's wrote. So maybe more than half the shit. What the fuck are you? The Serpent King Farmer Bitter Corpse. Ah. Okay. You, you were a member of the Treason of Froths. Okay. Uh, you're most recently, a currently a member of the Moist Warriors. It would be better if you were a fish person. Because that would just be funny. <laughs> or like a salamander man or something. But I don't think those exist. You know, I do have to say it is very appropriate that this um, fish person has a dress and a skirt and one shoe on. Or not fish person, snake person. Has a dress, a skirt, and one shoe. Congratulations, elf. Um, not, not, no. C congratulations, Bastet, you've made it weird. It's not weird until you put the eyes emoji. Anyway, I guess they live here now. Remember of the, the religion, the cult of plague. I'm going to interrogate you. What's your name? Thulon. You have a dwarf name, which is interesting. Cold cases. Interrogate. There we go. I have two reasons to interrogate you. Uh, it's probably an alias, yeah. 
I mean, they, they might have, like, dwarven culture from the past, but these are all outcast groups. They were also a prisoner of this group first. This must be like a um, like a goblin run military group because this person was a prisoner of this group before they joined this group. And that's very goblin-esque. Are you just leaving the map? Certainly possible. Amethyst is captain. Ah, well, you are going to interrogate him. Just have to catch him. But he left the map, so... Well, goodbye, then, I suppose. Oh, I see a problem. Just remember, the snake man stands up, or the snail man stands up, or the helmet snake stands up, or the anaconda has been knocked over by the ferocity of the onslaught. The anaconda stands up are all lines that I have seen in Dwarf Fortress before. So, sure. You got your mug? Hell yeah! It's time to raise your mug in glory with the liquid of your choosing contained within it. Military dwarf. Um, what flavor of military? Axe? Crossbow and depressed? Or whip? What flavor of military do you do 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 you want? Claybornes is. I would say that necromancer is available, but they're not available. And I do have a squad called the Evil Dead. Um well it don't want none if you ain't got buns, hun. Swallowed Sun. Um, I do have these cold butchers, which are unnamed, which are going to be the evil dead. However, they haven't joined the fort yet, so I can't do that until they've joined the fort. But the evil dead will be another squad. <laughs> but obviously, I don't. I, the, the evil dead won't be in the fort for a little bit. You got the dinner mug? Oh. My... my uh, my, my parents like the dinner mug design. Speaking of mugs, um, there is a new mug actually in the works currently. Uh, it's in the works for the release of Adventure Mode. Um, and uh, there's three images I need to show you because uh, we, we need we need some feedback on this. I, I, I kind of feel that it's a, this is a bit stubby, which is I think what my feedback for Cooler was. Oh, e yes. Um, so this is kind of the, the demo design. This, this may also be worked into like other things like t-shirts. The second one um, is this. I like the fluffy wambler on the back. That's a nice detail. This is, this is adventure mode merch works. Um, and then there's this. Now I have a question. And this was Cooler's question as well. Should the legs for the Gorlack be longer? We're not entirely sure how to do the Gorlack legs. No? Yes? <laughs> I think it's a bit stubby. But mostly there. Right now it looks like it could kind of run on all fours, and that's a little creepy to me. And maybe the arms should be shorter. Arm, the arms look too long. Shorter arms. Hmm. But legs is good. What's insulting about being called an elf? I mean, one of my moderators is named Elfie Bean. So when I'm reading my moderator's name and I say elf in 
mistake. It's because I was looking at one thing and saying another. So I, I think you need to curb your brutishness, Bruise, in YouTube chat. Shorter legs and longer arms. Okay, thank you for your feedback, <laughs> MB Audio. All right. Well, Lanix, thanks for gifting a subscription. I think you actually landed on one of my other mods. <laughs> one of my old mods, anyway. Master Spike, thanks for the 15th month. Appreciate you. Yeah, well, the V50 sprite's about as close we can get. So, Claiborne wants whip. So, let's go with ton, then. Welcome back Nor the glo to the glorious Slayborn, who, by the way, just joined the fort recently. And so thus immediately joined the military. Um, you are horrified after seeing a goblin die, though. You didn't really help too much in that, though. Uh, you are currently sleeping, and he does not have a great aesthetic sensitivity. He is conflicted by this for more than one reason. He... Uh, Tends to assume that the worst of two welcomes will be the one that comes to pass and is a friendly individual. Could be considered rude and is gen generally acts with an arrow focus on the current activity. Uh, needs alcohol to get through the working day and does not mind being outdoors and doesn't, at least for a time, and is getting used to tragedy. Well, here's the thing. I'm going to be an asshole for a second here, Bruce. I would like you to leave my chat for a bit. I don't need this kind of annoyance. So I will see you in 10 minutes. Um, consider that a warning, and let's just get along. Yeah? Cool. Good day, baby general. How are you? Personally values loyalty. Dreams of mastering a skill. Likes iron, crystal phrase, giant hedgehog leather, and the color charcoal. Millstones, sperm whales for their teeth. Sperm whales have weird mouths. They have like those like tendrils, right? That like filter out plankton, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, when possible, prefers to consume purple amaranth beer and quinoa seeds and likes bats. His very long beard is neatly combed. I can confirm that this is accurate to uh, Claiborne's mustache at the very least. Uh, which is arranged in double braids. His hair is clean shaven, and he has a broad nose, which is upturned, a clear voice, and raw umber eyes that have very thin. Like the TV show The Crown? They have conical teeth. Okay, so they, they don't have, like, blue whale teeth, then. Now I need to look up sperm whale teeth. Oh, right. Right, right, right. Oh, they do have weird teeth. What the fuck? They're also, like, massive. What the heck is that? <laughs> In the background. Do you ever just, like, see an image like this and go, what the fuck is that? It's like a, it's like a rubber chicken or something. That's cool. Huh. All right. I can't smell good. <laughs> it's a voodoo doll, you're right. Like, one, one, of my, one of my favorite images on the internet ever uh, is a picture of somebody holding a remote for a TV and asking what brand of remote it is and what device did it come from. And it's like a photo... Like, post on, like, the, I think, Ask Electronics subreddit or something. Except the person is barefoot and their feet are backwards. So, like, big toes are on the outside. And they're obviously just, like, sta like it, it, if you look at the photo, right, and you kind of, like, imagine how the person is standing, it's pretty clear, like, their legs are just crossed, right? Like, I stand like that sometimes. So, it's not that weird, 
but if you're not expecting it, it is the strangest thing to just like see <laughs> in the back. And everybody's like, yo, bro, what's wrong with your feet? It's like literally every comment is just like about the guy's feet. Um, but like, I stand like that. So I, I, it makes sense to me, but uh, the comments is just very funny whenever I see that image pop up. So welcome to the fortress, to the Grand Claiborne. You do have a shield in your hand, apparently, but it's not showing up on your sprite. You must have only just picked it up. That or it's on your back. Uh, you do like your bedroom, which is a very good bedroom. You have modest quarters, although they're probably going to cease being modest and become a lot nicer in a moment because we're about to smooth the walls because I didn't realize we didn't smooth your walls yet. Uh, your, your, your bedroom does include, um, you know, a, a statue of a turkey. Turkeys, in fact, plural. Um, you have a cabinet, you have a bed, and you have a diorite coffer. I was going to start putting grates in all these bedrooms, and then I completely forgot. So let's actually get back to that. And the reason I'm putting grates is because floor grates, well, are a nice little way of increasing the value. But what I was going to do is, like, make somebody encrust them all with gems, but we clearly haven't done that just yet. Um, all right. Well, anyway, let's double check all the doors. Doors shut. Doors shut. The way is shut. And, um... The way is shut. Good. All right. Let's let's let the the baddies come and uh, and the dead keep it. Yes. Yes, I I have absolutely seen the that footage of them blowing up the dead beached whale. I have absolutely seen that footage. It's quite disturbing, but also kind of cool in a bizarre way. You know, the 70s was a much different place. It's sort of like when I read about, like, Soviet-era, like, late Soviet mining projects, where it's just like, oh, yeah, no, they, they, they were mining through permafrost. It's like, well, how did they do that? Well, cl carefully and with gunpowder, dynamite, and jet engines. Obviously. The world was a different place, like, <laughs> in the 80s and 70s. <laughs> Good lord. That is a lot of gob. I think they've run out of beak dogs. Because they brought beak dogs the first few times, but they've stopped. Uh, Elfie's partner's Twitch username is Slime. Bobtron. Which is why I have to say rest in peace, Toriyama. Because, like, you know, if, if the guy who designed the original video game Slime is no longer with us, and it's kind of crazy. You grew up watching TMNT, Transformers, and G.I. Joe. I've never watched a single episode or second of TMNT, but I was very familiar with the, with the toys as a kid and then read some of the graphic novels as a young adult. Like in my teens. I read the comics. Um, although they were more graphic novels than comics. There's kind of a distinction there for me. Um, and I, I have seen about two minutes of one episode of G.I. Joe once on YouTube. Uh, once they started streaming them recently. Because I was like, I've seen those toys before in thrift stores and stuff. I'm kind of curious about what this show's like. And I watched a little bit of it and went, ah, okay, I get it. Um, sort of. And I watched the Transformers movie, the animated movie, and the odd episode of Transformers, but that's about it, I think. Not that great, but as a seven-year-old, was... no, I completely agree. Like, I'm, I'm sure as, as a, as a kid, it would be fantastic. I had quite a few Transformers toys, um, like a couple different birthdays. Like, I, I had, I had, I had uh, Star Scream, which is a Transformer, allegedly. Uh, I, I, I had that toy. I had a car robot thing that could transform into a robot looking thing or a gun which I trans I successfully managed to transform it into a gun 
and then was never able to get it back into the car shape, but I could get it into the robot shape. That was actually kind of a problem I had with Transformers is maybe I was just an idiot little kid, but I actually found the toys to be too complicated for me to consistently be able to transform them. I don't know if any of any of you guys had that problem as a kid, but like I certainly did. Like, OG Megatron? I mean, it transformed into a truck, I think. Megatron was a truck. Possible. I, I can't remember. I was very young when I got that toy. Um, the, like, animated series toy that I had a lot of was Beyblades. Let's follow some lava. Megatron was a gun. Optimus was a truck. I might just be, like, mixing a few things up then. I don't know. Certainly possible. Anyway, two two goblins got yeeted off at that first one. Yep, got hit with a glob of lava. It actually hit him in the head. How about you? Did you get hit with a glob of lava or a goblin? Oh, you didn't... This one just got hit by a goblin. So this one got hit by a glob of lava in the head, which then knocked him into this one. Wow, they're actually drowning? I don't think I've ever seen that before. Normally they just catch fire and bleed. This one's actually drowning. Oh, that's kind of disturbing. You know, I, I learned that Beast Wars existed when Michael Bay made started make was it my is it still Michael Bay making those things? Anyway, when the recent Beast Wars movies trailers showed up was when I learned that Beast Wars existed. I com somehow completely missed Beast Wars. I thought that Co Coca-Cola had, yeah, Coca-Cola had cocaine until the 80s, didn't it? I mean, you need to remember that in World War II and in Vietnam, they were prescribing, like, just straight-up meth uh, to soldiers. So. You know, I completely agree with you, right? Don't fear, Phil. I completely agree with you. Thousand percent agree with you. However, even a moron with absolutely no talent can strike lightning occasionally and accidentally create amazing things bad boys is a great film bad boys 2 is also a great film you can't change my mind on that but the vast majority of michael bay's work i could not agree more <clears throat> removed cocaine from the recipe in 1903 all right well then we're all wrong I could have sworn it was the 80s they did that, but... Whoa! Money! Holy shit! Aside from the thanks I owe you for turning me on to DF, uh -huh. here's a thank you for inspiring me to get back into streaming. I think I'm a moron falling into lightning. Nothing wrong with being a moron falling into lightning, man. I actually... So, I, I was... I, 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 I've been on Reddit way too much the last few days. Like, it's it's still, like, a, it's the one social media that's, like, stuck in my brain that I can't get off of. Um, I need to find, like, 25 different community forums to stop using Reddit. Um, but just in the background, it's great. Thank you very much for the 10 bucks, dude. Uh, there was a video that I saw last night of a guy talking about, like, clearly doing, like, some sort of, like, uh, wilderness survival TikTok or something. And he's, like, standing almost waist deep in water in what looks like the bayous um, in southern U.S., right? Um, at least that's what his accent sounds like. And he's like, you know, when you're deep in the swamps and the bayous, you you, you got to be very care careful, especially during, like, uh, lightning-type weather like this. You know, the first thing that I do when I find myself in the middle of the wilderness is BANG! And then he gets struck by lightning. <laughs> and it's like, what's even better about that video is the camera drops... And you can hear them, you can hear the guy in the background go, Oh god, I just I just got hit. And then you hear slosh slosh, and immediately they're in a parking lot and getting into a car. So what's even better about that video? No, it's not it's not the 20-foot anaconda guy. The 20-foot anaconda guy is just bare feet and hands and like thighs. He's like you never see his face. I, at least I've never seen his face, so may maybe you do. It's not that guy. It's like some wilderness survival guy, not the, I'm looking for the 20-foot anaconda. Boop, got the little animals. Love that guy. Um, 
but like immediately they're in a car so it's like not only did the dude almost die getting struck by lightning but like they're not even remotely in the wilderness <laughs> they're li literally just like by a creek which is very funny as goblins just ooh, that looked painful got hit by a glob of lava and then immediately hit a wall was on fire before he got hit flying glob strikes him Skids across, skips across the magma, s like, skids along the ground, collides with an obstacle, falls into a pool of lava. Got hit by lava from over here, landed over here, hit a wall, landed in another pool of lava. That's great. That's fantastic. Wouldn't have it any other way. Goblins are still entering. So, you know, we got a ways. Actually, let's let's check this in ASCII because it'll be easier for me to parse. Okay. So, you see all of this yellow mist? This yellow mist hovers for a few seconds, and it only appears when the lava skips across the mist. So the lava is getting launched out of the minecarts, and then skipping across the lava, which is making the mist shoot up. Because it's going so fast, it's basically doing a skipping stone thing, right? So what I'm going to do, actually, is I'm going to go to these drawbridges here, and I'm going to pull this lever and pop up the drawbridges. And then for a few seconds, all of these goblins are going to be able to run in a direct line straight across through all of this, like, mist, which is everywhere here and they'll all just catch fire. And then I'll drop all of the remainders in, into the lava with by pulling the, the lever a second time. But we need a dwarf that's coming up here to pull a lever. Just gonna take a moment. Ah, it's you. Just a robotic cow, we'll follow you. How are you doing today, robotic cow? Hey, we got a ghost. Uh, Reg the Axe Dwarf is throwing a tantrum. Oh, because they're possessed by Atis. Well, that sucks. I also still don't know what killed you. Uh, so I've got a dwarf who's being possessed by a dwarf who died badly, probably. Uh, Atis, who's a ghost. Okay, let's, let's engrave him. Um, where did my mayor go? The outpost liaison. You gotta commend the other goblins who see the flying goblin and go, I, I can do that. <laughs> Well, I mean, I think they go, man, if I go home, the boss is going to eat me. <laughs> That's probably their motivation there. Because the boss is quite literally like a, a, an archdemon, right? I'm sure he's like totally fine with failure in his crew. Okay, so these bridges should pop up any moment. They're there. I'm going to immediately pop up here and pull the lever again. I should really automate this on like a mode. Um, a better setup. There they go. Bye, guys. So I can just pull one lever and then it fires a minecart or something that hits one switch and then hits a second switch is what I should do. Uh, they, they can't give up. Uh, they give up when 30%, like for goblins, they give up when either 100% of the dwarves are dead and then they leave, or 35% of their forces are dead, I think. But they don't give up immediately. They just start losing morale and get ready to run pretty quick when that starts to happen. I think that's the number. I could be wrong. It could be higher than that. Um, and then elves retreat when they run out of ammunition. And humans retreat uh, when they're all dead or they run out of ammunition, I think. Which is why humans can sometimes retreat weirdly early because they just run out of ammunition immediately. You know, you have very few regrets in life. You'd rather slide into the afterlife backwards on fire or missing some teeth than be a, uh, than be bored. I mean, hey, if that's your idea of entertainment, then by all means. There, there is nothing better than just, like, a flaming goblin flying across the screen, though. Like, it's never going to get old. It kind of makes me wish we had more varied combat sounds, which maybe we'll get at some point. Oh, also, to those of you who were worried about this, which will make sense when I finish what I'm saying, um, I, after the last interview with Tarn, I, I kind of straight up asked him, I'm like, so for the audio stuff, because we're getting more sounds, right, like doors opening and doors closing and other things, when that stuff makes its way into adventure mode, are we going to suddenly just have, like, way too much audio? Like, way more audio than we want? Because, like, there's a lot of doors and a lot of forts, right? And if 
doors are just constantly opening and closing. That's going to be annoying as hell to listen to, right? And Tarn's response quite literally was, yeah, we're trying to be really careful with that so that we don't make the game sound like a wall of an awful noise. Which... So that means that apparently we're not going to be getting all of the audio, like all of the new sound effects in Fortress mode immediately because they want to be careful with how they add them in. Which honestly, I'm very thankful for that. I'm very glad that they're like not just going like absurd with it. Because I think that they could like ruin the atmosphere of the game pretty easily. I think I'm going to lose another bear in a moment, which is unfortunate. Yep, rest in peace bear because two goblins got through. They made it to their goal. God, that's such a wonderful setup. This whole thing is fantastic. Everything about it. Just everything about this. Yep, two did. They can technically climb this drawbridge too, so I have to kind of keep an eye on them. Okay, well, is somebody coming to pull this? Yep, apparently. Is it you? Ah, it's Ravishin Cat. I'm going to pull the lever. How will I attack this? Oh, I won't. <laughs> I won't. They're just going to keep doing Gide, and then eventually they will. enough of them will die that uh, they'll just leave. In fact, we might be at that point now. Siege may break. And when they leave, they leave. Yep, see, see, just broken. We were able to take out enough of them with that. I just need to make sure they don't climb. Oh, there they go. See, that, that's that's the problem, is they can actually climb this bridge. But I, I have more than enough of a military to be able to win the fight against them. Uh-oh. Run away! I'm going to just lock this door so you don't get stuck. I just saw a corpse explode. You don't see that very often. When um, bodies bo bodies can... Uh-oh. Kogan the Marks Dwarf, who's a novice Marks Dwarf, is uh, keeling over very quickly. Um, am I about to lose, like, all my Marks Dwarfs? I think so, actually. Uh, that wasn't good. All right, here comes the actual military. At least you guys get notable kills. Fath here is hacking uh, this Goblin Pikeman up pretty effectively. Slice and dice. Although, you know, you could say, Wow, that's awful! Horrible. Kogan? Autumn? You have a job to do. Well, not you have a job to do, but we have a job to do. We have to save them. <clears throat> Definitely, yes. Save them. Okay, so their names were what? Uh... Let's go to corpses. Which is a little bit lower here. There it is. There we go. You too. Yeah. And um, just to get ahead of things, let's tell the mili the not the military, the necromancers to go stand right there. Now we just need to wait for the bridges to come back up and uh, then they can leave. Shouldn't take too long. Yeah, I did just lose one of my militia commanders. That's unfortunate. A uh, full hero? I don't know. He he vaulted a wall and then almost immediately died, so I kind of doubt it. Uh, Forgotten Beast has come. It's a huge hominoid composed of white chalestonia. It has a stubby horn and it squirms and fidgets. We will ignore it. Also, it's deadly dust, which is kind of brutal. Yeah, okay. Gonna kill another goblin here. This, uh, Mark's Dwarf is, um, beating the goblin to death with her shield. So, get to it. This one's standing back and firing bolts, I think. Yep. Absolutely what they just did. And then you, I can just unlock. Gotta start putting this stuff away. So I've got a dwarf down here who's puking. Did you just get hit by a minecart? Motherfucker, you got hit by a minecart. <laughs> How did you manage to get hit by a minecart? Like, it's very simple. Don't get hit by the minecart. That is, the, at least you're cleaning up your vomit, so that's good. But like, duh. 
<laughs> no, fudge the story a bit. Okay. I prefer when people cheesecake the story, but hey, if, if you have to fudge the story, we might as well just do that. I... Shit, hold on a second. Where did you come from? How did you become a necromancer? I have an unnamed necromancer. I... That's been here for a while, I think. Yeah, it's been here for... How did you become a necromancer? When did you learn the secrets of life and death? Huh. Interesting. Because, like, they're not technically supposed to be able to just learn it, but... Hmm. Interesting. Must be a migrant. Nope. Has been here for more than 10 years. So it can't be a migrant. I must have left the book uh, unattended to a little bit longer than I thought I did. That's okay, though. I don't mind having an extra on. As long as it's not, like, exploding in my whole fort. It's not really that big video. It's just kind of funny. All right, so now we're just waiting for those corpses to appear on here. Waiting for body number one. The Textus Master Gardener. What's that mean? Oh, we're talking about plants. Okay. I mean, I, I'm, I am a um, closet gardener. I have a lot of dirt in my closet, and it's pretty good. Is anybody else coming to put item on display? No? Okay. Just one item. Okay. Well, we'll do this to our first then. Lock this. Lock this. And lock this. Now let's scare the ever-living piss out of these uh, necromancers. I'm pull this lever. Just double check to make sure this isn't on. It's not perfect. And here we go. And we wait. We just need them to pull the lever. What do you think, chat? Will this be a successful or an unsuccessful necromancy resurrection? We must hope for the good success. We're just waiting for a dwarf to come here and pull this lever. We've had three successful ones so far. And there it goes. Patonk. Hey, we got another one. Kogan, are you friends? Kogan is friend. There we go. Kogan is angry though. Although I would be too if I was in Kogan's situation. Welcome back, Kogan. Okay, we've got another dwarf putting item on display. It's a volunteer community gardening program set up by Texas A&M in 1978 to preserve resources, to, to provide resources to communities. To, oh, so you're like gardening coaches. And that's interesting. Gem setter has been found dead? Oh. Well, we've got another one. I, I knew that the cannons hadn't been turned off yet, but like, I'm not sure how this dwarf got back here. This one got run over by a minecart like a dozen times. Oh, wait, what? How the heck? Are they getting in here? I, I, um... Hmm. So, somehow a dwarf managed to get in here and died. And now, we're just getting a lot of casualties. My, my minecarts are getting a lot of kills. Not in the way you'd want them to. You'd want to get out of here. This is very danger. Okay, also, I'm going to put a wall here because <laughs> that explains a lot actually okay well anyway they're a lot safer now so i can i can open up this and i can unforbid you um well more zombies for the resurrection pile i guess i wasn't intending on doing this but hey more the merrier, more the merrier, I suppose. Um, let's just go to the corpses section of here, because right, we can see their names. Yep. 
Yup. Yeah, there's a... Oh, poor Gorlac. Okay, well. Bimbo, Mebzith, and Bleh. Autumn's already on there. We're just waiting on Autumn right now. Feels like a sort of ritual. I mean, it's literally taking a, a, me a, the game, a mechanic in the game and going like a thousand percent over the top. I wonder if... Okay, you, you're not going to be able to get it there. Um... Because you are kind of just abusing a mechanic, right? That is really what it is. Like, it's it's being a master, if you will, of understanding how the game's mechanics work and then manipulating the game so that it does the thing you want it to do. Because this isn't, like, there there is no just push button to necromance, right? Unless you're playing adventure mode, then there kind of is. But in fortress mode, there really isn't. Okay, you're coming to pull the lever. And yeah, I also like that. I, I like how slow of a progress it is. Or slow of a process it is. Another thing that I can actually do, I can put another pedestal in here and we can split these up so I can do two at a time. Let's just uh, make some more. Let's just make 10 rock pedestals. Let's keep some more of those. Rock pedestal. Shoutouts to Can't Find My Zombies Baby. Who's, uh, you know, delighted after watching a performance. This is some kind of performance here. Okay, so now we're just waiting on that. Oh, I see. Game's paused. Let's follow the display putter up of her thinger in place. Dorf. Somebody else died? My god. We've not done the great the greatest things of all time today, but eh. It's not a necromancer fort unless there's constantly volunteers. I mean bodies for them to resurrect, right? And this is rapidly just becoming that. I think that being good should have limitations and being evil should have drawbacks. And I do think that being evil has drawbacks in Dwarf Fortress. Necromancers are inherently harder to manage because they're in just significantly easier to upset. So I think being evil should have drawbacks because you will naturally just upset upset the order of things if being evil is just upsetting the order of things. And I think that um, being good should have limitations. You know, sort of like how in a Star Wars game you can have force pull, force push, and like force throw, or just fucking shoot them with lightning. They're both just as useful in theory, but one of them is way cooler, I guess. <laughs> Hold on, actually, let's check something. Uh, display, okay, so you, someone else is putting something on display. Uh, so Bembo is coming next, so let's unassign Imush and Mebzuth. Apparently we've actually kind of lost a lot of dwarves. Let's fight. Let's just go to corpses. They may have actually just been left outside and died outside. That's probably what happened. Your most recent dead will always just be at the bottom, so... Pretty easy to find. Nope, not really. I mean, I wouldn't execute them. Because that's really bad for the other dwarves in your fort. Um, I keep them in my... There, there is one reason to keep them in your fort. If you keep them in a locked off area, they can't die. So as long as they don't go completely insane, um, they can't actually die. Now, the reason that that's a benefit to you and your dwarves is because if they don't go insane and they don't die... Every single dwarf in your fort could die in, let's just say, a siege gone wrong, right? And if you have a were creature in the wall, then the fortress can't fall because there's always going to be one dwarf alive unless you retire it. So there is that. 
That would be maybe the only benefit. But, um, yeah, I don't know. They, they don't really have a practical purpose. And because of the way stress works and meetings, um, you can't really use them as, like, lever pullers. Also, they would break the lever anyway <laughs> once a year. And they kill each other, too, so... They're not really that convenient, I guess. Your current wear lizard uh, is your rock block maker. Rinse, repeat, he's productive. I haven't been able to make them do anything. Like, I, I tried to make them make workshops and they refused. Um, so I've given up. But I do have three. What's a way to improve rooms? Uh, build the walls and floors, because built walls and floors are higher value than smoothed ones just by default. Uh, put nicer quality furniture into their room. Add more furniture. Look what type of furniture they require. Make sure they have all the furniture they require. Make the room slightly bigger. It's actually pretty easy to just improve the quality of, like, a room. Okay, we're just going to wait for Wolfie to get this done. Decorate furniture with stuff, which is very difficult to do specifically, but if you just have, like, a furniture stockpile and a gem stockpile or a craft store stockpile and, say, decorate furniture with bones or um, decorate furniture with cut gems or cut glass, generally this, the things just improve pretty quickly. Storf wants to practice a martial art. All right, I think that's all four. Nope, it is not. Who's putting the last one on display? I'm just worried they're going to rot. Nobody is. Okay, I'm just going to lock this door. Lock this. Lock this. Pull lever. So there should be three zombies that come out of this. So far, we've had a 100% success rate on intelligent, friendly, undead. What do you think, chat? Are we going to succeed? I just need a dwarf to pull this lever. So this should ideally give us three turquoise zombies. Three. And Royal Green, I hope you're doing well. Oop. One. Two. Three. Damn, dude. I've never had a success rate this high. Uh, friendly ones will not fr fight friendly ones. Well, sorry, uh, unfriendly ones might fight friendly ones because they could be neutral and, and unfriendly. So neutral and they don't want to join you. Uh, neutral and friendly to your dwarves. Or neutral and unfriendly to your dwarves. Like, they, they, it could be like any number of things. Well, there you go. One, two. You're too injured to move. Okay, so now I've got Mebzuth who's going there. They do start helping immediately in the fortress. I, I you know, honest, actually, hold on a second. Let's go to labor, chores. Children don't do chores. Let's just take kids off of chores for a little bit because I'm noticing my kids getting way too upset. Also, vengeful when joining into an existing conflict. Does somebody tinge me? Seems not optimal. So where are we getting this last door from? What? Oh, you've already got the mangled corpse. This must be a strong kid. You're carrying a mangled corpse. I mean, I get it, you're 15, but like... You're an adequate fighter and you're a child? That's impressive. Huh. <laughs> How many fights do you think this kid's gotten into? You've seen some shit, man. Who are your parents? The passed away Elfie Bean in Raging Cave? 
I mean, man. Jesus. <laughs> Jesus, dude. Why is there blood underneath? Oh my god. The zombies were attacking my rock. That's through the wall. That's kind of funny. <laughs> okay, now I just need another dwarf to come pull this lever again. Must get in guild yard fights. That or maybe, like, I've heard that watching military train in a public space can train some military skills. I wonder if that had something to do with it. Oh, no. Oh, he's mangled. Maybe we can't resurrect him. It's possible. Let's try this again. I think I need my necromancers to go get new gear. Yeah. Can I heal the rock? No, the rock's fine. It was just forced to bleed a couple times. Yeah. Well, that's a shame. So if, um, if a body is too mangled, they can't be reanimated, and that one's too mangled. I guess getting slammed with a minecart a couple times will do that to you. I mean, yeah, we don't know how much is left. I mean, it could literally just be like it's the that dwarf like has no arms, no legs. Like we we don't actually know how dead it is, <laughs> how unlifed it is, shall we say? We do not actually know. I kind of want a really early sandwich chat. I go grab an early sandwich. I got a cheese and lettuce and a little bit of tomato sandwich. It's kind of funny. I, I like I don't eat tomatoes most of the year because they're just bleh when you buy them from the store. But right around the time where it gets close to tomato season, I start buying tomatoes. Okay. So they should be able to bury you, theoretically. It's the healthy thing to do. I don't normally eat until way later in the day, which is why I'm like, eh. But yeah, I should go do that. There we go. We're now slightly better prepared. I should actually like knock this down and replace it with walls. Because I, I thought I'd build sterling silver bars because they'd look cool, but I don't need my zombies, you know, attacking my birdie through the wall. That's not great. That is not great. So we'll we'll get this area cleaned up a little bit, I think. Are you picking up new clothing? I certainly hope so, because you really need a new loincloth. Like, you really need a new loincloth there, dwarf. Also, where's your combat drills happening? Not there. Oh, it's at the upper one, right? Next, yeah, I want to I wanna remove the... The necromancers, which is these guys. I'm training for a little bit. Want to give them a break. In fact... Hmm. 
these guys I might just send them out to go to go attack something as we've been doing go pillage this place some weirdly delicious tomatoes the other day you were very confused yeah I like like uh, sort of like I was just saying I, I try not to buy store-bought tomatoes because they they're they're just consistently and almost always disappointing and you know it's very hard to say no to good food but I I personally try and do my best to say no when it comes to uh, store-bought tomatoes because of how disappointing they tend to be there we go. Getting those doors opened. So we can get back to construction. Only buy Canadian produce. That is very difficult. That is very difficult. Although I will say, I have not bought lettuce this year. Like, that's like I, kind of an odd humble brag, I guess, but I have successfully not bought lettuce yet this year. One thing you do miss about your old place was there was space to plant tomato. Yeah. I mean, that's the one thing I really like about where I live is that I, I, I have a community garden plot, right? And now that I'm on building strata, we are converting. Chat, I have a question. If you lived in an apartment building, right? And then suddenly you got a new strata. Yeah, like just some people took over the old strata council, right? And then they took out every single hedge that wasn't providing privacy to the ground level units and replaced them with food gardens. What would you say? <laughs> because that's what we're doing. You'd hug them? Hmm. No touchies, please. But, like, that that's literally what we're doing. Can you get food from those gardens? Uh, well, we're planning on having, uh, well, two things. Two of them we kind of want to rent out. Um, so, like, some of the space will be portioned out and rented. Um, but uh, if nobody's interested in doing that or if that doesn't end up happening, we're just going to do a yearly free barbecue. Or we just cook a bunch of produce and then ask people to bring stuff. Who would maintain it? Uh, well, but we've already got volunteers. <laughs> that's a, that's not that's not a concern. Trust me. Who are too busy working? Yeah. I mean, the retired shut-ins are pretty gardening friendly in my building. I'll put it that way. All right. I'm going to go finish putting up a bunch of this. How did I end up with an obsidian tile there? I must have misclicked, must have misclicked it. Uh, I'm going to queue up a bunch of bas basalt walls here, and then I am going to go get my sandwich. You guys can watch dwarves build stuff. I screwed that up and put a boulder there. That's fine. I will live. We'll do that. And this. I will be right back. Cheese for everyone!
how he bites off the shell to get at the nut. Nuclear vessels. Yeah, another one. This one is an olive exoskeleton that's leathery. Uh, it's an enormous eyeless tick. Ew. <laughs> that's going to die to some other beast down there. All right, I return. I am Becketh. So, chat turns out Muddy's just floor is detailed with faces look exactly like pump operator dwarves in ASCII. Oh, yeah. Which is, there's, there's a reason why there's a setting to disable the visibility of um, engravings. That is why that setting exists. Because stuff just becomes impossible to parse. Hmm. Start typing. You know, I don't think I like the way this looks. I'm going to stop alternating materials. Let's just go with basalt for walls. Nope. I was not. You know, I haven't done that in years, JJ. Fall, falling asleep with my phone above my head. I've definitely done that before, where like you're watching something and then suddenly just bang, a phone hits you in the nose. It's like, oh, wow, I guess it's time to go to sleep then. Anyway, you snooze good. And mostly because these days when I'm going to bed, I just I put a podcast on and then fall asleep to it. Or do what happened to this past week, which is wake up with a homeless person on my patio and then go scream, get the fuck off my porch. And then, I'm on a porch. And then, like, moves away. That was an interesting situation. Because the next day, he was literally still in the area. He was, like, hanging around the building for a few days. It was, like, day two of, like, a different neighbor calling the non-emergency line on this guy. And then I just walked up to him one evening when he seemed kind of, like, coming, like he was coming down from his high. Because he was eating a pizza. And I just asked him if he could, like, sit on the other side of the road by the pizza place instead of like right in front of our apartment building on somebody's patio and he goes oh yeah no it's not a problem and he now hasn't moved from in front of the pizza place so excellent he's off our property now kind of feel bad for the guy though well i mean it also wasn't invited one of my favorite bits of text in Dwarf Fortress is uninvited guest. Implying the rest are all invited. <laughs> You know, Stone, I didn't realize you lost all of your tickets. I'm sure this was a thing that happened a while ago, and I, I, I missed it, but I remember you having kind of a lot. Um, well, see, here's the thing, right? There's ASMR content, and then there's background noise. I grew up with background noise, right? It, it's called living close to trains. So to me, being in a perfectly quiet room and trying to sleep is a little odd because I'm used, I'm still to this day, like subconsciously used to the sound of trains going by every 15 to 20 minutes. Um... Which apparently irritated the ever-living fuck out of my mom at that house. 
which I've learned later, but I, I think back on them fondly. Some people like to have ambient sounds around them and don't like pure quiet while trying to sleep. So is it weird? No. But some ASMR is definitely weird. Is you using my videos to fall asleep weird? No. Not at all. I'm happy that my YouTube videos provide a service for you, you know? And I happen to have hours and hours and hours and hours and hours and hours and hours of that type of, like, footage available. And if it's the particular flavor of falling asleep background noise that you need, then I'm glad it's helpful. Yeah, no, totally. I mean, I use Twitch pods sometimes to fall asleep if I'm out of podcasts, but I listen to like 19 hours of podcasts a week. So it's kind of difficult for me to actually run out of podcasts. But it does happen every now and again. Slowly working my way up here. Oh. Well, that's awkward. <laughs> Just this dwarf's body ended up here. Hmm. We can get rid of you. Speaking of getting rid of you, we're also going to pull this lever and just kind of hope that there's nobody standing on that area when that lever goes off, which it might, might not. Since you got pinched nerve in your right arm and your four herniated discs in your back neck, now you need something to focus on. Um, so true story. I used to like silence to fall asleep when I first moved in to this location. But I used to live with two cats. So when I lived here with two cats, it was kind of impossible to get silence. So it was like, a, it was a lot of meowing at night because they weren't particularly well-behaved cats. One of them was very noisy. Um, so it was a lot of meowing and, and like kind of that type of noise at night, which was not great to deal with. I'm also gonna go through here and get rid of all of this, all these body parts that are in this wall because otherwise, it will be there forever. Um, anyway, so it was a lot of like kind of annoying noise of that sort. It wasn't bad. Like it, it certainly wasn't going to ruin my day or anything, but, or make it impossible to sleep, but it didn't help is maybe the most, is maybe the nicest way to put that. It, it certainly didn't help. And once that noise went away and ceased being a like a going concern for me, it changed very quickly from I like silence to I like white noise because I went from listening to my cats all the time to, oh, now I realize just how loud my freezer is because I live in a one-room apartment, right? So now that I live alone in a one-room apartment and I get to listen to my freezer all the time, I've decided that I would much rather have something on in the background than nothing, even though I still miss the trains, obviously, but I would rather have something on in the background and not hear my freezer. My freezer is really annoying. Is mining rock and placing a wall there better than just smoothing the rock, or are they the same in terms of niceness of the room? Uh, building a wall there will always be slightly higher value. It's good in a pinch, like, rough rock is lower value than smoothed rock. Smoothed rock is slightly lower value than constructed rock. Constructed steel is higher value than, or constructed metal is higher value than constructed rock. It's just kind of a scale like that. You fall asleep to me explaining Caves of Cut. If I had to listen to me explain Caves of Cut, I would also fall asleep, so don't worry. That's, that's definitely a, a, a normal feel, I would say. Like, if you are trying to get absolute maximum value out of your constructions, you want to build walls. But I would also say don't worry too much about it. 
because the reason I'm doing stuff like this is because mostly I can get uniform wall colors. And um, when you play this game enough, it becomes like any game or any any end game video game. You just start trying to make the thing that looks as cool as possible. That's kind of the borderline inevitable end game for anything like this. You just eventually graduate to just making the cool looking thing. Another vile force of darkness. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. Well, at least they're seeking a parlor. <laughs> I gotta get all these ball bits done. And I gotta, you know, do all this. Okay. Let's double check up here. This is what? Basalt? Yep. Okay, so. I've gotta go all the way along here and replace all of these wall bits. All these fortification bits, actually, that we just removed. So if I don't do this, then dwarves will jump out or goblins will climb in. But body parts can get stuck in fortifications and dwarves can't get them out unless you deconstruct the fortifications. So I had to, I had to do it. We'll just use walls and then smooth them later, it's fine. I clicked the wrong button, but we'll live. So when these are all done, we can bring the siege in. Squaddy hasn't returned ETH yet. Where are you? You know what? I nod, you're gonna be removed. Fath, you're gonna be removed. I nod and Fath, you guys are going to join this squad for night right now. I just needed this, I need this squad to come back, is what I need. Actually, hold on. I've got no animals that are currently assigned to Van Roy. Okay, well that's good. It's like an arm jammed in the arrow window, rotting away, pretty much, yeah. Or like bones. It's, they're usually bones by the time I notice them. But, like, if you're noticing dwarves, like, got upset after seeing a body, it's probably because you've got a body part stuck on a wall or, like, in a fortification somewhere. Like, there's teeth here. If a dwarf sees this, they would consider that seeing this goblin's dead body, which they're probably not actually seeing. They're actually seeing, uh, like, just some teeth, but that's enough for the dwarves to get upset. So you do kind of want to go through and dig through the areas that end up like that just to try and minimize that kind of added extra stress. So it doesn't really benefit you in any way, it just kind of upsets the dwarves that are there. So we're almost there. All right, just get rid of the last few of these. Also, I just realized I am building the wrong type of thing. I am building, uh, I'm digging out ramps instead of doing what I actually needed. So we also have to put walls down here, which is actually kind of fine. Slowly improve the visuals of these areas. Also get rid of those while we're at it. You need a dwarf fortress and you have dwarves fighting out in the open. Do guards help to stop this? When you say fighting out in the open, what are they fighting? would be the easiest question there. What are they fighting? Um, there was a fight a little bit ago and it doesn't say who did it. Apparently Fath was injured. One of these Faths was injured. You're the only living Fath. I will interrogate you and see if we can figure out what happened. Seven months already. Wow, time goes fast. Seven months indeed, yeah. Time does in fact go fast. Thank you very much for sticking around for a seventh month, Shadow Absorber. It means a lot. It really does. You know, it's 
it, it's one thing to build an audience. It's another thing to be able to keep people around. Same with you, Kodiak, with the 29th month. Thank you very much. You know, people like Kodiak and Shadow Observer. And also, of course, you know, people like Claiborne from earlier in Lanix who gifted us up an hour ago. Um, if it wasn't for people like you, this channel wouldn't exist in the format that it is. You just hate when you take a break because coming back, you feel like you don't know anything anymore and you, re and you have to relearn the game. You know, I, I, the, I, I, I get, uh-oh. Terminal Wetness, the Scholar was found dead. So Terminal Wetness tantrumed. And after tantruming, Terminal Wetness um, was then beaten to death by probably the Captain of the Guard. Also, uh, a duck has been found dead. That's why. I, um, hmm. So what I think we need to do is uh, terminal wetness needs to be turned into a zombie. I think is what I think this this dwarf needs. This dwarf needs to become zombie. Um. So I'm gonna actually go up to here. We're actually gonna just close this real quick so I don't forget. Um, and then we're going to go over to here and we're going to move up, 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 up to here. I'm also going to place these with green glass walls. And scroll down to corpses. There you go, Terminal. I'm very sorry about that. Very unfortunate, man. But, you know, it is what it is, right? Um, This is going to get moved. We're in a burrow. We are not currently in the burrow. It's probably for the best, but... Also, then going to jump up to here. You know, this game, is it's, it's like 55,555 things to remember at all times. But, like, the beauty of, like the depth of Dwarf Fortress is a lot of the depth of Dwarf Fortress is things that you notice over time and not something that you need to be immediately aware of, right? Like the only things you really need to worry about with Dwarf Fortress is that dwarves need beer, beds, a source of food, and some way to socialize. That's all that they really need. They need alcohol, beds, and a source of food and a way to socialize. And as long as you have those minimums consistently, He's fighting in the hallway. Um, as long as you have those things consistently, dwarves' moods will just generally be good enough, right? But stuff like what just happened to me? Question mark? I don't know what the last thing I was saying was. I'm just trying to get these walls built. Problem is, is they these bars want to get removed. These bars are trying to be hauled. Yeah, biscuits are a thing dwarves can make. But dwarves can't make bread. That's actually kind of a controversial, sort of a controversial dwarf fortress thing is that they can't make bread. <clears throat> I'm assuming somebody's putting the item on display. Oh, shit. Why are you removing that bridge? Don't remove that. Oh, my God. Well, fortunately, the corpse was resurrected positively, and, um... Now it's gone. The problem is, are you attacking? Okay, no, you're not. Anyway, Terminal Wetness is now back up. And is a Dwarf Scholar Master Butcher. Still has his old icon. Do you, are, are you considered a scholar still of the library? Guess not. Hmm. Well... Let's see if I can just build across here. Let's see. I don't 
don't need you to hurt my... Why can't dwarves make bread? Because they don't know how to make bread. There's also no need for them to make bread, right? Dwarves, there is no method that dwarves have of making bread. Dwarves can make, um, like, biscuits. They can make uh, flour. They can make sugar. They can make various different foodstuffs, but bread is not a thing that they can make. They can take flour and make it into biscuits. They can make flour and they can fry it. They can make flour and do various things with it, but they cannot make bread. So we've got a problem here. This is here. Fortunately. Okay, so I'm gonna turn on this burrow. And I'm going to turn on this burrow. But I'm going to add the cold butchers to this burrow. Basically saying, hey, zombies, can you guys go down here, please? And, like, finish this? Because the zombies should be able to do this. They should be able to. But most of the dwarves shouldn't. They can make a roast out of flour, eggs, and sugar, and beer. You'd call that bread? No, it's a roast. It's not bread. It's a roast. Can they dunk chickens in the... Well, okay. So they could make flour chicken biscuits using oil or tallow. Isn't bread just... No, it's baked flour. Sorry, but as somebody who knows how to cook, there is a difference between baking and roasting something. Yeah, using videos to fall asleep is largely the same thing as, like, podcasts, except my podcasts don't have a video form. Or a video portion, I guess. Can we stop fighting with my rock, please? go that's one piece done okay fortunately the zombies can construct while in combat that's good <laughs> such a such a dwarf fortress need right now is like having to construct wallist in combat because i accidentally deconstructed a bridge that i didn't want to deconstruct but it's okay we're getting there we just need to get this done and then we should be good. Fortunately, okay, so all of these... My, my zombies appear to have pausing and grimacing, so they can cause pain. They seem to be able to cause bleeding, which is why it keeps bleeding. Um, and they also seem to be able to stun. Which is largely fine. <laughs> Terminal wetness is sunk into depression. Okay. I order you to bleed. Yeah, pretty much. It's just like it, in um, becoming blood brothers with people constantly against its own will. I mean, this this dwarf is just constantly bleeding, which I think is kind of funny. <laughs> Like, so this zombie, Bambool here, their throat is cut, torn even. So this dwarf is just theoretically walking around oozing blood out of its throat. I kind of love that. Like, that's kind of horrifying, but also awesome. And like a very cartoonish nightmare kind of way. Let's see how this squad went. Also, I, I need to um... Oh, we found things. We attacked them. I had a brilliant tactical plan. Clashed with 205 goblins. Slaying three. Well, slayed a bunch of goblins. That's good. Alright, well, we can start this siege soon. 
Actually, chat, I have a question. Do I start the siege or do I lock all the dwarves inside and just say, let's ignore this one? What do you think? We've done a lot of sieges. The moods are kind of terrible. I would like to actually improve the qual like quality of life of this fortress, but it's kind of difficult to do when I'm constantly having to fight with things. I am kind of, well, I'm not necessarily wanting to build, but I am wanting to clean. So I think I'm actually just going to ignore this siege. Lock the dwarves and improve the tavern? Um, improve literally everything. But mostly just finish jobs and put shit away are the things that we're trying to do right now. What are you doing? Oh, you're, you're removing a door. Partially constructed. You have to remove that stuff. Yep, yep. Sweet. Done. Okay. The rock is now back where the rock is supposed to be. I can now unforbid everything. And stuff should be able to just be put away now. Thank you. Blueheart. The thing you need to remember is I have tens, if not tens of thousands of hours in this game. Um, so please don't worry too much about comparing, like, the aesthetics and visuals of your forts to mine. Because it's not really a fair contest. Like, it's just, it's not a fair competition there. I've played too much of this game, and most of you have probably played a much more reasonable amount of this game. But for me, at the very least, the secret to making cool-looking forts is don't pre-plan too much. And be more okay with just saying, ah, we'll work with what we got. Because I, I don't pre-plan, really, at all. And I try to set up my forts in a way that just look organic and natural. Like, sort of like... Instead of just building a house, building a block of houses on top of houses with like weird side corners and panels and things, and just kind of adding on to stuff as I go, I much like that kind. Much more like that. I tend to enjoy that kind of aesthetic more. That's what I was trying to say. All right, let's do that and that, uh, and then carve fortifications on these two. Yeah, we'll do that. This one is so much more in-depth than all the other ones. Sure. I mean, all of those other games that you mentioned, with the exception of maybe No Moria, because No Moria was trying to very much be a one-to-one -one Dwarf Fortress clone. Um, with the exception of maybe No Moria, those games all have tons of depth, uh, but their own kind of depth, right? Like, RimWorld is a very micro-strategy kind of depth. Um, Oxygen Not Included is very, 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 very deep, but in a, again, a completely different kind of way. Um, so, I don't know. Those are all very complicated games, but Dwarf Fortress's depth is also, again, just a very different kind of depth. But I think that's what makes all those games interesting, right? That's why it's a fun genre to, to play around in and enjoy. It's because they're all completely different in their own weird ways. There's two Forgotten Beasts fighting. Uh, one of them is Basin. Basin is the enormous eyeless tick. Uh, it is leathery, beware its webs. Um, and then this one is Nalco, who's got 22 kills. Um... And this one is a huge humanoid compo composed of white gems. It has a stubby horn, and it squirms and fidgets. Beware its dust. I kind of think that the humanoid's going to win. Because uh, now the tick is bleeding. All the white stuff is its blood, and the tick is now dead. Rest in peace, the tick. Bugs are usually pretty weak when it comes to Forgotten Beasts. 
All right, I'm just gonna double check once again that all the doors are shut. Okay, so this is main door right here. That's shut, okay. That's shut, all right. And that is shut, okay. Since all of the all of the doors are shut, I'm gonna kind of check the outside of the doors and just make sure there isn't like any of my dwarves just like sitting outside of one. Actually, you know what? Let's do this real quick. See if anybody shows up. So if anybody comes running in, they'll come running in over here. Let's just turn these off. But I think, like, with Dwarf Fortress, the, the hardest part, at least for me, with learning Dwarf Fortress was understanding the game's vocabulary. Which I know sounds weird, but, like... check and like bounce off of this if they want but for me the hardest part about learning Dwarf Fortress was understanding the game's terminology because it has a lot of really weird names for things that are complicated like you know yesterday or last stream not yesterday but the last stream that I did there was a big discussion about like basically just making like f uh, paper uh, potash and clear glass, where it's like ash, potash, pearl ash, lye, and all that stuff, because so few games dedicate that much to actual real-world terms that it makes things kind of weirdly complicated. Things like, what the fuck is a pig iron? Like, if I hadn't taken, like, that one-week-long blacksmithing course when I was 12, which never actually went to me do getting to do any real blacksmithing except for getting to make a a coat hook this big uh, during the course. Um, if I didn't take that course, I, I wouldn't know what pig iron is and why the hell would you know what pig iron is? Like, there's no real logical reason to know what pig iron is. And then things like, you know, coffers, chests, bin boxes, bins, and I, all that, like... Cup for, for me, cup and goblet. That, that Cup, mugs, and goblets, I think, for me, is the most straightforward of all of that stuff. But, yeah, you know, codexes are books, by the way. You know, stuff like that. Um, like, why would I... Like, I, I would think book. Well, of course a book binding makes a choir into a codex. Uh, why, why would I not just presume that from the get-go? That should be, like, my first assumption. That <laughs> codexes, choirs... And scrolls all serve more or less the same purpose, right? Right? That's straightforward, definitely. One, two, three, four, five, six. I have a question. Did you have you played um, Clan Folk? Because I think Clan Folk has some of that. I don't think they make cups, but I'm pretty sure that game has plates. I need to play some more Clan Folk because I've heard good things about it. Speaking of other things, uh, Norland uh, is now playable for nerds like me again. So maybe we'll have to play another round of Norland. Because I enjoyed that game the last time I played it. The little bit that I played. Aside from the super, like... Not bad, but, like, tasteless writing. It's, like, the first time in my life that I've played a video game and saw somebody get a positive buff, buff for having an orgasm. It's like, okay... I get it, you're a violent, mean game, but this is just weird. <laughs> I know it's pot ash, but I'm gonna keep calling it potash. It's one of those, it's, okay, so, Kodiak, have you ever heard me say the word sword? About 80 to 90% of the time I say the word sword. And you wanna know why I say the word sword? Is because once as a joke I said the word sword, and somebody in chat got weirdly agitated with how I was pronouncing the word sword. So since then, I have said the word sword, which isn't a word, and yes, I acknowledge this, because I think it's funny. I'm kind of in the almost the same spot with pot ash. 
um, because I said potash accidentally a couple of times, not knowing how to properly pronounce it, which I'll admit, um, and somebody in chat well actually me, so now I do it intentionally because that person still watches this stream. So, I don't know. Have you ever, like, intentionally said something wrong out of spite? I always thought it was, like, pear lash. But I like saying pearl lash because I remember that better. And that's what matters to me more than anything. I mean, like, I, actually, Joker, like, just to, like, bounce off that even more. How many games out there have, like, iron ore? You know? <laughs> Or copper ore. Well, like, I guess that's a thing in Dwarf Fortress. But, like, you know, what the fuck's magnetite, lignite, hematite? Am I forgetting one? Shit. Dude, I could go for a bagel right now. That sounds great. I, I don't actually know how they're supposed to be pronounced. Kesserite? That doesn't have iron in it. Like, you can't get iron out of Kesserite, can you? I thought Kesserite was, like, tin. I learned recently that the world... the No, not recently. I Recently is a very inaccurate way to describe this story. Years ago, I was listening to a show on the BBC about pronunciation, okay? And I was listening to it on the CBC rebroadcast of the BBC program. Because every now and again, the BBC partners with the CBC, and BBC radio stuff can get broadcasted on CBC radio stuff, usually pretty late at night. And I'm one of those crazy people who still listens to FM and AM radio. Um, and uh, I was listening to this radio program pretty late at night, and they were talking about pronouncing words. And around, and it was a call-in show, so you could actually call in and like ask about different words, and they talk about the pronunciation of it. And then somebody calls in, and they stated that they were uh, a university professor from some university I've never heard of, and they work in the study of the English language. And the word pronunciation is pronounced pronunciation, and that they were pronouncing the word wrong the entire show, and it stuck with me. Um, Van Ori has bestowed the name Phycodnumul Listicog upon an iron battle axe. Uh, speaking of iron battle axes, I think I'm going to give these squads a break seize. Um, we're going to jump up to here. You. Eh, oh, stop training. You are there anyway. You are uh, probably heading up to this. There we go. I don't think they're training anywhere. And both you... Uh, I nod and Fath need to rejoin this squad. Any happy lady dwarf. Okay, so sort by happiest first lady. Got it. Who is it named? Does... Would you prefer a clother or a gem cutter? Or gem setter, rather. Clother with a pickaxe or a gem cutter? Gem, gem, gem setter, not cutter. Shadow absorber. Also, let me just double check that shadow doesn't already have a name. Yeah, no, you don't. Clother, okay. Shadow absorber, here to absorb the shadow. You are impervious to the effects of stress and has a very calm demeanor. She very rarely develops negative feelings towards things and is assertive. Generally finds herself to be quite hopeful about the future and is often lustful. Generally acts impartially and is rarely moved to mercy and tries to do things correctly. Each time is quite comfortable with others that have a different appearance or culture and she likes to brawl. She generally acts with a narrow focus on the current activity and needs alcohol to get through the working day and can't, doesn't really care about anything anymore. Uh, dreams of raising a family and personally holds the idea of... Uh, competition among the most important and would encourage it whenever possible. Holds uh, fairness to be one of the highest ideals and despises cheating of any kind. Is affronted by the whole notion of maintaining decorum and finds so-called dignified people disgusting. Respects, respect, respects power, respects power, uh, and doesn't care about art one way or any other. Uh, Napalm with the sideburns. Thanks for the 16th month, mate. You can rename door. If you, anything with a feather, you can click on and rename. 
Um, one of the biggest things to tell people right at the very beginning of your fort, Blueheart, is give your first seven dwarves nicknames. Because, like, you know how they talk about Dwarf Fortress as a story generator? The only way to really reasonably follow dwarves, unless you're a crazy person and can remember their last names, um, is by giving them a nickname. You give them a little nickname, and then suddenly that's a main character in your show. So now, your fantasy show that you are making, um, the best way to... Uh, keep track of dwarves and have friends around the fort and know what's going on and uh, keep track of important dwarves, um, then dwarves, uh, you can see the characters learn and evolve. Is clothing important? Um, chat room, can I get a round of beers for this tier two subscription for 16 months for Napalm Cyburns? Greatly appreciate you, man. Um, yes, clothing is important. Um, as clothing starts to degrade, they get X's. So, um, by the, when it's just an, it's just a word, um, or if it has these little symbols, that means it's higher quality or has decorations. But when it gets an X, it means that it's slightly showing some wear, right? Um, the bolder and more X's they have, uh, the more, uh oh, haunted by the dead. I, I need to probably place, uh, some, anyway, we'll worry about that in a second. Um, the, the bolder and bigger the X's are, the more tattered the clothing is. And um, if it becomes tattered enough that it becomes old clothing, they start getting negative thoughts, unless they have a very specific mindset on life, which is they do not care about personal possessions, which is pretty rare for dwarves. Um, and, uh, or if they also don't care about like looking fancy. Looking fancy is another thing that can make them do that. Anyway, um, so if their clothing wears off or gets old, they get upset. If their clothing rots off their body, that's one of the most distressing things that can happen to a dwarf, period. And they will be upset for the rest of their lives, more or less. And, um, yeah, so yes, you, you need to make clothes. You need to make cloth and you need to make clothes. Same lane. Thank you very much for the tier three subscription. Holy shit, dude. I think they should make bedding out of used clothes. Although, isn't that literally every time we trade? It's the humans that like the old clothes? Seriously, thank you very much for the brand new tier three subscription. So right off the bat, uh, Samlin, um, I, I, I have to give you sound commands because tier twos and up get that. Uh, sound commands are, allow you to uh, make noises in the chat. Uh, I'm sure other people in chat can show you how. It's pretty simple. Uh, but because you're at tier three, and I always tell tier three Ooh. subs this, and they almost never actually follow up, uh, means you can reach out to me off stream uh, and send me a sound bite that you would like uh, as your unique soundbite, and I can make you a unique soundbite for the duration of your subscription. But thank you. Or you can just have the sound commands go nuts. Dish towels? Yeah. Bike rags! Specific type of types of people understand this. Hogan the peasant has been found dead. Erm. Um... The dwarf bone carver cold butcher punches the baroness in the head. Cole, did you kill a baron? No, you did. Why? Did, was that a tantrum? Was that a crime? Are people reporting the crime? Huh. What if I are, um, hmm. Oh wait, never mind. They're we actually have witnesses against that person. I'm slightly concerned by this. <laughs> why did you just kill a person randomly? I mean, not randomly, but why did you kill a person? That is a big ass army out there. Making me slightly nervous, man. Eh, yeah, whatever. I guess it's fine. Maybe I can resurrect that dwarf too? Yeah, it is a pretty good visual. I, I tend to agree. I just, I love the way this fortress has ended up looking. I think it, it looks beautiful. Apparently there are two mangled corpses, also stacked. I don't even know who stacked is, but maybe we're about to find another dead dwarf. Oh, there it is. Also, the best part is most of them, uh-oh. 
Okay, never mind. I see what's happening. We are having a little bit of a tantrum spiral. So somebody killed a Baron, and everybody who is loyal to that Baron is now uh, killing each other, so we're about to lose a fuckload of dwarves in the next few minutes. Uh, we just lost uh, Kubak. We just lost Asob. Um, and it appears that a lot of my dwarves here are just fighting. Um, ah, Irvad the Merchant was found dead twice. That's a good sign. Meaning, um, somebody just came back as a zombie. Irvad, where where are you? This one? You you just you you keep coming back, okay? This is fine. Question is is who's the necromancer in the vicinity doing this? Oh, is it you? This isn't even one of mine. Hmm. So this person isn't a member of my fortress. I'm going to tell all of my soldiers to go kill this necromancer. The pilgrim. One, because you're probably not actually friendly, and two, you're the one resurrecting all these bodies right here. Which is causing kind of some major issues here. There's also a unfriendly zombie right there. Okay. Question is, is, I'm trying to keep track of all of my necromancers. So you're right there. Where are you? You're in the middle of everything. Bonesaw, damn it! God damn it, Bonesaw! about you? Big bangs in the middle of this mess. Tell an Arthos not. Scobbold's farming in the basement. Okay. I mean, sometimes things just gotta hit the fan, you know? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell my necromancers to go down here. If I can. Um. But let's just see what happens. I am going to send the rest of the military into the middle of this. Remember how I locked the door because I was like, well, we need to um, deal with this siege somehow. Well, at least the frame rate's still working. So it appears to be just like a couple of dumb dwarves that keep coming back as zombies. The purple ones. We just need them to get completely mutilated and then it should it should not be too big of an issue. We also actually haven't lost that many dwarves. That is a lot of blood, yeah, I will agree with that. Baby Blueford is alive and in the middle of this, by the way, and has killed this dwarf twice. This is actually gonna be really good for your training. Shoutouts to um, this guy, Silob, who's in the middle of all of this. This guy. He's been hanging out here for a while. Definitely been useful. Although he's ready to leave now. It's kind of related to a few of the dwarves, too. Who is this? Anyway. Dumb ob? I agree. Very dumb ob. Oh, god damn it. <laughs> Cog, you are ruining everything for me. Okay, let's see. How, how many unfriendly zombies are there on the map currently? Literally one. This one. Well, I guess there's two now because I just unpaused, but. This will eventually clear up, so I'll just leave it unpaused. We'll just watch this go out. More mangled every time? Yeah, I mean, its guts are hanging out now. This would have been way more convenient if my military was in the vicinity, but they're not. Okay, we just lost another population. Here comes the military. Who is this? This is Obok, one of the generals.
We haven't actually lost that many, just like a dozen. Yeah, I mean, like, yeah, about a dozen. A little less than a dozen. Yeah, so this, this ain't too bad. Also, the frame rate's, like, kind of okay still, which... Fortunately, like, there isn't too many mangled bits. No, Obok is just shirtless. I don't have any artifact armor. We have certainly gained more intelligent undead, though. I, I love watching, like, stupid zombie die, come back as a smart zombie, die, come back as a stupid zombie, die, come back as a smart zombie, die, come back as a stupid zombie. I kind of love it. <laughs> now we've lost a dozen, yep. I mean, we are preparing for the end of this fortress, right? Oh, great. Thanks for that up. Devilish. Got it. Should should be gone now. Let me know if I got it all devilish. Oh, also, I've lost two of my necromancers. Geotrack is uh, still alive, however. He is, of course, walking up here and into the vicinity. Let's follow Geotrack. Also, now I'm in an ad break, so I have to pause. I did? Cool. No, the, everything that you... Okay, Blue Heart, first off, am I in a, an ad right now, or can you see me? If you can see me, type in Y. Yeah, also, um, Telenartho appears to be dead. Oh, nope, never mind. You are just simply a lich. Which means you are undead. It does mean you get booted out of the squad, though. I'm just waiting for this ad to end. Yeah, it is kind of fitting. I think we may be nearing the end of this. Black Flag Redneck is gifting five memberships in the YouTube channel. So if you're watching on YouTube, check that screen real quick because you may have just been gifted a membership. Cheers, Black Flag. Um, so, Blueheart, everything that you see in my gameplay is vanilla. I don't use any content mods. Every single thing that you see me doing is stuff that you can do in the vanilla game. Everything from necromancy, raising the undead, to, um, you know, firing lava out of minecarts. This is entirely vanilla. Okay, you know what? Actually, this is probably just making things worse. I mean, frame rate picked up for a second there. But the direction I'm seeing the dwarves heading makes me think that we may be through the worst of it. I realize we're still hearing the thing died, come back, died, come back thing, but I'm watching the direction the dwarves are heading, and they're all heading south. Thanks to an LP beam for my sub gift. Cooler one, yay, Crypt Wambler. How is boarding of dwarfs going so far? Uh, pretty good. This is also banana. Also... I think this is my first time ever noticing this. There are weapons in this weapon rack, chat. Holy crap, that's kind of cool. 1337 hours. Hey, there you go. It's all uphill from here.
Yeah, I've also never seen that sprite. That is a first for me. Oh no! Chat room? Van Ori is not with us. I think we may have lost Van Ori. My legendary ambusher and tactician with like a, over a 150 kills. There's some blood on the floor. We're working on it. It'll clean itself up eventually. We've got a bit of a necromancer loop going on. Reminds you of RPG Maker for some reason. It's a similar perspective, so. What does it show if you click the rack? I'm assuming it would just be a weapon rack with items underneath it. Currently, it has a whip in it, and somebody is trying to get the whip. This is fine. The plan is I have no plan right now because um, there's quite literally nothing I can do. So the plan is we just wait for this fight to end. I mean, hold on, let me just hold, hover my mouse here and you'll see these pop up in real time. Bring the bears in. And they're going to do what exactly? Also, who's going to bring the bears in? Pretty much the entire fort's in this one screen. Also, dang, devilish, you're winning all the tickets today. So it's like Atir and Kubok are like the culprits right now. Because this area over here is like cleared up and done. Uh, what'd you walk into? Uh, necromancers. Okay, so somebody started tantruming, killed one of my barons, and that made a couple people kill some of my other barons that were just kind of hanging out, like visiting the fort. Um, and then, uh, one of my necromancers was in the general vicinity, and, uh, now there's blood everywhere. So, that. <laughs> And there isn't too much I can do about it. I mean, if I just scroll down this list, every light blue name is now a zombie. We did not have this many when we started. Um, so there is that. I, I mean, I, I could use DF hack to stop this fight, but I don't really see the point. We'll just let it play out. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people need to subtle scribe if we're going to get back up to a thousand Twitch subs, which I think I need to wait for adventure mode for that day to come. And even then, maybe my birthday. I don't like that person just standing in the door there. You want to eat pasta, so go eat pasta. I'm sure you can access some pasta. Mysteries of Genius. There's just a book on the ground. I wonder if that book managed to get a kill in all of this mess. Hmm. 
I mean, necromancer forts often end up going this way eventually. Kind of collapsing into some horrific chaos. Yo, track is still with us, though. Probably just in the middle of this mess. Yeah, more or less. Castle Dive Tattoo of Sun is his name. How many kills do you have out of this? 19 kills. All right. Everything's anything that is capable of reanimating reanimates. I don't think feet can reanimate. I know hands can. According to Tarn, it has to be able to grab you and strangle you, or it can't reanimate. That was their like requirements of what could and what couldn't be reanimated. So if it can grab you and strangle you, uh, it can reanimate. There's a lot of dwarves in that tile right there. Nope, you died again. So I don't think feet have ever been able to reanimate, but I know that like arms can, hands can, skin can, I think hair can. Yeah, I've, I've had skin reanimate. Certain types of limbs can, but feet can't. Um, skeletons can, but skeletons can't be friendly. But I, I've never really looked too far into the exact limitations. I know that feet can't, though. Why is your blood there? Because you might be dead. But I'm not really worrying about keeping track. Yeah, you are dead. Um, I'm not really worrying about keeping track of who's dead until this fight's over because in case you can't tell, people are constantly dying and undying. And I don't really feel like, you know, going through and trying to figure that out until it's just done. No friendly clacking fellas. There is no such thing as a friendly clacking fella. That is a necromancer that keeps getting resurrected and unresurrected. What set this in motion? Uh, somebody tantrumed and killed a Baroness. Um, visitors can be friends and kindred spirits with people that hang out in the fortress. And if a dwarf's kindred spirit or best friend dies, uh, it can cause them to try and kill the person who killed their best friend. Um, so one thing led to another in this. <laughs> um, also seems to be getting worse again. Alana Rama, thank you very much for the raid. Game's running in slow motion because we have a dramatic slowdown happening currently. But, uh, Ionic, hello. What's up, Lex? How's things? Blue Squid, Night Dweller. How's things? How was your stream? What were you up to? No, not really Civil War. Civil War is a specific thing that can't happen. This isn't a Civil, civil War. If you want to be, like, specific about Dwarf Fortress terms, I you could call this a loyalty cascade, but not technically. The only reason it's turned into a loyalty cascade-esque event is because of the zombies. Um, this is just kind of a necromancy loop. Civil War is a very specific thing. I can confirm that copying raid messages is hard. Mm -hmm. I've This is part of the reason I don't use them. I just make people post emotes. Works for me. I'm okay. Getting by. Surviving. Yeah, no, Civil Wars is when you go to war with your own faction. And I'm not at war with my own faction. This was just dwarves being mad that their friend died. I feel like the frame rate just went up, but I think it went up by a frame. It's on the edge of going mad and killing each other. Sounds like you're playing the game correctly then. Right before you typed it out, I, I, I just stone beat you to it. <laughs> it 
Thrones wrist brace across the room. Quit typing with chopsticks. You'll be able to type faster. And just make sure you hit slime with it. Ah, frame rate, I hardly knew ye. Yep. Ah, see, there we go. Game, could we get back up to two frames a second? That'd be great. I think I'm going to be able to recover from this. Lots of question marks with that, though. What, throwing a wrist, wrist bra brace at slime? <laughs> Is the doodle idea? I mean, I once saw a dwarf beat the crap out of another dwarf with a crutch. Does that count, Helen? Although nothing will compete with the um, bronze colossus beating the shit out of my entire fortress with a sock. Nothing will beat that. That was top couple moments of all time in this video game. Or just go bloop. Hmm. I would... Th okay. Different doodle idea. Elfie. Playing racquetball or like pickleball but just boing. Just saying. Be a good doodle idea. And it doesn't involve, like, things being thrown at slime. <laughs> but the ball is just a smaller slime. I personally don't think that Ettons are super scary. One came in, died to your rooster, a peacock, and a, oh yeah, well, okay. <laughs> I mean, the miner like miners are like quietly often extraordinarily good combat wise. I, I you know I know I said this like ten minutes ago, but I think we're getting to the end of this. I think I still have like a hundred and thirty dwarves left. Is it still like the same two dwarves that keep resurrecting? Yeah, it's still like Kubok in that tier. Okay, there's a few others in there. Yeah, I mean, picks are generally pretty decent weapons. At the very least, they're pretty decent. I've had fully armed, like, Ettons to walk, walk into my fort before, but they tend to not be very good with their weapons and not use them. They tend to just punch anyway. Oh, really? That's kind of impressive. I mean, I, I've killed bronze colossuses with like... Wait, when you say golem, do you mean like a golem? Like a mod? Or do you mean bronze colossus? Because that's really impressive if that's a bronze colossus. If you have something in your game called golems, then... You mean colossus. Okay. Okay. Yeah, no, that's impressive. I mean, if, if, if they've if they done that... I tend to just shoot them with bolts now. I was like, bolts tend to just kind of, like, cut them to pieces. Shred them pretty quickly. Oh, no, that's fair. I just have to confirm, because there is a mod that adds, like, constructible golems to the game. Any of the birds with his club? So you lucked out? He's probably trying to punch them or bite them. You don't even know where they came from, so they must have wandered in from the edge of the map. Put cage traps down everywhere. Once they're in cages, then you can train them. Once they are trained, then you can remove them from the cages and put them in a pasture. Good question. I'm getting close to just, like, using some DF hack shenanigans to get rid of the bodies so they stop. But not quite. 
If I wasn't streaming, I would just get up and leave and come back in five minutes. You would have 10 more minutes pass. All right, I'll give it till two o'clock. It's 151, 152 now. Or two o'clock. Dinner break? I already ate lunch. I already ate lunch. Blood sugar was a little bit on the lowish side and my face wasn't feeling great. <sighs> Dinner would be after stream. So that would mean that stream's over. Lives in combat against a troll. The dwarf pick up his arm and bashes the troll in the head. Oh, really? Um, when I was recording footage for the No Clip Dwarf Fortress documentary, uh, I had to record footage from much older versions of the game. In the very first version of the game ever with adventure mode in it, I got into a conflict with two friendly dwarf, like two of my dwarves, my my, my adventure and my companion, um, against a pack of lions. We killed the first lion. And while killing the first lion, one of its arms got thrown, lo got lobbed off. Um, and then a another lion came running at us, and we, I, I, I was bleeding and couldn't pick my other weapon back up. But I could pick up the leg of the lion, so I threw the leg of the lion at the other lion, and actually managed to kill the second lion by throwing bits of the dead lion at the lion. And then my friend got mauled by the third lion, and I killed the third lion by beating it with bits of the dead lion. Then I took the corpse of my friend and then started trying to travel home, and then got attacked by another lion, and I managed to kill one of them by throwing the body of my friend at the lion. Pretty much, yeah. Not a deke. Yeah, pretty much. They're still at it. He ain't lying. I <laughs> it's not super possible in current versions of the game, but you can throw other things. Sounds like Grandpa's... <laughs> what, like, having to, like, wrestle a bear and then, like, uh, drive a truck up a road and then, like, uh, fight through 15, like, miles of open battlefield to get to school kind of discussions? <laughs> Like those like ex exaggerated stories. I've, I've never had a family member tell me a story like that, but my parents just walked to school. Back in my day, yeah. I had to hunt a deer every night for dinner. Hmm. I did have to run around coyotes on the way to work. The Sacred General. Well, at least we're out of frame a second. The game is moving. Oh, yeah. How else are we going to feed the family of 25? Darius. Coyotes can be a little freaky, but, like, they're pretty shy. I don't know. I've never really had a problem with a wild coyote. The creepiest thing that ever happened to me with a coyote specifically was I was... Um, I'm, 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 I'm joking, Galley Dogs. Um, I, I grew up in a family of five. Um... I once was sleeping in a hammock while camping and a coyote walked directly underneath me, which was kind of spooky, but, and I know it was a coyote because like I heard the rustling and I like peeked out from over the edge of my hammock. I was like, oh, that's a coyote. 
looked over to my friends like, dude, there's a coyote under me, and the coyote vanished. Like, it was gone immediately. I was like checking out our campsite and walked underneath me. That was kind of creepy, but. Our initials, I would just be trying to carve a cool S in the side of it. I love how this cat just like walked through this whole thing. <laughs> Whose cat is that? <laughs> it's upset, me too. Coyotes are easily scared off, wolves not so much. Yeah, I've never actually seen a wolf in the wild. We don't really have them here. Uh, that's uh, frame rate going, getting better in ASCII is a very common thing. It's the reason I used to refer, uh, refuse to use um, graphical tile sets in older versions of the game because the game would run noticeably slower. It's not such a big deal though since um, what's it called? Uh, since SDL two, but it's like it's just less for your computer to process, right? Massive zombification, nailed it. You got T. So what's happening here? Well, okay, so I, I had a bunch of neutral barons who were part of my faction but not part of my fortress living in this tavern and sleeping in a dormitory. And one of them decided, or one of my dwarves in the vicinity decided to tantrum and murdered uh, one of the neutral barons. Um, when that happened, then all of those neutral barons then attacked that dwarf and, um, well, the rest is history. Uh, and uh, there was a necromancer in the vicinity, so... We've got Nodokasa, this dwarf. Basically, all of these dwarves are just repeatedly getting re-rezzed. So there isn't a, like, what's it called? Um, there isn't a uh, loyalty cascade or anything happening here. There's just... A lot of zombies getting resurrected and dying repeatedly, and one of them appears to be a necromancer. Bonesaw is one of them. Geotrack isn't. Also, apparently the fighting has moved all the way down into the main area now. Shoutouts to this zombie is over in the tavern by himself just hanging out. <laughs> Anybody, like, just cooking somewhere? Well, these two are down here. I was just hanging out with my giant... Oh, no! My giant wolf died. Yeah, there's there there's this, there's been a siege going on the whole time. Like, we agreed to lock the doors to just try and clean up the fort, but then this happened. What's up, Adra? How's things? Game just new? Sure. Well, chat room, what do you think? Do we use DF hack to clean this up a bit and make this fight end sooner? I'm still going to have to, like, deal with all these negative moods. I can just unexist the zombies that keep getting re, like, animated, which will speed things up quite a bit. What do you think, chat? Yes or no? Unless we want to just keep staring at this slideshow. I mean, trust me, the angry dwarves are going to keep going up, but. What? Why did the music just cut out like that immediately? That's bizarre. <laughs> I thought the game was going to crash, but it didn't. Oh, it's because we're getting the, 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 the death music again. Okay. Noto Casa. Actually, I, I wonder. Your body might disappear and then immediately come back. Eh, maybe not. Okay. Sweet. So that, that's one. Uh, 
Uh, Chad, it's up to you guys to explain when people ask what's going on and explain to them what's going on. Okay. This will calm things down quite a bit. You're another one of the problem ones. Okay, let's try on pausing. Yeah, I mean, once once we get this place dusted up, everything will be fine. I'm still dying. Looking for zombies that keep getting resurrected repeatedly. Okay, well, at least the frame rate's picked up quite a bit. Question is, where are these ones? Okay, let's pause. Is the fight still, fight still going on? Uh, <laughs> I feel like... I don't think that anybody should need to have to answer that question. But <laughs> here we are, I suppose. Yeah, let's wait for a second. I think I may have mostly fixed this. Is Bonesaw still a member of my fort? The fight won't be over until the frame rate comes back. When the frame rate comes back, then the fight's pretty much over. The problem is, is I have no way of telling who's fighting who. Unib. Hmm. All right, let's try and pausing the game and see what happens. Okay, at here, where's your body? Who's left? Oh, you. There you go. Body's still there. What? But I deconstructed that. Go away. Cease. Stop. Managed to kill it two more times. Okay, who's still up? Kubok. Trying to just use magic to sort this, and then let's just smoke. Clear smoke. Frame right back. Game's thinking about it. Thinking real hard about it. Cook is fighting with who? Well, 
flying bolt. Oh, well, I mean, you're not even in the fort, so <laughs> that's your problem. All about uh, you. Are you vomiting? Okay, so dwarves are just vomiting now. We might be through the worst of it. Might be. Let's see if dwarves are crawling off into the bedrooms yet. Although, the good news is... I haven't heard the tick-tick sound in a minute. But there's still a lot of fighting happening. <laughs> On the bright side, I have a very large hospital, so... Noted, Baka. I will keep that in mind for the future. What's up, feline felon? That's interesting. You know, it's interesting that people say that they're a first-time viewer on Twitch. No, I mean, you, you apparently... Wait, what? According to this, you typed in my chat yesterday. I guess I must have, I must have not been live then. Because Twitch tells me when someone's a first-time chatter. So it usually stands out that, like, you didn't show up as the first time Saturday. So, so you spoke here once before. When did you speak? But uh, apparently, ac according to your chat logs, you, you said something in my chat yesterday in the evening. I was just curious. But anyway, hi. Welcome to the channel. I wasn't live, so it doesn't matter. Two dwarves worth it. Elephant infestation. Forgetfulness. Good mood, James. Not everything has to be like a dangerous possibility. All right, let's start cheating again. Let's see if this will fix it. Yeah, see, we don't actually have a loyalty cascade right now. That's what I thought. Cyrilac, thank you very much for gifting a subscription. Greatly appreciate you helping us crawl back up in the general direction of a thousand subscribers, but that'll take a while. Suited Giraffe, thanks for the dollar. And uh, Kiki? Kikai? Kikai. Kiaki? Those fives are throwing me off. Uh, thank you very much for the Prime subscription. This Appreciate message you. is brought to you by Greg's chat log. Greg's chat log. Proof that T Pain was in his chat. For four hours in the middle of the night, and I'm pretty sure he was asleep. But yes, T Pain was in fact in my chat at one point. Because he raided somebody else, and that uh, somebody else raided me. I say dwarves are moving and not pile driving zombies currently. Elfie, thanks for the dollar. Hi. Hi. Fortunately, I have a pretty damn large hospital. Telenartho is alive as a lich. Oh boy. Oh boy. Well, the funny thing about the air quotes new emotes, Elfie, is they're not new. They're actually redos from a number of years ago that were really popular. People have been asking them to, to come back for a very long time, so. Kissicky. I feel like I'm butchering your name just saying it out loud. Like, I feel like I'm saying it wrong, but if I'm saying it right, then yay. All right, so the frame rate should slowly start to fix itself now. There we go. It's fixing itself. Oh my god. What a fight, man. A lot of very unintelligent, friendly, undead. Well, intelligent, friendly, not part of my side, undead. But not necessarily against me. 
What is going on? I mean, you had the exact same thing happen not too long ago, Bunk Galactic. You, oh, you of all people should know this. You've witnessed this kind of calamity yourself. Oh. Somebody else was found dead. Oh, that's outside. <laughs> I, did I just get a migrant wave? That would be kind of awkward if I did. Right. Well, the dwarves are heading off into the hospital, so I guess that's good. Um... Most of the dwarves are resting. Watch out for those necromancers. Doing a bunch of diagnosing. Thanks for the dollar suited. Neokai, thanks for the two bucks. There is a hype train going on, but I feel like whenever hype trains start these days, they just kind of peter out. So if you guys want to prove me wrong and make that hype train go somewhere, I'll acknowledge it. Moose Moose, thanks for the 16th month. Welcome back, dude. Well, at least we're back up to 20 frames a second. Game's playable again. Who isn't dying in the basement again? Someone probably dying in the basement again. Well, I was originally intending on just cleaning up the fortress for a bit, so I guess that's what we get to do now. Also, probably need to make more tunes. The big problem is, is I don't know what of these bodies were friendly and what are not. This is Sparta! So what happened? Okay, I'm going to explain this for the umpteenth time. I had a bunch of neutral barons in my fortress that were neutral um, because when you get the uh, when you become the capital barons just come visit I had a bunch of neutral barons in my fortress perfectly normal one dwarf somewhere in the fort I don't know who tantrumed and killed one of those barons and then everybody who was best friends with that baron decided to try and kill that dwarf. And then everybody who was best friends with that dwarf decided to try and kill that dwarf. And everything, everybody who was best friends with that dwarf decided to kill that dwarf, because that can happen. Um, and I have necromancers in the fort. One thing led to another, and that. It's, it's a pretty simple process, really. It's one of those inevitabilities if you are a capital and also have a lot of, um, you know, Necromancer's in your fort. No, not a loyalty cascade. Not a loyalty cascade. A loyalty cascade is where half of your faction fortress becomes part of a different faction. So it wasn't a loyalty cascade because I tried to fix it with DFAC using that and it said not a loyalty cascade. So it wasn't a loyalty cascade. Also not a tantrum spiral. A tantrum spiral is where one person tantrums and that person tantruming pisses off somebody else so much that they tantrum so that somebody else tantrums. Tantrum spirals also actually can't happen in the game anymore. Um, unless you are extraordinarily good at pissing off your dwarves, which I guess I'm not that good at, but no, literally what happened? A dwarf killed a dwarf, and then two other dwarves were like, we're going to kill that dwarf. These dwarves were not part of my faction, right? So a dwarf that is just a visitor, just temporarily living in my fortress, tantrumed and killed another dwarf. That dwarf killed another dwarf. What would actually happen is like one dwarf would tantrum and then like five dwarves would die and be over, like immediately. That's what would normally happen in a situation like that. But what happened was I have necromancers in the vicinity. So because there was a necromancer in the vicinity, it just starts looping. No, because a tavern brawl is also a specific mechanic. I know, I realize I'm just saying no, but, no, but, because you guys are all using terms for things that can actually happen in games, right? Or in the game. Like a tavern brawl is a thing that can happen. It's what happens when somebody gets too drunk and they brawl under the influence. It's a crime that can be convicted. Um, this wasn't a tavern brawl. This was one dwarf who tantrumed, who wasn't part of my, fa who wasn't living in the fortress permanently, a visitor tantrumed, killed another visitor, and then the visitors just started killing each other because they were killing each other's friends. So a visitor killed a visitor, killed a visitor, killed a, and then that would normally be over, but because that visitor then became a zombie, then hell broke loose. So it was, if you want to use fancy terms that don't matter for it, we could say that there was an assassination attempt and um, it, I guess, succeeded, 
and then their friends, uh, uh, the friends of the person who was assassinated killed that person, and then suddenly there was two zombies in the room. Because loyalty cascades got fixed, that's why. Like, basically what would cause a loyalty cascade to happen was you used to be able to tell your military to kill your own dwarves. Okay? And if you told your military to kill your own dwarves, what would happen was then any dwarf who is friends with that dwarf would then be like, well, I'm going to go kill my kill the military now. And then the military just kills everybody, basically. That's what a loyalty cascade was. That was the easiest way to cause one, was you tell your dwarf to kill one of your own dwarves, and then, oops, I accidentally, everybody's a zombie. Or, oops, I accidentally, everybody's, you know, evil now. And no longer on my side. That's a loyalty cascade. Thanks for the little hype train chat. $14 and the $3 in... Or, and three gifts and the and the three subscriptions. Blah, 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 blah. Brrr, this is this is a lot. Is Telen Artho still alive? Oh no, he is. Okay. I'm really sad that I lost Van Ori in that though. Hope the siege breaks soon. These bits are brought to you by Captain Crunch. Oops. All loyalty cascades. The the thing is, and, and the reason I'm so well um actually with like these mechanics is loyalty cascade and a lot of these other terms that we all use are very, 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 very specific bugs from older versions of the game that have been fixed. What happened here was just somebody killed somebody and then a necromancer resurrected it. It was literally that simple. This wasn't a loyalty cascade. This wasn't anything that wasn't intended. What we just had was intended mechanics. And because this, they're, they're, one of the biggest problems with this game is that there is a stupidly large amount of false information about it in that there's a lot of really out of date information. And what I try to do is just be like, okay, so this is a very specific thing that you're referencing. And no, that's not what happened. So apologies if I'm being a little bit too specific, but. The problem is, is loyalty cascade is a cool as hell sounding thing. <laughs> that, the suited draft. Like, to me, like, the words loyalty cascade is cool as hell sounding, but, like, having lived through loyalty cascades in Dwarf Fortress, I can tell you they were not cool. They sucked. <laughs> they were awful. Um, but also, that form of loyalty cascade no longer exists. So maybe we need a new term for it. So maybe it was a loyalty cascade. I don't know. It's just not a really good definition. It's more of, like... Necromancer's gone haywire. <laughs> yeah. And the game needs to acknowledge it, I think. Or actually, rather, I think it would be ideal if the game acknowledged it. If that makes any sense. I think it would be ideal if the game acknowledged it. You know? Because then everybody could just pick up on the same things. I don't know if we'll ever live in that world, but... Revenge of the Assassinated. Assassin's Creed uh, might like a word with that, but. Let me just check my doctors currently. Okay, I need to check the current status of my hospital. How many dwarves are currently set as not doctors, diagnosers, only one. Okay, well, let's toss in. Claiborne, congratulations, you're now a doctor. Um, Ryoshin, cat, congratulations, you're now a doctor. Uh, surgeons, uh, Fallout Rain, you're now a doctor. I need more variety in here just in case they're all injured.
It's like everybody's pale and seriously injured. Okay, we got one dwarf cleaning self. A lot of dwarves, no jobs. A bunch of dwarves going to go pick up equipment. Lots of storing item and stockpile. Yeah, literally nobody's doing doctoring jobs. All right, well, let's just turn on this. Lock them in these upper areas. At least the frame rate's back. I love how all of this has happened and there's a bunch of dwarves that are like, I need to speak with the manager, like right now. Actually, I'm gonna jump over to labor. Uh, standing orders, chores. Let's just get them to assist with patients. Um, so water hauling. Is there no like, oh, okay. <laughs> Feed patients and prisoners then I guess. every time a mass traumatization happens. I mean, just be happy that the mayor's still alive. I'm just amazed that I still have my Baron. Like genuinely, I'm kind of amazed they made it through. My hammerer is dead, my manager's dead, broker's dead. Sorry, Napalm. I'm going to quickly pull this lever and see if I can resurrect some of these as friendlies. A scobbled is standing where I need them to. How many kills do you have? Only one? All right, so you're not one of the problem ones. I mean, you might be one of those intelligent zombies that didn't join us, because there's a few of them. <laughs> Also, you didn't really have a, you didn't really, I didn't really have a site. No, I, I certainly did not. I can confirm that. Barons and Mayor's War Dogs. They had War Dragons earlier, but they died <laughs> due to um, unfortunate circumstances. Although right now I feel like assigning my my Baron War Dogs would be a bad idea because he is a necromancer. Um, so that might actually be quite a bad idea. I might actually just go down the list and disable a bunch of this. So I need you, hopefully Domas, and you to become friendly, but they may not. Well, the thing is, pets can never be friendly. If, like, animals that are resurrected are never going to be on your side, they will always be neutral and attack everything. What? Okay, there you go. Oh, maybe they're too mangled. Well... That's a shame. Let's go here. If like if they were a named animal? I mean, yeah, I, I wouldn't be against it. I think that would be neat. So Lytas just has a corpse. Or mangled, mangled. Mangled, mangled, mutilated, mangled. Well, I mean, intelligent undead are intelligent in that they keep operating as dwarves. They're just undead, right? Let's see whose bodies are here. Okay. 
Okay. Can try hand chest. Like just the ones that are listed as corpse, I will try and resurrect. So chat, I might retire the fortress tonight and start a new fort tomorrow. What do you think? Because I think this is a pretty good villain arc location to leave this fortress on. Like we're we're pretty much at that point. Like this has been a fun fort. Personally, I've had a great time with this fort. But I think we may be nearing the point where it's just wise to end the fort and move on. Or retire it and move on. Like, call this the villain. Because the next faction or fortress I would like to do um, is in the same world. But part of the dwarven faction that this fortress is currently at war with. Which is... Because we are right here in the middle. These guys... Right here, the Rack of Lobsters um, is a fortress that the faction I'm currently playing, which is the Veiled Halls, is at war with. So I think that would allow us to settle in this general vicinity. Uh, but regardless, we need to wait this siege out, so. Um, well, right now, if I were to show up in adventure mode, every single forgotten beast that's in the basement has the possibility of just being straight up in the fort because they don't lock doors. They unlock doors. Um, there'd probably be a lot of dead dwarves in it. <laughs> um, well, actually, actually, I think it, it, it kind of depends. I, I've, I've seen some weird shit happen when you go back to a fort or visit it in adventure mode, which is one of the bigger complaints, I think, with adventure mode in general. But uh, to a degree, yes. In theory, it would still be functioning. Where's Big Bang? Are you still alive? Oh, Big Bang didn't make it. A lot of animals in Dwarf Fortress don't need to be fed. Um, because while, yes, in theory, they do technically starve, the game doesn't... Somebody in YouTube comments once got, really, once got really mad at me about this comment, but Dwarf Fortress skips a lot of unnecessary simulation that it doesn't need to worry about in uh, Fortress mode. So things like dogs. Dogs can't starve to death, right? Um, it does not worry about certain types of animals and whether or not... Um, and whether or not they are... Um, I need to just go to tasks and forbid a bunch of things. And whether or not they are um, being taken care of, right? Like, so um, elephants and grazing animals need to be pastured so that they graze because they will starve to death. But, like, dogs, bears, dragons, rocks, uh, giants, all enemy invaders do not need to eat or drink. No, your, your, your dogs do not need meat. Because that would be, like, look at this fortress, right? This is a pretty old fortress. Now, let's just say, let's say, um, robe. I currently have 1,461 robes in this fort, I think. <laughs> so, or actually, sorry, no. Uh, upper body armor. Now, imagine I also needed to have, like, food for my animals, right? Like, cats technically eat food into our fortress. But what they're actually doing is they're eating vermin. So they eat, eat like random rats and stuff that run by, right? So they're just feeding themselves. The dwarves don't need to worry about them is like the justification for it. Nice spot for you to play here, Lore. Okay, hold on, let me check something else. Oh, I see the problem. Ha! I'm like, why is nobody getting taken care of? It's because orderlies are not set to everybody do this. I had dwarves that were set, and they all died. <laughs> I'm pretty sure, actually, they all died. Um, so we need to turn that on for everybody. At least that explains it. Hey, there's a baby crawling around. Who's your parents? Oh. 
Can't find my zombie. At least you're still alive. And uh, Telenartho, who is... I Okay, well, hey, you know, Telenartho, on the bright side, has um, acquired clothing again. That's good. Browser crash? Uh-oh. At least it's back. Dog food, toilets, and something else. I'm personally ha very happy the game doesn't worry about toilets. There we go. Now everybody's recovering wounded. I had like a specific little crew of dwarves that were, were that were recovering wounded, but... There we go. This is what we like to see. This is what I like to see. All right. And that's what I like to see. Okay, sweet. Now we can begin fixing this. What's my favorite type of pasta? Um, pasta that I am currently eating at the time of being eaten. Freeways, thanks for the 38th month with Prime. Welcome back, dude. Remember, chat, if you happen to have Twitch Prime or Amazon Prime that is linked with a Twitch account, use it on a streamer before June the uh, Ju June the 3rd, which is my birthday, because on that day, um, they're getting regional pricing. So the price, the amount that streamer gets paid is going to base on, like, the region that you're from. I'm not too picky about pasta. I feel like somebody asked me about my favorite type of pasta just a couple of days ago. Was that you, Joker? I'm wondering. Amazon greed? You know, of all of Amazon's greedy things, it kind of makes sense because Twitch itself has had regional pricing for a really long time. And it doesn't make sense if somebody is paying the equivalent of like $3 US a month for Amazon Prime and then $2.50 if that goes to a streamer. Like just, there's greed and then there's like, wow, that's actually just kind of really Ill illogical, you know? So, sure, but they're also paying me significantly better in general. Like, I'm one of the, I'm, I'm part of the upper elite class, I guess, of Twitch where I get 70-30 uh, from Twitch. So... If you subscribe to me on Twitch, I get 70%. Um, and they didn't do that a year ago. So I'm kind of okay with Prime being what it is intended as, which is a free trial. This is kind of a, a controversial take, but I wish that Prime subs didn't pay streamers anything, but instead uh, gave you ad-free viewing on the entire website. Because someone pooped in the water supply. I mean, I can kind of imagine that because I've had fortresses die because, like, some forgotten beast extract got into the water supply. So I once had a, um, this was a number of years ago, but I had a fortress that had a forgotten beast that dumped a bunch of, like, gross acid shit into um, my well. And then whenever somebody would go into the, into the hospital, they would just randomly die, and I couldn't figure out why. <laughs> and it just kind of kept up that way for a while, and it was very strange. And then suddenly I realized what was going on, and I made new well and got rid of the old one, and it was fine after that. So let's wait until this lever gets pulled. Wow, they're all just like pulling over there and getting drinks. I just need, there you go. All right, well, we were able to get one. Hand chest is now up. And uh, reg is now up. Let's just double check that they're friendly. Um, maybe not. Oh, there you are. Sweet. All right. Two more friendly zombies in the fort. That's good. And get overwhelmed? Um, 
Not really, because the thing with Dwarf Fortress is you can go from, like, early game to mid game extremely quickly, right? Um, and the answer is, yeah, there, there are guides for, like, all era of the game. But I think your best bet, because there isn't one right way to do things in Dwarf Fortress, right? And mid game looks very different depending on how you started your fortress. So because mid game can look extremely different from one person's fort to another person's fort, it's really difficult to tutorialize that era of, area of the game. Um, your best bet when trying to find help with mid game is to sit in a Discord like mine, or like the Kit Fox Discord, or um, any other Discord where there's an active door fortress, active door fortress conversation happening, and just ask anybody for help if you run into a problem. And like you said, you, you get about 140 dwarves and you get overwhelmed. What are you getting overwhelmed by? Most of those dwarves should be socializing and spending time with each other and just kind of hanging out and chilling and not worrying too much about what every single individual dwarf is doing. Because if you try and manage what every single individual dwarf is doing, you're going to run into trouble with this game because this game performs best as a game where, like I mentioned this earlier, but a game where you make a couple main characters and then everybody else is cannon fodder. Etor, the gem setter, has been possessed. At least the hospital is working at capacity. Still got a lot of dwarves resting, but let's just sort by jobs and take a peek. So if you, like, need help with a particular thing, your best bet is to pop into my chat or my Discord or the Kit Fox Discord and just ask for help with that particular thing. If you're trying to, um figure out how to progress forward, the only person that can really answer that question is you. Um, usually what I do when I make a new fort is I start off with a theme in mind, and it usually diverts pretty harshly from that original theme, and with the goal of hopefully working towards completing that theme or making something that is similar to what that theme intended initially, right? Like this fort... Um, yeah, we, we had a bit of a moody or we had a bit of a, a, a necromancer breakout. Like the goal of this fort was to build a library and try and be peaceful. But then we got a leader who definitely wasn't peaceful. And then we got a new leader who absolutely wasn't peaceful. So then we went from being peaceful to being just simply non-direct combat, uh, which was very fun. And, uh, now we're a necromancer fort because one thing led to another and oops, I accidentally fancy booked my dwarves. And I, like, it's it's all about setting a goal for a fort and trying to achieve that goal. Because there is no real end game for Dwarf Fortress. I mean, there kind of is. I, I guess you could call digging too deeply an end game goal. You could call, um, like, you could call digging too deeply an end game goal. You could call, uh, getting a the 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 monarch whomever that might be an end game goal there's there's a few things you could call end game goals but there's really no there's no way to get credits in the game right and because there's no way to get credits outside of bragging rights it's entirely player directed of what you you would like to do i accidentally fancy booked my dwarves all into necromancers they read a fancy book and learned some fancy skills, and now they can bring the dead back to life. It's a good time. So for those of you who are probably wondering, myself included, I'm going to read the names of all the dwarves that are alive still somehow. Um, a Devilish Potato, uh, Aki Thorson, Amethyst, uh, Anander, Arende, Ashitol, um, Baka Glass Benches, well, I'll just read the zombies, um, Black Flag Redneck, Bone Saw, Brewer Ba, uh, Can't Find My Zombie, I, mate, they're everywhere, uh, Claiborne, Nanothor, uh, uh, Diamond Destruct, Dominoc, Dragoon, et etern Eternity, uh, Fallout Rain, Geotrack, and of course, uh, Grunty Thirst. Also, Geotrack, I'm going to let you do other things because you seem upset. Um, Grunty Thirst, Hand Chest, Hexalyn, uh, Judo C, uh, Just a Robotic Cow, Kanord, Lazy Man, uh, Lucas J. Fox, uh, Lucky Soft, uh, Lyagushka, Mama is Wolfie, and uh, Neo Kai, as well as Nortrum. Pl 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 hmm. Plutorino, uh, Raging Cave, and Real Manchuck, Ryoshin Cat, and Rolf, uh, Royal Green, Salty Tempest, and Severin Wolfie, as well as Shadow Absorber, Skabold, Spence, and uh, Stone, Stormblood, Telenartho, uh, Terminal Wetness, Transfem, uh, UGDPY, and Winter Z, and of course, Xylium. I'm really worried about Winter Z. Why are you so happy? How is this friggin' possible? This 
Or if you scare me a little lot. I mean, sometimes you just manage to get past all odds, right? Just walking around going, ah, 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 staying alive, being a dwarf. Too drunk to care. <laughs> Too dumb to notice. Booze is low. 1,722 for 125 dwarves, about 30% of which are zombies, is low? Okay. Okay. So dwarves drink approximately once every three weeks. How many years worth of alcohol is that? Assuming all of these dwarves need booze, which they don't because a bunch of them are zombies. Etour, the gem setter, has created Elisazir, a perfect almondine, and offers it to the living fire. Yet another perfect gem. This is a perfect almondine. All craft ship is of the highest quality. It is encircled with bands of square cut almondines. That's kind of cool. But trust me, the drinks are not low. I can assure you of that. giving dwarves other tasks because turns out I don't have enough hands in the fort anymore. All right, so goal for the next of the little bit of this is recover moods as much as possible. That's a lot of blood on the ground. You had a gem cutter go mad because the floor flooded and it washed away or something. Huh. I can't say I've ever lost a, um, a strange mood to a flood. I'm assuming it was a strange mood that you encountered. That's, that's kind of amusing. <laughs> Not something I've ever had happen personally, but kind of neat. So now they should get the furniture down into there. Thanks, Frago. When someone drowned in the river. Why did they, how, okay. Cause like they'd walk up to the edge of the river to drink. How did they drown? Did something, who pushed them in, honey, but all there. But yeah, no, um, 1,710 booze is plenty. Drank too much water? Yeah, but dwarves are dumb, but they're not that dumb. I guess literally, sure. What's up, Sui? Why is it whenever you tune into my chat, I'm assuming that I'm in trouble or you need something? I don't know why, but I just, it, that's how I feel when, whenever I see you in my chat. It just, it's like, hey, what do I do? Anyway, what's up? How's things? I like that it shows the percentage of soap used. I don't remember that from before. Artifacts. Almondine Toy Forge. That's kind of neat. Dr. Onul, the cold butcher. Just chilling. Ah, well, I hope that you're having a good chilling. How's, how's work been? How's the kids? I know what I did. What did I do? Gonna get some work done? Gotcha. You doing grading or something? Legendary Mason Stonecutter. Master Intimidator. Whoa. Expert Counselor. The Belted Nettle. Cold Butcher. Is that DF hack? Tisk. That's annoying, Then Now I'm annoyed by it, because DF hack's not supposed to show any features when I have their overlay disabled. I need to uh, figure out how to disable that, then. It's like, it is kind of neat, but... I'm now just annoyed that DF hack is still doing things when it's not supposed to. Like exam that you are running for kids or are you like taking a class for something? It's a lot 
of socks. Then. Holy shit. That's a lot of stuff. I got... Left, uh, half light, half heavy, heavy aquifer. Ooh, it's kind of brutal. Um, what kind of traps were you using? I mean, cage traps shouldn't kill an elephant unless, like, you caught an elephant in a cage and then just left it in the cage because it'll starve to death in the cage because it's an elephant. Elephants need to graze. They're like horses. Better after wearing old clothing. Oh, also, combat demolishes the quality of clothing really quickly. Oh, okay. So you have, like, weapon traps and stuff. I can't remember the last time I actually defended a fort with solely weapon traps. It's been a long time. I find they take way too long to set up. <laughs> because of how I set them up, usually. Oh, to be... Okay, gotcha. Well, congratulations. You are reminding me as to why I stopped doing school stuff. <laughs> kind of glad, though, that teachers have to do competency, competency tests. Okay, your body can just get tossed. Most of this is just going to get tossed. We'll just... We'll just make... Slabs as ghosts appear. So, I read that as Taco. Tuco, Goblin Criminal. This guy seems friendly. He's a member of a Cobalt group. Prakubin. Nomadic Cobalt group. Are you friends with Cobalts? That would be amazing. Nope. Not friends with no Cobalts. The Holy Griffin of the Communion of Deeps. Uh, no, those are cobalt names. Prakubin is is a cobalt. Oh, probably. I, I wasn't looking at the, the. I was looking for uh, goblin stuff. Here, let me jump back over to them. Uh, relations. Uh, no, these are all goblin. Goblin, 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 for family, anyway. Um, for friends, that's an elf. That's an elf. Yeah, friends with plenty of elves. This family's all goblin. A lot of goblin as well. I mean, he's a member of the Bronze Scorpion, which is a goblin faction. I mean, this is one of the very first things I, I... One of the only contributions I've ever made to the Dwarf Fortress wiki was was learning that the Dwarven language is based on how Zack and Tarn used to speak with their pet cat <laughs> at, when they were younger with their cats. They would just yell at them in gibberish, and they apparently had like almost like a twin language where they would talk and very spe use very specific like combinations of words together to like talk to cats. Speaking of, my chief medical dwarf is throwing a tantrum. Should I throw him in prison? Baca glass, I hate to break it to you. You're probably going to prison. Also, amethyst? Clearly didn't get too badly into that fight because only killed one dwarf. But amethyst, who is my captain of the guard, is as happy as you can possibly be. <laughs> and also my champion. I'm kind of tempted to make her into a necromancer. Just because I think that would be funny. Because she'd just go around beating people and then immediately resurrecting them. Although that might be really bad. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. But it would be funny. Let's see. Are you going to go kill Baka? You might kill Baka.
what, making you into a necromancer? Yeah, see, like, there she goes. There goes another one. Boom, just dead. Okay, hold on. Um, Baka. Okay, you're just a corpse. Sweet. That is a sentence I just said. <laughs> oh, duh. It's a corpse that's all in one piece. Very easily resurrectable. Okay, well that's rotten now, so that won't that won't do. Once they rot, they're not resurrectable anymore. Oh boy, fresh bodies. Everybody's favorite. All right, um, let's get the necromancers back here. Is running around with a book currently. The mountain home in the modern era. I mean, wait. Oh, okay. Let's can't find my zombie. Makes sense. Wait, what? Hold on. Are you carrying two necromancers? Am I crazy? Oh, I see why. Okay. Color just hadn't updated all the way. That makes sense. So now we're just waiting for Baka Glass's body to show up. Excellent is going to go put the body on display. This is me trying to have mercy and resurrect people. Also, Stone is the mayor again. Stone was the mayor, then wasn't the mayor, and now is mayor again. Also, this is interesting. You guys remember Zwari? For like two fortresses ago. Somehow Zwari has become one of my barons because I've killed so much of this faction's royalty. So even though they don't live here, Zwari apparently is, from one of my previous forts in this world, has become a baron for this faction. Oh god, there's another one of these spam bots? Jesus Christ. Should be gone again. Apparently we're just like getting slammed with spam bots repeatedly on Discord right now. Hey mods, could you guys do me a favor and like keep a little bit of an eye on the Discord server for a bit? Just keep a little bit of an eye. Cause that was, that's two I've banned now. I mean, like, I can keep an eye on the Discord, but it's like I can kind of keep an eye on the Discord or I can keep an eye on, like, Twitch chat, and I'd, I'd rather focus on Twitch chat. Chat. Uh, two since I started streaming, so, yeah. How do you deal with FPS death? I've never suffered FPS death. I mean, the, for the frame rate went down to zero for a bit earlier today, but it's it's recovered. FPS death was an inevitability in older versions of the game, and these days, if your frame rate has gone to zero, uh, you should probably set your game so that there's less dwarves in your fort, or try disabling cavern creatures, because FPS death is unrecoverable. I've never had a frame rate, or haven't had a frame rate problem in this game in about the last five, six years. That hasn't been recoverable. And they were promoting the same Discord server, so... And seems like nothing gets done. Sounds like you need to manage your dwarves a little better. Just need somebody to come over here and pull this lever. But you need to realize that this is a game about, like, slow, like, that is designed to cause forts to fail, right? Like, you will eventually collapse. 
unless you are extraordinarily good at keeping up on literally every single little problem, which even I'm not. But then again, I don't set up forts that are designed to be good at keeping up with every single problem. Uh, the zombies that join my fort just become members of my fort. Most of them are just becoming members of my fort. You currently use DF hacks auto chop feature since running out of wood sucks. Uh, that's fine early game, but you don't want your woodcutters running into the caverns because they decided to cut down a mushroom, getting themselves killed. Any, uh, I, my, my pro tip for you is don't use DF hack auto abilities because I think they're bad. Um, but, uh, at the end of the day, you, you do you, man. Okay, so we got Baca glass back and also that other one with its intestines hanging out. Hold on, let me just double check that they are actually both, in fact, part of my team. Uh, Ulbach. Okay, yeah, you're good. And uh, Baca. There we go. Also good. Sweet. So I can just open this up and they should both just run out. Nope. Nope. They need to get rescued, it seems like. Why is there all that blood? Because it's Dwarf Fortress. You've played this game briefly. Although maybe not long enough to see any fun happening. This is just fun happening. Perfectly normal Dwarf Fortress things. It's just like, why does this, this dwarf have its... Uh, why is it blue? Why is it naked? And why are its intestines hanging out? Well, it had a rough afternoon. And it's okay. It could be a lot worse. Because in Dwarf Fortress, you have to go looking for it. Oh, shit. <laughs> Meanwhile, in all of that chaos, somebody just stole an artifact? What the fuck? The thing is... They have to be in my fortress. Because there's no other way for them to get it. That's the first artifact I've had get stolen in this entire fort. That's kind of amazing, actually. How do my forts generally end? Uh, I get bored and kill everybody. <laughs> I can't remember the last time I've actually had a fart fort fall that wasn't, like, intentional. You know what? Whatever. They can have it. I, I don't. I don't care so much. Of de dwarfing? Oh, I don't know. I mean, I could just tunnel into the side of that volcano. What'd you come back to? A perfectly normal fortress? Why do you ask? Saw some guts there. I said, as I said, it's a perfectly normal fortress. We're just doing a little bit of triage. Also, I don't see a man running around with a massive sword with an anime face, so I don't know what guts you're speaking of. Well, it was also combat training. Bad news, Big Bang. You are no longer with us. Even worse news, you're also no longer, you're also not with the, the dead versions of us. So, I'm sorry, but unfortunately you didn't make it. But uh, as far as like uh, de-dwarfing de a fort, um, I always like joke about make or talk about making like self-destruct buttons for forts, but never actually do it. Um, a lot of it is just like, well, I mean, you could just, like, at this fort, I could just open the door. Actually, if I wanted to end this fort real quick, I could just open the door. Um. Hmm. Is undead a category? Nope. I think they're all... I 
I think that's what we're going to do with this. I'm going to um, say only selected do this. And let's just get the undeads to put everything away and everybody else can go do whatever they need because there's so much shit that needs to get put away. And at this point, I think it might actually be better to just get the zombies to do it. So you're going to go do literally anything else. How did I die? Can I get a safer dwarf? There is no such thing as a safe dwarf in this fort right now. Do you still want a dwarf? Otherwise, I can refund that and disable that function. Because generally, people don't like, generally don't want dwarves in the last stream of a fort. And this is probably going to be the last stream of a fort. Yeah, what Salty said. Yeah, exactly, Taiwan. Also, not to be mean, Big Bang, but I told you this the last time. I don't generally like naming a dwarf the same day your dwarf dies. You had a dwarf 30 minutes ago, and now you don't. Let somebody else have one every now and again, you know? I know that you're very up on it and very aware of it, but now would be a hysterical time to gift the dwarf to somebody that you don't like, and then we can... Uh, make the angriest dwarf of the fort who's about to get beaten to death by the captain of the guard somebody, I don't know, unpleasant. You didn't realize he just died? Then why did you redeem it? <laughs> I, I li- mm. <clears throat> This is where you name one blind, right? Am I planning on fending up the siege? We are right now. I don't need to fend it off. I just need to open one door and push a button and the siege dies. I currently have zero plans of fighting this siege, though. They're all just kind of sitting right here. They're kind of cranky. Also, I'm pretty sure they are... They killed an ostrich a while ago, apparently. But no, I have no, no, no plans to do that whatsoever. I did say you just died, and I did mean you literally just died. <laughs> I was being as literal as possible. I don't know. Anyway, basically the rule is, I, I'm just, okay. The unspoken rule here is, right now the way dwarves are named in the fort is really shitty. It sucks, and I'm working on making it better. But working on making it better takes time. So the only real option here is to just try and share. And the problem that I have with the current system of naming dwarves in this chat is there's a very small group of people that just end up getting the dwarves all the time and then nobody else gets them. So you've had three dwarves in this fort, Big Bang. Would you like me to refund that or give it to somebody else? It's your choice. Um, I, okay, right, the, the two or three days after this version of the game came out, on Steam, I named a dwarf and read their description and then they fell down a waterfall and died and froze to death at the bottom of the waterfall instantly. Like, I finished reading it and then dead icon popped up. That was pretty funny. So what, what would you like, Big Bang? Would you like a points back or would you like... To give it to somebody else. You don't have any enemies to name the dwarf after? Hmm. Hmm. We we could do it fun and say like first person to post an emote of your choice, Big Bang. We could uh, make it like a a a a, a, a like um trivial pursuit thing you could ask for somebody to correctly write a quote from a movie that you like or um i don't know uh, guess a number between one and a thousand you know elves probably shower more often than dwarves do <laughs> for whatever that's worth i feel like they'd smell like lavender or something First, oh, first person to insult you gets it. There you go. That's why people are insulted. I was like, what's what's with the insults all of a sudden? That? But it's completely up to Big Bang.
Also, just need to check something. Cool. Okay, so they still can store owned items. And put stuff into barrels and all that jazz. Um. Wow. One, two. Mate. You killed two people 54 times. You know what? Why don't we go with both of them? Big bang. And I will start with the first one that you said. Okay? So Roto MVP and Feline Felon. It's a, per it's a, sad, it's a sad shame that I don't have a cat person criminal or something. Um... Roto MVP is impervious to the effects of stress because he's a zombie and because he's dead. He is shameless because he's a zombie, absolutely unfazed by the thoughts of others because he's a zombie. He is not driven by, uh, he is not driven and rarely feels the need to perceive an amount of success because he's a zombie. He is somewhat scatterbrained because he's a zombie and his head probably ain't there anymore. And he is, has a low sense of self-esteem because he's a zombie. He, because he's a zombie. Uh, he has a tendency to go it alone without considering the advice of others because he's a zombie. He's a, or maybe that's why he's a zombie. Uh, is, is assertive and finds obligations confining though he's conflicted by this for more than one reason. He doesn't seek out excitement because he already had plenty and he need and he has an active sense of humor unlike the streamer. And he uh, doesn't mind a little something special now and again, and he is often nervous. He doesn't cling tightly to ideas and is open to changing his mind. He is quick to form negative views about things and he is pleased by, by his... To, blah, blah, blah. He, he uh, is quick to form negative views about things and is pleased by his own appearance and talents. He's moved by, his nat by natural beauty and he needs alcohol to get through the working day and doesn't mind being outdoors at least for a time. Uh-oh. Anyway. Um, he doesn't do any personality brain because zombie uh, like cinnabar lay pewter and glossier uh his mom is orange who's dead rest in peace his dad is aki who's alive sort of and his young is his older brother is uh well dead so um at least your dad's still around also you're eight years old so you're actually a child i didn't notice that um so i guess you'll run around playing make-believe for the rest of eternity <laughs> i guess i could put you on chores You'd probably be pretty good about that. <laughs> That's also actually very funny that you're a zombie kid. Um, what else do we have? Uh, next up is there, I mean, my feline felon. Okay, feline felon, feline felon. Let's go with, uh, I don't want to give you a second zombie as well. I also don't want to give you a kid. Let's go with this. Um, you are a militia commander, apparently. You're cool at, uh, you killed two dwarves twice, or two, two dwarves a full, complete seven times total. Um, and, uh, Feline Felon. Also, it's party time, apparently. Chat room, it's time to play your favorite party emotes. Don't mind the blood in the corner. It's part of the aesthetic. She is an optimist and often feels strong urges and seeks short-term rewards, lives a fast-paced life, and is stubborn, isn't given to flights of fancy, and she... Oh, hey, the siege ended. That's why they're partying. She does not easily fall in love and rarely develops positive feelings. She can handle stress, and she prefers to present herself modestly. She has quick to form negative views about things, and she is she greets others very loudly. Migrants have arrived despite the danger, apparently. What a bunch of morons. Um, she uh, prefers to present herself modestly and is quick to form negative views about things. Um, she needs alcohol to get through the working day and doesn't really care about anything anymore, and greets others very loudly. Uh, she dreams of creating a great work of art and personally values loyalty, tranquility, and a peaceful day, respects power, and values hard work, and doesn't feel strongly about the law. Marksworth's been found in. Um, right? Oh. Well, shit. Where did the migrants arrive? Ah. How many goblins are still on the surface? Ah. Well, we didn't need them anyway. It's fine. Chuck has been appointed to the position of Baroness of the Veiled Halls. Because, um, well, everybody else died, I guess. Uh, yeah, well, they were migrants. They aren't anymore. 
Oh my god. That dwarf was finally found dead. What a goddamn shame. I think I need to place more tombs. So, I'm actually going to go down here. Do a flip and a barrel roll while you're at it. Let's go Unib. Grab id. Let's unassign these two. He migrated to the afterlife. Well, hopefully I can keep them at least as extra hands. Because that would be useful. But we'll see. But I've got the, um, I'm, I'm slowly putting my intelligent undead on permanent stuff hauling duties. So here's hoping that we can just keep, we can slowly recover the moods of the living and resurrect the dead in a relatively decent time frame. Okay, how many um, invaders are still on the map? Let's just watch these guys. They walk off the map. Also, they killed a dwarf named Cogsack Stop Chamber. Is there a skill associated with using a pickaxe as a weapon? I think they're technically considered mace dwarves, aren't they? Somebody could correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure a pickaxe is considered a mace. Like, it's considered a blunt weapon. But the accuracy at which they hit mining helps. But only with pickaxes. <laughs> is it mining? No, but I'm pretty sure, like, if you tell them to fight in the military, they consider it a, a mace, right? Like, if you force them to use pickaxes as a military weapon in the military, it's a mace, isn't it? Like, they don't become pick dwarves or axe dwarves. They become miners. Okay, well, at least they are leaving. It's not so many. Holy shit, that's a lot of friendly undead. <laughs> oh, there's my, the first of my ghosts, Silob. Uh... S-H-O. Cooler's probably right. I don't know. I, I, I kind of was under the impression that um, they were considered mace dwarves, but... Cooler's pretty damn knowledgeable about this game. Also, if you like the uh, art on my merchandise, that's that's mostly Cooler's handiwork. Except for the one that was Elfie. And, uh, Cooler, I'm, I can't remember if I sent you a DM about it or not, but uh, chat says, Gorlack, good, le arms too long, legs look stubby because arms too long. So. But aside from that, Gorlack, good. I'm just kind of surprised you haven't fit your uh, legendary adventure into one of those arts. Yeah, because it, it, it improves, like, their hitting accuracy, but they don't train... Like, that's why sometimes you'll have, like, or at the very least I've seen this, you'll have a scary thing attack... And then it'll just like barrel through three miners and kill them. And then one of them will just turn around and like perfectly hit it because they don't train any dodging or like blocking or shield or any sort of abilities that would like help them avoid being hit. But they do train like basically everything else. Let's just see what the current job assignments are like. 
Pond of Dwarves and no job. Place to place. Which isn't a bad thing. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this on. Burrow 3. Add everybody to Burrow 3. There's two bads on the map still. Wait for this guy to leave. It was also in the military. Perfect strike to the neck. Yeah, because he, pr he probably had a bunch of mining skill, which made him good with that pick. You already responded to that, did you? Less body, more legs. I prefer the second one color. Where's the... Um, civilians don't really wear armor. They do wear leggings. To my knowledge. And I think they wear metal caps. But civilians don't wear armor. Um, and pro tip, you don't really want your civilians to wear armor. Because you could make, like, let's just say 20 squads... Um, and have them forced wearing a uniform. You don't really want them doing that because they'll get upset because if they're being forced to wear a uniform, then they can't go acquire new clothing. Um, and if they can't acquire new clothing, then they'll get very upset at their old clothes. Basically, you don't really make civilian armor, per se. If you want your civilians to have, like, better quality gear, um, like, value-wise, you can stud it with fancy materials um, or just make nicer clothing but you don't really make your civilians armor. Okay, so now that I've done that, let's go here and type in foot and corpse. And then open this up. Is dying cloth worth it? I don't think so, but value-wise it is. It's just a lot of extra steps. What an odd place to go to. Luxworth practice. I would train them a little bit before you tell them to just run into the caverns if there's actually something scary in the caverns, but... I feel like moods are improving pretty quickly. Want to practice a craft? All right. Um, hmm. Trying to think. What is... You know what? Let's have a Dwarven Crafts Festival. Let's do that. The Crafts Festival is going to take place up here. I'm just going to make... Yeah, sure, granite works. I'm going to make a bunch of workshops here. And I mean a bunch. And I have a question, chat. What type of crafts? Rings, hats, rock, cloth, scepters. Can't equip those, though. If I were making the choice, I wouldn't say scepters, but... Just curious as to what chat thinks. Dice? Again, not really useful for me. But... Because the goal here is to improve moods, right? And so if they can acquire the items afterwards, that allows them to... That improves mood quicker. I think I made one out of a different material, but that's okay. 
Yeah, see, that that's kind of what I was thinking, is like ring, you know? Or it has the right idea. So let's do, okay, so we have, let's do, actually, hold on. I've got 666 cloth, nice. Let's do, hmm. Oh, right, duh. I don't even have a manager right now. Let's go manager. Let's give the job to Amethyst. And broker can be just a robotic cow right now. So people can fill in. And let's go rock rings. And let's say 800. And let's say cloth Earring, 200. And let's say, chat room, can I get a round of beers in chat? Copper crowns, 500. It's time for a crafts festival. Let's make some crafts. And thank you very much for the round of beers, chat. And let's also go through here and get rid of jobs I do not need. Do not need melt object. We'll keep cloth robe. Do not need melt object. We got plenty of drinks. Plenty of blocks. Got plenty of rock blocks. Plenty of green glass, got plenty of that. I can fucking stop making bolt bolts. Um, let's go tasks and then just do this. If you just click cancel on every single job, as long as it's not a construction job, they'll just pop back up when the job gets and the job will just get reassigned. Obviously, seeds are separate. can also start up the clothing again stuff. Um, all right, sweet. There we go. Okay. Trying to clean up the fort pretty dramatically here. What? Why'd those all get canceled? Why I do? It must have been toppled. Well, let's try this again. I'm actually not sure as to what happened, but hey. Oh, you're, you are correct. I did, in fact, cancel a lot of jobs. I thought I didn't cancel any construction jobs, but I guess I was looking at the wrong construction jobs. Because I saw all the coffins and was like, okay, can't, can't do that, but... All right, there we go. We'll do that. Um... There we go. Oh, actually, hold on a second. Something else I have to double check. I was putting tombs down here. Ah, this is not in the burrow. That's that's not good. I do need those constructed. Only if the dwarf survives to the end. All right. I mean, I'm going to try and stabilize the fort, and then I think we'll retire it. We'll start a new fort tomorrow. If that works for you guys, new fort tomorrow. 
Stabilize the fort tonight. Finish up the front door. New fort tomorrow. I've got a uh, tantrum happening. I'd start a new fort tonight, but generally I find that when I start a new fort late at night, it kind of doesn't really matter. <laughs> because a lot of people have to tune out that time of day. Because, believe it or not, a majority of my audience is, like, U.S. and Canada. So, because of that, even though, like, 40% are Europe, Europe doesn't isn't, like, really tuning into streams until a bit after I log out. I think there's, like, kind of this weird dead zone window where only really people from Australia watch my stream. Which is, like... It's like 6 p.m. my time till about 11 p.m. my time, and then other people start to pop in after that. Okay, well, let's go down here. We'll place some more of these. I made two for this dwarf. I also need one for this Feb character. So this this is a good name, the cre creative brindle of crackle of cackling. It's a good name. I like it. Now, if anybody ends up putting somebody on display, then we can resurrect more zombies. But otherwise, that's fine. Ah, uh, that's not that deep. I once didn't find the first cavern layer until minus ninety something. So, and then I found all three of them back to back at the very bottom. It's entirely based on your proximity, proximity to sea level. And I think by default, it has to be at least five levels down. But yeah, it's entirely based on your proximity to, to local sea level. Also, hello, YouTube chat. Hope you guys are doing well over there. Thanks for hanging out today, by the way. I'm also actually kind of curious. Um, did anybody here watch the interview I put up yesterday with the developer of Rift Wizard? Because low-key, those videos are brutal for me to make because they never get enough traffic to actually be worth making. But they're the type of content I enjoy making more than in any other content. So if you want to make my day, um, go pop over to that interview and leave a like and a comment on it. Because genuinely... That is my favorite content that I make. I mean, I would watch it after the stream, but uh, it would mean a lot to me if more people watched and liked those videos. Got destroyed by a cave alligator. Yeah, I wouldn't be too worried if you're not running into the cavern. So, like, that's not abnormal. One of my favorite cavern layers I ever dug into was I played about 30 years in a fortress before going into the caverns. And when I finally made it down to the third cavern layer, the entire cavern layer was full of skeletons and blood. It's one of the most memory memorable breaches I've ever done. Well, I'm going to stream a little bit more Rift, Rift Wizard in a, in a bit today. I think the plan for me for today is it's about 3.30 p.m., which means I've been streaming total for about six and a half hours, about five and a half hours of Dwarf Fort. I think we'll do, I, I, like I said, we'll try and stabilize this fort. I would like to get this number below 10. Um, I don't know if I'll ever fully recover my military, though. Um, but uh, I, I think my plan is just to um, stabilize this fort and then... play this fort for maybe another hour or two and then we'll play a couple of runs of Rift Wizard because I've been very much enjoying like like at Rift Wizard 2 is the first game that I've unironically intentionally played off stream in uh since El Paso elsewhere actually Planter has been found dead oh well that's unfortunate fortunately I can make you go from being undead or from being dead to being undead so let's undead you what's your name 
Ugnet. Well, there's already somebody who's supposedly supposed to be going here, but not really. No, oh, right, duh. Let's just go to here, go to labor, to hauling everybody. Let's see if that allows them to put it on display. Maybe it's the burrow that's stopping it. Oh yeah, no, it's definitely, actually it's a thousand percent the burrow. It's a thousand percent the burrow stopping it. Yeah, let's just wait for all these bodies to appear. And I'll lock it back down. Um, not a ton. I I mean, what, what you missed was, um, you know how when you have, like, neutral visitors around for a very, very, very long time and sometimes they tantrum when they stay around for too long because they, like, can't do jobs? Big Bang? I had a... This fort is the capital, right? So we actually had the queen in this fort at one point. Uh, one of those barons that had been in, in my fort for like, I don't know, six years, uh, tantrumed and killed somebody. And then everybody else killed that person. And then they just kind of like started killing each other. And that would have been fine. It's actually happened to me once before in this fort. It would have been fine. But what actually ended up happening was one of my necromancers was in the vicinity. And then uh, the rest is history. But honestly, like, I don't mind. It's, it's fun. I'm totally okay with shit going crazy. It's not Dwarf Fort unless shit go crazy, you know? Apparently they're making a physical version of the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe. Thank you, email. I'm in an ad break, which is why the game's paused. Does Millennia still have mostly negative reviews? Okay, it's gone up to mixed now. Apparently you have to port forward to play that game online. That's something. When was that? Hmm. Yeah, no, you, you did leave a comment. I did see your comment, Stone, so thank you. Apparently I have to read the last the, 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 the last word story. So hold on a second, chat room. <clears throat> um... Parrots wanted seeds, so they robbed uh, a pomegranate vendor and flew towards home. And then a giant chinchilla destroyed Pompeii, horrified locals and fascinated by the fuzziness of death. Gargoyles love pigeons too, uh, too much, uh, considering chaos that they bless the world with. Uh, blind cheese tastes moldy and... That actually was almost a coherent story. I'm... Very proud of you. You think you will wait a bit? Yeah, I'm wait. Actually, did that game launch into early access? Although it's a Paradox published game, so it's it's un it's unofficial early access. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I my I, my general rule is that generally games are better after a couple of patches, and generally 4x games are good after the second expansion pack. Uh, it's just my Discord server, Vista. No, nothing abnormal. If I can just get this first one resurrected while we're waiting for the others. Tomorrow's the official release? And how are people reviewing it? I don't understand, but like, as somebody who works in this industry anymore, I don't understand what a video game release is now. <laughs> um, like, genuinely, I, I do not get it. Like, uh, wh what is a, what does a video game release mean? 
is a game released when the first early or first early purchaser version is out? Is a game released when the game is playable in the first beta? Is the game released when I, it goes into early access? Is it released when it leaves early access? Should we make a distinction between early access and non-early access? Also, this dwarf is throwing a tantrum. Maybe I should just expel you. You know what? Go live in uh, Color Mine, please. That's fine. Because you're already tantruming. <laughs> Which means you're just gonna we're just you're gonna cause us problems. Putting another item on display. Man, this is efficient. I like this. Okay, another mangled corpse. Let's go. We got two. One of them mangled, one of them not. The game's release is often when a normal, non-special edition, non-pre-order player can play. You know, I don't really like the back-in-my-day games, like, released after testing and didn't release buggy. I, I don't really agree with that, and I also don't really agree with, like, the whole... You know, back in my day, the game games didn't need patches. It's like, no, a lot of that's rose-tinted glasses. But, man, back in my day, you could just buy a fucking video game. <laughs> you know, it's like you do options. You could pre-order the video game and then not have to pay for it in the store if the game, if they ran out of copies. Or you could just buy the video game. That's what I want back. I don't care about your DLCs and your pre-order bonuses and all that shit. Like, keep that shit. Just, like, can we go back to an era where, like, there isn't, like, questions of, like, is that the official release or some other unrelated release? <laughs> okay, this these might not be friendly. This one? Oh no, that's Deller. U D I B. Uh oh. Uh oh. Okay, you're friendly. You're friend. Okay, they they are friendly. They're just not directly on my side. Is there any other items coming to display? Yes. I have to leave these words in here. You see, I'm glad that that's gone. Like, I, I don't... I've, I've never really understood the allure of, like, midnight launches. That was never something I was into, personally. Uh-oh. Did we just resurrect one at the... Wow, we did. <laughs> So this dwarf, there's a dwarf hauling, this dwarf's hauling a corpse, walks all the way, or just a dwarf that just ran this way or whatever, was hauling a corpse, drops it in the doorway, and these guys just immediately resurrect it. That's actually kind of really efficient if they're not, if they're friendly. Uh, is this merchant friendly? Yes. Well, you're a guest, so you just live here, I suppose. Uh, you didn't have regular access to the internet as a kid, and the kid's PC was not connected? Yeah. I mean, my, my parents had um, access to the internet, but our, our, our ability to get on the internet as kids was pretty limited. So this one might not be able to be resurrected because it's mangled, but I think it's mutilated where they can't use them anymore. So now we're just waiting on one more body. From PC Gamer? Like, on disc? Did they send out... I know they sent out demo discs. Did they send out patch discs? Back in your day, you bought LEGO games, medieval strategy games, MMOs, and Baldur's Gate 3. You mean Baldur's Gate and Baldur's Gate 2? Because if you bought Baldur's Gate 3 back in the day, back in the day wasn't that long ago. I thought that was Homeworld Cataclysm that was impossible to beat. 
Yeah, my, my, my favorite example of like games being impossible to beat is um, Outpost. Outpost was literally impossible to beat. You know what the best, like, not, not cereal box, but actually cheese strings game I ever got was? The best freebie as part of a food product game I ever got was... I mean, pretty much. Was uh, Beyond Good and Evil, the uh, Ubisoft game that they swore they would make a sequel to and they never did. Um, I got that in a bag of cheese strings. As far as, like, healthy? Ah, they're fine. They're just chilling. Because we're the villains, you know? Come on, get this dwarf, dwarf's body here before it rots. Eat it. I think that's the last one. Yes. Okay, we'll wait for you to hit right there and then I'll pull the lever. Now yeah, we'll just pull the lever. Snickermancer is standing outside because he's like, I'm in the general vicinity, right? Yes, definitely, man. All right. I just need a dwarf to come here and pull that lever. Okay. Now I'm going to do this. I'm going to go back to this hauling. Only selected do this. So basically, all of the undead dwarves do hauling. Nobody else do hauling. Oh, and there we go. Nice and convenient. I love it when they walk out themselves. This is a former baroness of the Veiled Hall, so Lokum probably isn't a member of my fort then. Nope. Just a guest, but hey. At least you're not dead. <laughs> I'm being good Samaritans. You know, I'm bringing back all of those poor casualties in the Great Calamity back to life. They get a second chance at life. And you know, honestly, it's that's me being uh, the kind necromancer overlord that I am. You know, our, our Duke Geotrack, the merciful. All right, I got a dwarf I got to assign to um, one of these. Yep, this one. Real man Chuck, who has become a baron. Baroness. Has just about everything they want now. Now they have everything that they want. This should pretty quickly give us the opportunity to cheer back up. Like, you know, this dwarf who's apparently just spraying blood out of their throat at all times. I read your name. That's generally how I play this game, Vanilla. I don't really see them as beneficial to the game. I like total overhaul mods, but none of the ones I really liked have liked to play in the past have been updated for this version. And uh, even if they were, they are only really um, compatible with the ASCII version. 
because there isn't tile sets for them. So it would be very difficult to stream because of that. Um, even though I could probably like suss it out, it's, believe it or not, kind of difficult to convince people to watch an ASCII game, oddly enough. Not really, no, because I, the thing is, all mods really are is they're slightly personality different copies of the same thing, right? Like, the modability of Dwarf Fortress can be pretty crazy, but it also, in comparison to the way a lot of mods for other games work, doesn't really do much for me. Like, as an example, in um, Dwarf Fortress, if there's a different type of armor, it's just a different thing I need to make. It doesn't really change the actual gameplay experience for me that much. Aside from now, there's a new type of armor, right? In Skyrim, if you add a new type of armor, that's something else to go and acquire and something else that you can earn and store in your house and do all sorts of other side activities with. And it adds other benefits outside of just, well, now there's a different type of armor in the game, right? In, let's say, like a, a city builder like City Skylines, the more variance in buildings you have, the cooler the game is. In Dwarf Fortress, more factions is just, they still operate more or less the same. And that doesn't really add, like, do much for me. If you like personal customization, then sure. But, like, I think a lot of people who watch my content pro probably figured this out at this point. It turns out I, I stream this game, and I've helped a lot of people learn to play this game. And that's both a benefit and an issue. The benefit is, well, I helped a lot of people learn this game. So, it, it turns out that... Let's, do, let's actually do this this way. Uh, everybody does this. Everybody does this. Nobody. 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 Um, if, if I'm teaching people to play this game, if I have to constantly caveat it with asterisk, this is a mod. Asterisk, this is a mod. It's suddenly significantly less useful, and then I need to uninstall and reinstall mods and, like, not use mods for certain playthroughs so I can make tutorials. That just adds way too much work for me. And because it doesn't really do a lot for me to begin with, I don't really see the point. Like, kind of genuinely. All right, so let's just get as much put away as quickly as possible right now. I mean, if I'm playing games off stream on my own time, I play games kind of differently than I would when I'm playing on stream. Yeah, also that. Also, Dwarf Fortress is a game that has so much variety in the content that's already there. All it's really doing for me, anyway, is, is just reskinning content that's already there. And that doesn't, that literally does nothing for me. Okay, that's good. We got a bunch of empty tombs. So I should be able to get the rest of the crap put away. Yeah, if your back's acting up, go get some sleep. We'll see you later, Basta. It was good. But yeah, if I wasn't a tutorial mastermind for this video game, if I was just a streamer with views, I would probably use some mods more often. But what are you trying to drop off? Is it this book? Odd. Not sure why you were having trouble with that book. I'm hearing my phone vibrating. So, I have really good hearing. My neighbor above me, I'm pretty sure, has a cell phone that they leave on the ground or on like a counter or a dresser or something. And every now and again, I hear bzz, bzz, and keep thinking it's my phone and it's never my phone. And then I take one half of my headphones off and listen for a few seconds and then I hear it upstairs. I'm gonna go insane. Fortunately, like, I guess the audio, the audio, uh, 
work here is pretty decent in a lot of ways, but... God. All of this tra trash uh, removal. What is even in this? This is all the stuff that's currently getting disposed of. A lot of teeth, a lot of bones, a lot of socks. Tally-ho. Mm -hmm. All right. Is your dwarf still alive? I think so, actually. You're not bugging me. If that was the 14th time in the last 20 minutes you'd ask me, that might be bugging me. Yeah, no, you're okay. You're alive. You're eating. Um, your lover is dead. <laughs> Sorry. Um, you slept in a bedroom. It's bliss. You're embarrassed after wearing old clothing. You need new mittens. And new trousers, actually. But right now, everybody's just putting clothes, putting everything away. That's what everybody is doing right now, is just putting shit away. Putting shit away. How do you obtain a necromancer? Uh, you sit around and wait for one to show up. Or you have to obtain a necronomicon and then have a dwarf read a necronomicon. I had one show up earlier in the run, or earlier in the fort, I guess. And then uh, later we acquired the Necronomicon. So I actually have a Necronomicon in this fort. I could just turn it, I could just like unforbid it and just allow any dwarf to read it, but I've been very selective as to who I make into a Necromancer. Yeah, 21 years is pretty standard for my longer forts. You know, maybe I make a really big refuse pile outside. Yeah, that, that happens a lot, especially when, like, they get zombified and unzombified a billion times, Black Flag Redneck. They, like, because every time they get zombified and unzombified, they lose the rights to their tomb. <laughs> And you have to reassign them, and if you don't, then, eh. You know. Um. It was Suited Giraffe that we were trying to make read the book. I don't think Devilish ever read the book, no. But Suited Giraffe, we were trying to make read the book, and Suited Giraffe uh, kind of refused to. Well, the thing was, like, the suited giraffe was incapable of, like, holding and reading a book for very long because he kept, um, what's the word, like, dropping it, basically, uh, because he couldn't, well, what kept happening was, because he couldn't move his arms, because he, he was, like, a quadriplegic, basically, um, it would take him a really long time to read. I don't know why that is, but dwarves that have, like, serious, like, injuries like that read way slower. So the issue kind of became, um, <laughs> the issue kind of turned into a, well, he would just get hungry before he would finish reading and then give up, which is kind of sad, but y you know, uh, so eventually like he just would drop it and try and go get water or like scrounge for food. And so I just kind of gave up at a point. Actually, let's just see what see what jobs are currently being done. Bunch of attending meetings checks out. Bunch of poetry, shit ton of nothing jobs. A lot of put items in tombs and a lot of put items in stockpiles. I wonder. Oh, a dark force of vile has arrived. Oh, there's. A goblin who appeared and disappeared. Got it. Well, if somebody wants to kidnap our children, tell them to be them. Be my guest. I'm sure the children will fight back. All right. Well, let's do it this way.
You're also a zombie. And have magic powers because you're a zombie. Baby is still alive. Well, dead. I mean, is still a baby. Is still being carried by mom, in fact. Also, baby Blueford apparently died in the fighting. I love how we're still putting bodies away. There's something about that that's like really funny to me. So this is just kind of an oddity that I'm noticing. They seem to be incapable of putting bones into some coffins for some reason. I don't know why. Sounds like they couldn't actually get through it. Sounds like your stairs were disconnected somewhere because the dwarves would have taken the stairs. This is what they mean by a knowledge of game mechanics. Um, if you are, like there is a point of experience with Dwarf Fortress where there is no difficulty to this game and everything is trivial. When exciting, crazy, stupid shit happens in this fort, it's because I intentionally let it, not because the game is making it happen to me, right? I could play significantly safer and never have a bad thing happen in one of my forts. But I have a very simple retort to that. What is the fun of that? There is none, in my opinion. That is like the least interesting thing you could possibly do. So because that is the least interesting thing you could possibly do, the last thing I want to do is have a fort where nothing happens, right? DF isn't hard. It just takes a really long time for you to learn the weird eccentricities of how the game controls to figure out why things like what you're describing, Taiwan, is happening, right? So if you are seeing dwarves climbing up a wall, I guarantee you within like 10 seconds of me looking at the problem, I could figure out why they're climbing up the wall, what's causing them to climb up the wall and sort the issue out once I notice it. But you don't know what to look for in the first place, probably. So that is generally player error that causes stuff like that. Dwarf Fortress is not a hard game. It's a very easy game. However, it's a very tricky game to play if you are not used to its weirdness. I'm very used to its weirdness, so I can very easily just look at a thing and be like, all right, okay. I mean, yeah, most fun is caused by player error. So now that I've done that. Interesting. I need to check something. I don't think that dumping an item is a listed job, is it? I was just very confused as to why they're not filling a vehicle and also why they weren't dumping until I turned a bunch of other jobs on, but weird. Now they are, so... Odd. 
Uh-oh. Bunch of snatchers are appearing. I'm assuming that my zombies will just deal with them. I also don't know why they're trying to get in this door. I could probably just open this door. Speed things up a little bit. Okay, so they can push track vehicles. That's good to know. They should also be able to kick track vehicle then. I wonder if that's other jobs. Yeah. I mean, Door Fortress is one of the original make-your-own-fun games, right? I helped you catch a Drathla. So Drathlas are one of the grazers, so you will need to, pat once it's been trained, you will need to pasture it on grass or cave moss. But, um... Yeah, uh, you just need to assign an animal trainer to it by click clicking the little whistle button next to its name in the animal screen. Or I think the other screen initially, and then animals, and then you click the little whistle, you assign a trainer to it. You need to make a training zone, I think, or maybe you don't. Not for initial training, but for higher level training you do. Um, and then after that, it's just a matter of, you know, slowly growing that. And then you slowly grow your population. Um, animals that weren't born in your fortress can never be fully tamed, but their children can be. So if you can get a breeding pair, then you can fully tame them. It will take a little bit, though. I feel like this fort is going to end up with an undead working class and a living upper class that lives off the work. I mean, we're basically at that era, that layer, that level all right now. Um, I have a question, chat. Should I unforbid the Necromancer book? Because I'm kind of considering it. One, no. Two, do it. Three, do it. Four, do it. Hmm. I don't know what's going on with this. I'm going to, um, hmm. go to all of these tombs because I've got a bunch of tombs here that just like are not working and they're like trying repeatedly to put these dwarves bodies into here, but then failing. And I don't know why that is. Uh, it's time to trade. Apparently don't mind Doran's corpse here. <laughs> Sure, he's friendly. I'm also just going to do something to make myself sane. Okay. All right, well, let's go down here and uh, do some trading, shall we? And by down, I mean actually up. Can undead be necromancers? You say that with a kappa. Do you want a kappa response or a serious response? I didn't ask you, Plutorino. Um, I already have undead necromancers. <laughs> is the act, is the response? Um, I've got two, in fact. Uh, necromancer, or things that are cursed, so necromancy or vampirism or were creatures. if they die, they come back as a were creature with their were creature abilities still. Uh, same with necromancers and vampires. However, vampires won't need to kill anybody anymore, so they just retain the combat abilities. I will say, however, be a little wary, and the reason I say that is, um... If you're going to, you know, start resurrecting things, maybe don't do that with were creatures. Because fun fact, if you if you have like necromancers, right, in an area and then a were creature shows up and bites one, 
the zomb zombie wear creatures are significantly more dangerous than normal wear creatures, and anything that gets deaded, including limbs, will appear as a full size wear creature. Um, and then they need to be killed, and they are as strong as wear creatures that are undead, so virtually invincible. So be very careful um, if you are, you know, doing necromancy and stuff around wear creatures. It's awesome. Yeah. It can also end your fort really quickly. Kind of tempted to end this fort that way, but that would that would go against my goal. I want this fort to be the big bad for the next fort. I want to kill this fort myself. With my own soldiers from the other faction. God, there's so much crap in here. Why do I have so many iron gauntlets? <laughs> Why do I have 330 iron gauntlets? There's so many iron gauntlets. And if anybody asks, no, I'm not like restarting this fort because I'm tired of clicking trading, but that is definitely part of it. Yeah, it's one of the most terrifying things I've ever seen happen in this game. Is just like one person gets bit, and then suddenly there's two like zombie, where I, I don't know where Lorises in the middle of your tavern, and you're like, oh well, I guess we die now. Been fun. We had a good run, but our journey ends here, friends. Although we are, I will say, for how bad the moods look in this fort, this fort is weirdly stable still. Like, this fort's teetered a number of times and recovered every single one of them, so. All right, well, that's not too many items or anything. Let's go. <laughs> All right, kids, you're doing chores again. Hate to break it to you, but... Uh... Very least, we need trade good hauling. Oh, also, we have a zombie child now. Oh, hey, Snatcher's on the mapsers. Kind of curious if the zombies will attack them. Nope. Agis Nut. Oh, they got Deller. You know, honestly, I think Deller would have a better life not here, but... It's okay. We saved Deller. Saved. Most dwarves are picking up equipment from the looks of things. Oh, right. Everybody does this. I need everybody to, like, take stuff to and from Trading Depot. Actually, you know what? I'll just do it this way. Um, I'm going to add a work detail. And it's going to be called Trading. Trading slash Other. Um, that's going to be Lever Operation. All these at the bottom. Other jobs. Uh, it's going to be burial because that's pretty important. It's going to be water hauling and vehicle hauling and putting stuff into vehicles. And trade good hauling. So everybody does that, but only select to do normal hauling jobs. And it's going to be cold or, okay, just zombies basically. I need everybody to go trade. Yep, there we go. Trading commence.
Chat, what was the last thing you discovered for the first time that you went, holy shit, that works in this game? <laughs> what a pleasant place you've carved out for yourselves. What an odd definition for the word pleasant. Because I think for me probably was the time that I realized that I could pressurize lava with pumps. Probably was the last time that I was like, wow, that works. <laughs> Or like earlier today when I saw a one of these. Yeah, this weapon rack. Like I, I'd never seen weapon racks work before, but there's a working ra weapon rack right there. It's like kind of absurd. It's like I've, I've literally never seen that actually work before. I've seen armor stands work, but I've never seen a weapon rack, rack work. And it's kind of crazy to me that they do. That is a lot of stuff up for trade. Also, let's just go up to here real quick and just pull this lever. Letting dwarves pick plants in the irrigated forest satisfied. This is the water. Wonder need. Oh, really? Huh. See, I didn't know that. I knew that, like, Wander is satisfied by walking a long distance outside of the fortress, but yeah, I guess that would make sense. That's kind of absurd. I, I had no idea. That is pretty holy shit, actually, even for me. <laughs> Basically, I'm poking saying, hey, chat, can you teach me things? Turns out you can. That is actually kind of nuts. Wow. The more you know, I suppose. Nobles that are not yours but showed up with the monarch are the ones who negotiate with your traders instead of your own outpost liaison. And if the chosen visitor is not there, the diplomat leaves mad. Yeah, I, I, I don't. That that is a odd decision. Like to me, I feel like they should either join my fortress or not. <laughs> like I, I don't like that they show up and then they just never leave or they come and go. Like I, I, if it was like an added need or something, like if I had to make a special guild hall or something, like maybe a nobles guild. Um, and then they join or like if there was something that I could do to like satisfy them Because what happens is they like tend to just slowly go crazy um, And I'm, I'm not a huge fan of that mechanic at all actually Because I don't know exactly when it was added, but it feels like it was pretty recently And link them to the tavern? Oh, I never even thought about doing that. It's not a bad idea, actually. You had a dwarf uh, fall one become the mon in fall one become the monarch uh, through inheritance, and by the time I finished carving out their their room, they were gone. Oh, did they leave for the mountain home? Was that dwarf one of your citizens? They they must not have been, because dwarves can't just leave unless they're not a citizen. It's certainly possible that they were not a citizen. But they can't just leave unless they're not a citizen. So what it, what must have happened was they must have been a temporary visitor who just showed up and visited. I'm actually going to swap my broker up for somebody else. Uh, Stone, you can be the broker. We'll do that. The Fatal Passion. Yeah, no, you'd immediately acquire mayor. Well, you, you generally... The dwarves will elect a mayor when you hit 50 dwarves. 50 dwarves is enough population that they will elect a mayor. Um... But uh, maybe they skip that step if you suddenly have a higher-ranking noble. I don't know.
That's interesting, though. Whenever you become cap capital, you're no longer to do trade agreements with your own dwarven civilization. Is that normal? Um, yes, because you are the mountain home, right? So when you are the mountain home, they are getting your, um, what kind of audio problems? Jesus. Your name's funny. Um, G Zeus. Zeus the G. Anyway, um, you are the mountain home, basically. So people are having trade agreements with you the other way around. Um, you are supposed to be able to have trade agreements with humans beyond that point, and theoretically elves if you are at good enough terms with them. But you should still trade with the with the um, mountain home, but it's normal that you wouldn't be able to interact with them outside of that. Yeah, old stone has lived through it all. Still at it, too. Also, Stone's not a good broker because Stone is a religious individual and thus constantly busy with random passerbys needing stuff. So I'm going to swap out until I find one that can show up and trade. So it's all just buying food over and over. What's the trade agreement? You don't have a good enough value, like uh, association with them. Sometimes, I, here's the thing. There are certain things in Dwarf Fortress I cannot give you a one-to-one -one answer for. And that's part of the beauty of this game in reality. Uh, and this is one of those things that I can't give you a one-to-one -one answer for. Because why does it stop? Well, you're not supposed to be able to have agreements with your mountain homes. And sometimes, if you have a good enough relationship with other factions, their faction leaders will show up and you'll have trade agreements. Like you'll get the list of things that you can ask for specific items. Um, sometimes it just doesn't happen and it might not be happening because their capital is under siege. It might not be happening because you don't actually have that good, a relationship with them. And one of the other locations that is uh, associated with you is currently degrading the relationship with that faction because they're having a dispute over land rights or something stupid. Um, or like the abuse of or treatment of animals or whether or not torture is a good idea. So there could be a lot of things going on under the hood that you have absolutely no idea. You bought a Sennheiser IE 300. I like how I'm just a guy who like is known enough in this industry for like that. Um, I have no idea. If it sounds kind of crappy, maybe. I, DAC would just like increase the volume, wouldn't necessarily make it sound better. Most computers have a decent enough, decent enough sound chip in it that you should be fine, but I don't have that particular like type of Sennheiser's. Mine, I couldn't even plug into the main board because it's got a, too big of a jack, so. Headphones are not my strong suit. I could tell you how a tape deck mechanism works, but but if you're buying like studio monitor quality headphones, yeah, you, you want to get a DAC just in general. This dwarf just show up with like a bunch of animals? Yeah, you kind of did. Cool. I don't technically use a DAC, but I do use an audio interface, so it's acting as a DAC. I think I'm just going to do minimum possible trading. We're just going to, I'm going to give them like one gem or buy one gem from them each time. Yeah, it's, it's kind of difficult to like specifically pin down why an issue is happening in Dwarf Fortress for one reason. This is way more complicated than it looks, right? This just looks like a bunch of icons with faction alignment. If you ever read Legends, Legends is progressing in real time every time your game saves. So everything that every single one of those locations is doing in the background, like someone will tune in and be like, I didn't do anything wrong and I haven't traded with the mountain home in eight years. It's like, okay, well, a bug could have happened and a, a dude could be stuck on your map somewhere. They're like, nope, nobody's stuck on the map. And we'd go through all the pro pro processions to figure out if there's somebody stuck on the map. Nope, nobody's stuck on the map. Okay, well... Okay, so like the mountain home could be under siege. There could be a necromancer tower in a bad spot that keeps killing the caravans before they get to you. Uh, there could be a revolt happening right now in the mountain home, and they're not able to actually assign traders because most of their population is dead. 
Maybe they're having a were creature outbreak and half this population is dead. Maybe they have a vampire outbreak and half the population is dead. Maybe they just got attacked three years in a row by a rock. Um, and each time it killed all of their merchants. Like, it's, it, there's so many things that could be causing it. Like, there could just be a big river in the way. And, like, they just can't get to you. Like, there's so many stupid things that could cause the simulation to hitch and things to not happen as they're scheduled that at some point you just kind of throw your hands in the air and go, well, it's Dwarf Fortress. <laughs> and that's the, the, the point where you realize that you're a Dwarf Fortress player is when you can go, well, that's weird. Anyway, <laughs> on to the next one. Papermaker has been found dead. Eh. So somebody uh, tantrumed and then tried to fight my intelligent undead and then got mauled? I'm not too surprised, Udil. Um, we're going to put your body on display, though, so that I can make you turquoise. Not really, no, Yvonne, because if they're not listed in, in the stream title, they're not relevant. I don't really have chat commands. I never really liked that part of Twitch. Like, just automating conversation is not something that you want. Because usually what that ends with is just people constantly spamming and referencing the chat commands list. If you have a particular question, though, feel free to let me know. Hmm? Oh, the paper maker finally made the papers? Is that the joke that you're making? Cheese for everyone. Notokasa, unfortunately, your, your dwarf became a zombie a million times and eventually stopped becoming a zombie. Pikeston, hello. How's the fort? Um, eh, been better. Uh, speaking of papers, please, I, I played a little bit of Mars After Midnight, which is Lucas Pope's new game. It's neat. It's about running a mental health support group on Mars. For aliens. Well, I didn't kill your dwarf. I killed your dwarf about 400 times in quick succession, along with a number of other dwarves. So, I don't know. Is it really my fault? I mean, probably, but. Yeah, accidents certainly do happen. Come on under the bridge. <laughs> I can hope it's a big bridge because there's a lot of water. Uh oh. There's also still, you know, dead goblins over here. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. So much crap needs to go. Actually, no way to do this cleanly without potentially dropping a bunch of dwarves into the lava, so. 
I'm also going to move these guild halls to just members only. I haven't done this at any point up until now, but we're going to move this to just members only. I realize some of these guilds have like 40 something members, but I really need these guild halls to just be members only because it's getting ridiculous. How, imp how not productive these dwarves are being. <laughs> like I acknowledge it's 100% my own fault, but Let's throw you in here. That. I can't plug my headphones into the raw motherboard because I don't have the right hookup connector. My headphones have this connector. My headphones have this connector, which I don't have an adapter for it to plug it into my keep into my computer, so I couldn't tell you. Wrong plug. That's the mono plug. That's the right one. So I couldn't tell you. Probably sound fine. You don't have to have a DAC, but a DAC works as an amplifier. Technically, you should use a DAC for anything that doesn't use a USB plug. But I don't know. I'm not this kind. I'm not this kind of an audio knowledgeable person. I I know, uh, like antique audio gear and audio hardware, and I know how to repair it. Uh, but when it comes to like, does it, if I don't use a DAC with my headphones, will it sound crappy? I don't know. I've had this same pair of headphones since 2011 and I've always used a DAC. So I, or a, like, if not using a DAC, then I've always used a, uh, an interface. So you do you. If you just keep asking the same question, I'm going to keep giving you the same response, Jesus. And that's not going to go anywhere. I, I don't know. Like, mate, you do you. Go, go to, like, the audio... Go to some audio file forms and ask over there. Or, like, go to, uh, like, slash our uh, headphones or slash our audio file or slash our uh, Sennheiser and go ask those guys. I'm sure they would actually be able to give you answers because I've answered your question a dozen times already and I'm not going to just keep doing this all day. Mm, that's okay. That's why I was up front. Like, I, I could tell you how to repair a tape deck, possibly, but... What's the oldest dwar a dwarf can get and stuff be useless? But I don't understand the second half of that question. Uh, dwarves live uh, somewhere between 150 and 170. After the age of 150, they have the ability to die on the first of spring every year of old age. Natural causes. I'm not an audio snob, really. I like my own audio to sound good to me and don't give a shit what anybody else does. <laughs> Which also makes me rather not helpful when it comes to um, me answering questions about, like, other people's audio setups, because I have no idea. <laughs> I don't know. I don't care. <laughs> you do you, man. I like my audio to sound good. But what sounds good to me doesn't necessarily sound good to you. We were never able to repair the tape. It's all, oh, that sucks. I wonder how it, would how it would tear it. What was the fix? Yeah, same. But I don't talk to friends on mic generally. And still be useful. Dwarves are always useful. Even a dwarf with no arms, no legs, and, like, no ears and no eyes, and most of their skin missing and their fat melted off is still useful. Old pinch roller? I... Okay. Okay. There's somebody that's had, um... I always blank on the numbers of it because there's way too many numbers on the end of it. It's the Nakamichi model that like boots the tape out, spins the tape around and pulls it back in, but that mechanism is broken. It's really cheap. Well, cheap is relative, but cheap enough that I would consider buying it. But like, I don't trust myself to fix that mechanism. So I'm like, you know what? I'll just wait until one has a working mechanism so I can look at the working one. Because that mechanism is broken. I'm like, mm. ah, a wear pig. 
Back on our bullshit again, I suppose. Hmm. That cancels all of the orders to move items to there. I need to follow. Wait, what? Oh, was that you? Hold on. What was the name of the were pig? Uh, oh, never mind. He didn't even get the chance to bite anybody, I don't think. So, he, the were pig punches a chinchilla and hurt the chinchilla, and then the dwarf woodcrafter cold butcher raises its hand and the were pig grimaces. So he stunned him, knocked him over, basically. Um, and uh, now he's no longer a threat. He's the perplexing bear. That's a funny title. Wow. Huh. Holy shit, you've killed one chinchilla here. Anything else here previously? Nope. Well, he's never killed any of my dudes. You're 18 years old? I refuse to believe this. Maybe they don't age once they become any more creatures. Was, didn't feel anything after seeing a chinchilla die. Indefatigable. Mm. Also, what a last name for his kid. Oh, it's dread named. Okay, I didn't see the R initially. I was like, that's kind of dark, man. <laughs> you really wish they had were cavies or were hamsters? There aren't any were variants of tame animals. Because the pig is technically a wild boar. Um, and I don't think there's any, like, vermin. And because hamsters are vermin. There's somebody on the DF forums who periodically mods um uh b -b -b where what what are they called um balls of fluff wamblers where wamblers where wamblers and wambler people into the game and it's something that i kind of adore <laughs> All right. Ay -ay 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 oh, also, it's just a body here. Somebody putting an item on display? Nope. You do? Like embarking on joyous wilds specifically to find them? I think just good biomes in general have them. They don't necessarily need to be joyous. Darius used to be rich, chat room. Congratulations. And thank you very much for sticking around the stream long enough to acquire that once again. Merchants have left. Oh, actually, I know what's going on here. Nothing's put an item on display. Come on. Okay, you know, I'm going to cheat for a little bit. Just because I would like to re 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 retire this fort tonight. Let's just do this for a minute. Let's just get some shit put away. At least until the dwarves are, like, done putting their own personal items away. Because this is getting a wee bit ridiculous. Let's do this for... Until this body's put away. Done. All right. Fast dwarf. Zero. Zero. So 
Now we just need to wait for somebody to come pull this lever, and then hopefully this dwarf will resurrect as a dwarf that's better than the dwarf that they were before they died. By that I mean not constantly tantrum. So theoretically, the only people that should be put <laughs> that should be doing stockpile stuff are children and undead zombies. So zombies and children should be doing stockpile work. Whereas adults that are not zombies won't be. Okay, let's see if this works. Can I assign you gerbs? Yay, I can. Sweet. Go do hauling. After you get out of the hospital. I love how efficient this system is. You know, I'm kind of freaked out by the fact that I haven't had, like, a negative dwarf resurrection so far. There's probably something I'm misunderstanding about the whole mechanic. I'll say Faded Man. What's up? That's a good work ethic, certainly. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, dwarves are reporting a bunch of crimes. Terminal Wetness is apparently tantruming a whole bunch. I think I just convicted a dwarf of a crime they didn't commit. Which means if a devilish potato shows up dead in a moment, that's why. <laughs> um. That's, other, that's something else that's kind of fun, is if a dwarf is, um. If a dwarf is tantruming. Got a dwarf in a fey mood. The dwarf is tantruming. They continue tantruming when they become a zombie. Villain origin story? Oh, this whole fort's been an origin story of some sort. Okay, let's go here and go tasks. And just make those copper crowns and those rings, earrings. But I think I'm actually going to cancel these stone ones. The reason I say that is it's just going to take way too long to haul them. Let's get rid of these rock ones. Permanently, but we'll keep the cloth earrings and the copper crowns. Do all of that. What's up, coyotes? I used to have a friend who had glow-in-the-dark paintballs. And he would shoot them at coyotes. I always thought it was kind of fucked up. But uh, he claimed that they would stop them from killing his cats, so... Which, like, I guess I can see the logic there. You know, briefly again, let's just go back to everybody does this. Probably a better method, but you know, yeah. Actually, hold on. Let's let's do it this way instead. We'll just add refuse hauling to this. Where are you going? Oh, you're going to go pick up equipment. This, All right, so chat, what do you think? What are the odds that this zombie 
makes it to the equipment that they're going to go haul, or gets hit by a minecart. The very real chance they're about to get hit by a minecart and turned into a pulverized zombie. But maybe they'll make it. Maybe it'll fly by right now. Maybe not. Hmm. Well, there's two socks left there. I'm going to forbid those. And his hair. Well, he must have had one hell of a hairdo if it killed his hair as well. I mean, imagine having hair that looks so good. A flame beast could kill it. I couldn't. Oh, wow. Dude, made it. I feel like this is about to get launched, too. And then another one goes this way. All right, Baka. You insist. Uh, your you already explained to me what happened. Your your king died, so you're no you are the capital and are still considered the capital. They just can't. The king doesn't live there anymore. So the the world is waiting for either A, a king to migrate to the capital again, which probably won't happen because the new king will likely stay wherever they are because that's now considered the capital, or um, they're waiting for a new fortress to, to, to form. Basically, you are uh, one of the most important forts in your fortress, but being the capital doesn't necessarily mean that the king lives there or the queen lives there. So what happened? You already explained it to us, which is... Uh, you had the king and became the capital, or became a capital, and uh, then the king died. So you're still a capital. You're just... Dwarf Fortress's definition of what a capital is, it is, is a bit loose. You're like a capital city instead of, like, the capital, you know? <laughs> Kubok, uh, the gem setter, has created a Musharzintartob. Okay. A clear tourmaline amulet and offers it to the living fire. This is a clear tourmaline amulet. All craft or ship is of the highest quality. It is encrusted with oval cut clear tourmalines and decorated with grizzly bear leather and encircled with bands of ostrich bone. This object menaces with spikes of clear tourmaline and green glass. I give... Terminal wetness, the rest of their convictions. And go to the nobles screen. And I'm going to assign that. Yeah. To one of my nobles. The mayor specifically. Nope, there's no way to uh, replace them. That's something that their family has to acquire. And um, Dwarven lineage is a lot looser than, like, Earth human li lineage. So it can be kind of difficult to figure out who actually is going to re who's going to get. Because, like, queens and kings are, like, elected positions. They're not, like, directly a bloodline relation. So sometimes a bloodline relation will get the, the, the job when somebody else stop, like, no longer has it. But it's not guaranteed that the bloodline relation will get the the new position. So it's a bit tricky to point at and be like, this is the way this happens. If you lose, basically, if you're trying to become a mountain home and you lose the king or queen, you've lost that ability. So go back to a save file. Or alternatively, just keep playing, which is usually what I do. Not every capital in a dwarven faction is automatically a mountain home. Is the way I've always kind of seen it. I will say, I'm probably going to do very similar corpse disposal setups to this. And same with closing di clothing disposal. This has been the possibly the best bit of clothing disposal I've ever had in Dwarf Fortress. <laughs> Just allowing them to throw away everything that isn't like higher end quality. Because it turns out all the clothing that dwarves end up wearing anyway is higher end quality. So it doesn't really matter. 
God, this area is just a mess. I'm kind of amazed that nobody's been hit by this minecart. <laughs> the number of dwarves that are running up there. Like, look at all these random socks and things. Good lord. Well, on the bright side, we don't have 40 pissed off dwarves now. Uh, that's bad. All right. Um, so I want to improve the mood of this fort. Let's improve the mood again. Let's set you back to only selected do this. We'll just set this to nobody does this. Dwarves, take care of your needs. Quit hauling. So I realize that's like all that there is to do in this fort is haul. Let's cease. Military off duty. Everybody else go back to their immediately most important jobs as they finish other mostly unrelated jobs. What, me? My fort, Taiwan? I mean, I don't really need to close the door. I just need to disable hauling jobs. The thing is, is there's like 4,000 hauling jobs that need to be done. This is a pretty large fortress, so hauling stuff around this fortress is a slow, arduous process. So at this point, it's actually just easier to just tell them to not do that so that they can go yell at somebody in charge, get a drink, get some meals, get some lunch, get some dancing, get some socializing, go craft an item, like all the things that dwarves need to do. They can actually like get to it now because I'm no longer allowing them to do other things. It's a long haul. Sure. And, you know, honestly, I don't think many of these dwarves will survive the long haul. I mean, look at the average mood. <laughs> like, seriously. Look at this. Look at these dwarves. They are not happy. Like. Man. They are very unhappy. Mutiny incoming? Bet. I think if we were going to have a mutiny, we would have had a mutiny a while ago. We might get some tantrums, but... Outside of the usual already pissed off dwarves, I don't think we're going to get anything crazy. Alright, let's get them inside now. Now we just wait for the dwarves to get inside. We're basically there at this point. Although, something I am going to do, though, is to those of you dwarves who like reading, by royal decree of the Duke of our fortress, The book is now public reading. Um, you can sort of have mutinies. There is, um, uh, in the future, uh, they do want to add, um, coups. So, bad guys, I don't know exactly how this is going to look once it's in-game, but factions that aren't yours will be able to try and corrupt your dwarves and then form a coup, and if they do and they pull it off, theoretically, your faction would change? Um... That would be neat. I kind of hope that happens and makes its way into the game because I think that would be really cool. But um, currently there is no mutiny mechanic. Dwarves can get real pissed and like start fights, certainly, but that's not really me. Um, that's just an angry dwarf who's starting a fight. Which, you know, is its own kind of problem, but it's not really a mutiny per se. Uh, 
Falsner, think about that question for a second. I think you've been watching the stream quite a bit today. Um, if you can't figure it out by uh, simple decipherment, uh, then maybe chat can help you. Um, um, certainly, there is uh, somebody here who might be willing to help you. That or perhaps um, I just ain't the sharpest tool in the shed and um, I can't remember. Well, see, here's the thing, right? Internal Dwarven Civil Wars are a thing that can happen. It's not an intended mechanic. It's a bug and bricks your sieve. It stop like, if you actually have a civil war, which is a thing that a lot of people talk about, it's a bug that literally makes your sieve unplayable. You will never get a traitor ever again, and the entire faction will collapse inevitably because they will just start attacking each other. So you don't really want a civil war to happen at all. Period. In any circumstance. You do not want that to happen. You might think you do, but you don't. So that's not an unfortunate thing. That's a good thing. It's a good thing that they made it so that civil wars don't happen. Um, they added, uh, there is a giant ostrich. Yes, it's in my prison. It's uh, an intimidation tactic. I used to also have a giant wolf, but it actually, no, it's a giant emu. It's better. Um, even scarier. Uh, Australia's biggest, worst nightmare. Um, but uh, simply put, you don't want under any circumstances to have a uh, civil war. So it's not an unfortunate thing. It's a very fortunate thing that they don't. Um, the reason they added uh, tavern brawls in is to break up the monotony of a safe fort, making a safe fort not as safe. Civil war and a loyalty cascade. Loyalty cascade causes like two thirds of your fa of your fortress to just die immediately. Uh, civil war makes your faction unplayable, basically. So, like, if, if we're, like, in the to topic of those two bugs, a civil war makes your faction unplayable because no trading will work, no migrants will ever work again, and you will, um, like, get attacked by your own faction. That's, that's a, that's a civil war. A loyalty cascade is just half of your fort attacks half of your fort until half of your fort is dead, basically. Or, like, let's just say a third of your fort becomes part of a different faction, and it's just really annoying to deal with. There is DF hacks to fix both of those. Although... I haven't seen a loyalty cascade since version 47. I don't think they can happen anymore. Well, I said emus are Australia's worst. A giant emu is Australia's worst nightmare. I don't know what you're asking me. I didn't state any of that of abo above. I just simply stated that a giant emu is Australia's worst nightmare because everybody likes to reference the Great Emu War as an amusing side tangent. You cannot remove a king from power in your fortress. Like, if I go to this button up here and I go to my duke, there's no plus button here to remove them. I could remove the champion down here, but and I could remove the captain of the guard, right? But I can't remove the mayor and I can't remove the king. I can't remove the queen, so I don't know what you're talking about. Removal can happen by accident. There's no, it really can't. I got pecked in the back of the head as a kid by an emu once. <laughs> True story. Uh, we used to know, we, we had some family friends growing up who uh, kept, took care of emus, and uh, one of them did smack me in the back of the head once with its beak. It hoit. Quite a loit. I mean, emus and ostriches are two different species of large birds, so. So, you know, sometimes I'll be reading a line, Texton, and then chat will move and I will finish on a different line. So I just read, NA wildlife is tame. I hear stories from Aussie friends sometimes and it died to a goblin raid. And I was like, what? <laughs> um... I, I think that what you're getting is the over-exaggerations of places that are different than the place that you live in. Um, accidentally removing a duke, I mean, they died from a goblin. Uh, that's not accidentally removing a duke, but okay. <laughs> I mean, you I've, if you want to keep a character alive, put them in a burrow where they're safe, right? So that's, like, 
You being silly, then. Dying to a goblin raid? Stone, I don't know. I've never been to Australia, so I can't speak to it. <laughs> but literally, that's that was the sentence that I read. Because if I don't see the name change, then I don't notice. Oh, that too, Stone, yes. I mean, my experience is this. People are afraid of things that they're not used to. Right? If you're used to something, it's not scary because you're used to it, right? Like, I frequent a, a hotel bar. I, I go there quite often, almost every Sunday. And uh, I've talked with a lot of people from around the world at that particular bar. People from Australia are terrified of our wildlife because we have bears and cougars. The way I understand it is, is wildlife necessarily scarier in Australia? No. But you see it a lot more. Here, like, I could go spend four days in the forest and see a squirrel and some birds, and that's it. Like, I'm not going to see the mountain lion, even if there's a mountain lion in the area. I'm not going to see the bears, even if there's bears in the area, because they just kind of avoid you. At what point were we talking about Australia in this conversation in relation to it being a Dwarf Fortress simulation, Ragnarok? Just because I happen to be playing Dwarf Fortress. We're talking about large animals in Australia. That is that is it. Or animals in general. Scary as the wolves. Yes, but you'll never see them. Right? Like, we have lots of large, scary animals here. But the reality is, where I live, here in this weird country called Canada, there's a lot of fucking open space with nothing there. And most of those animals are pretty shy. And they avoid civilization. So unless you are in getting into a car and driving for four hours into the bush and then sitting silently in the dark in the quiet waiting for weeks and 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 weeks well nobody said that that was me misreading Ragnarok Christ almighty man uh you're not gonna you're not gonna run into that sort of shit like it's I don't know are freaking so big they have health bars I don't know. We we have spiders here that are this big. Like, yeah, we don't have, like, huntsmen or anything, but huntsmen are gangly morons. It's also not the big ones that you need to be scared of. It's the it's the funnel webs. It's the little guys. Funnel webs ain't big. Well, I mean, they're, like, palm of your hand size, but they're not huge. I don't know. This is just a conversation conversation that just kind of makes me go, ah, right. People are very unfortunately bad at realizing that different people are used to different things in different parts of the world. And thus, it's normal to think that other things are scary. But people only speak in absolutes when they speak on the internet, right? So. I mentioned one thing and then automatically we're talking about, you know, something completely unrelated because one person misread a thing, which was me. And no, Dwarf Fortress is not an Australia sim. Just to clarify. However, Unreal World is a very... Un or rather, Unreal World and um, My Summer Car are very accurate Finland simulators... Uh, one of them being, of course, Stone Age, and the other one being Modern Day. Well, modern-ish. Uh, so that's kind of fascinating, Tyson. I grew up in an area where we would have between 3 and 12 bears a day walk through my backyard. Just walk through my backyard. Were they accustomed to people? No, I mean, like, if, if you walked outside, they would walk around you. But, like, you just don't fuck with them. Welcome to Twitter. Horrende. <laughs> <Right in> <laughs> Careful, you sound like a blue check, my dude. But, I don't know. I, I spend a lot of time in the wilderness, and wildlife everywhere is two things. Terrifying and dangerous. 
and you need to learn to be accustomed to living around it. You know, I like there, there's a really fun thing that I like to do. Um, let me do, do Google this first. So in 2023, okay. So let me read this. The most spo the, the most poisonous spider that I'm aware of. There might be a more poisonous one that I'm aware of in Australia are funnel web spi spiders. There has not been a fatality in Australia from a funnel web spider bite. Since 1981, according to Google. Um, okay, let's see how many people have died to cone snails. Those are those are the snails that shoot hooks at, right? According to uh, Gold Frank's toxicologic co tox toxicologic emergencies, about twenty-seven human deaths can be confidently attributed to the cone snail venom. Though the action, uh, actual number is most likely higher. Some three dozen people are estimated to have died. Uh, okay, so three dozen people. I have a question. What is more ups upsetting and terrifying and scary? Pickup truck drivers or Australian wildlife? I have a suspicion. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've almost died to a pickup truck in the last year. Dude pulled a Yui and then pulled up onto the sidewalk because he, like, didn't realize how small of a road he was on. And if I wasn't paying attention, I would have been smacked. So, um, he honked at me and gave me the middle finger, which I thought was kind of funny, actually, and a little bit ironic. He's like, wow, you almost hit me. I was like, and fuck you, too. It's like, okay, fine, then. <laughs> if you insist, man. Only if it's a small PC truck driver like the jackass next door with a lifted kit and exhaust kit. I mean, that's a pickup truck driver. Otherwise, I would have said, like, a, you know... Actually, what 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 what's the term I should use here? Not pickup truck driver. Um, otherwise, I would have said landscaper or uh, city employee or uh, I don't know, self-employed individual or so something along those lines. Well, I mean, he's got to be a trophy something driver because he obviously lost his trophy wife, so. I hate those people. Yeah, I've, I've developed this weird hatred for pickup trucks in the last two years, man. <laughs> it's almost more of an annoyance with, like, the, the companies that make them, though. At least for me. Murph is telling a story. What story are you telling? The dwarf Amethyst, uh, the hopeful, became the champion of living fire. Wow. That happened in 536? Good lord, that was a while ago. All right, so the dwarves are dancing. And prancing around in the temple. They're enjoying their time around one another. Speaking with each other. Socializing with the zombie that is oozing blood out of its... Um, Can I? Okay. This is just so sad on so many levels. This is Odom. This is a dwarf setter, uh, gem setter called Butcher, um, whose heart is broken, and his heart is gushing his blood. <sighs> Man. 
and his left hand is gone, and his right hand is gone. He's lost both of his hands and his heart. What a guy. What a way to go, man. At least he's got friends. He used to have a pet dog. Oh, no, his pet dog's still alive. Well, I can release his pet dog. Let's, um... Let his pet dog go upstairs. Maybe... Maybe you can interact with the pet and be slightly less <laughs> sad. <laughs> Maybe. I kind of doubt that, though. <laughs> Sounds like your divorce would just spraying blood out of your heart. It's a violent divorce. Did you get to keep the dog, though? He has no blood left to bleed. Seems that way, yeah. Dwarves are all going to go store their owned items and help construct the last of those buildings. I'm just going to get rid of some of these squads. Wow. So many buildings need to be constructed, I didn't even realize. I mean, the best metal vocalist of all time is the metal vocalist for Hatebeak, okay? This is a very well-known fact. Which, for those of you who don't know, is a parrot. <laughs> Just look up Hatebeak. Hatebeak is wonderful. They'll never be able to tour, though, because that would be animal abuse. <laughs> Which is bad that I laugh at that, but it's... I, I don't know. I find that shit so funny. It's like, they're not legally allowed to go on tour because it would be considered, like, cruel. I'm just kind of twiddling my thumbs, uh, zombie. I and I don't want to say for certain. Because I know that, like, I could just be like, oh, I will do this for the launch of Adventure Mode. But realistically, I don't know what I will do uh, between now and the launch of Adventure Mode. And the reason for that is I don't know if I'm going to need... I'm probably going to need to make a new world in order to get all of the new features. So probably just keep playing this fort and, or this world until then. Um, I mean, I'm going to retire this fort tonight. But probably just keep playing this world until Adventure Mode comes out. Um, and then after that, I, I don't know what I'll do. Because I can't really plan for something when it's not entirely positive yet. Um, whether or not... I will need to make a new world. No, right. do you have any plans? I know that I've definitely seen some people being like, oh, you know, I'm going to adventure around this fortress that I'm building right now, blah, 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 blah. And it's like, well, I mean, I would like to do that, but I, I would also like to see what's new. Oh. I think that's a higher priority for me at the very least is seeing what's new. So, not play it? Oh, you have a vest on. Can I make vests?
Make 140 cloth vests. At least we have dwarves socializing still. Slowly the wind knows in the beginning with the fenced pumpkin. I do have to say the fenced pumpkin might actually be... Fenced pumpkin might actually be the best name, the best randomly generated name I've had for a tavern. And pumpkin, by the way, for anybody wondering, is still alive and well. Our snapping turtle. I retire forts all the time, what? What's the quotes in Kappa for? Uh, I mean, the, the the secret Tyxton is like generate a bunch of worlds. Oh, that's fine. The, the, just just hear me out for a second. The secret is generate a bunch of worlds until you find one that you are interested in enough to stick around. Um, I think it's very easy for people to just like not do that. But just find one that you think is interesting enough that you want to stick with it for a bit. And I find that's that's usually how you end up with... Uh, and end up having the best time. Is find a world that you want to spend time in. So wait until the next update, basically. Wait until April 17th, and then maybe generate a new world. Although it's just going to be in beta, so who knows? Maybe it'll be super crashy. Dwarf wants excitement. Mate, we've had enough excitement. Scabbled can't find my zombie black. Pluterino has uh, become a necromancer. Uh, which is kind of funny because Pluterino was one of the people who said no. No, I I don't want to I don't want to become a necro no don't make everybody into necromancers. But uh, it begins. Rolf should become a necromancer so that they can carry their baby zombie for forever. And also, at the end of the day, because I haven't said this enough, chat room, thank you very much to everybody who's tuned in. Anybody who's gifted subs? We do have three gift subs on the leaderboard, so that's at least three. Um, and anybody who's cheered bits or resubbed or prime subbed or followed the channel or did the super chatted things or became a Yubtub member or, like, ran in circles with your hands in the air screaming you should watch Blind IRL on Twitch or whatever you've done. Because if, if you guys didn't do any of that, um, this channel wouldn't exist in the format that it does. Because And because you guys hang out and do what you do, I get to have the coolest job in the world, which is playing video games on the internet. So thank you, everybody. Seriously. You have a hat? I see your hat. Maybe, like, Twitch just didn't load it. it does do that sometimes. Making some more cloth vests. And, of course, you know... If you do feel generous, there's always people that could use ad-free viewing. As your streamer here tries slowly to uh, con chat into gifting subs so that I make it back up to 1,000 subscribers at some point. But even if I never make it to that number again, thank you for being here regardless, chat room. I don't want to do that. do want to do that, though. Darren, thank you for gifting a subscription. Fancy that. Your hat is showing on you. I don't know, you got a nice sombrero for me. But thank you very much for checking out a gift, Darren. Cheers, mate.
It's almost April. Holy shit. It's like, that's actually like the craziest realization I've had all day is like, oh my god, it is actually almost April. Meaning we are almost, in fact, into adventure mode season. Or if they're going to go pick up equipment, probably going to go equip vests. That behind on work, eh? Devilish. I'm actually really curious about adventure mode because if adventure mode comes out and does well, it might compensate for the <laughs> normal summer problem that my channel has, which is um, this might start off sounding strange, but makes sense in a second, I swear. I have a, a generally not kids audience for this channel. The audience for this channel is generally in like, you know, late 20s, 30s age category, right? Which is fine. There's no problem with that. However, what it does mean is in the summer, uh, people in that age category tend to have kids. So in the summer, uh, a lot of people uh, don't watch my stream as much because they are busy with their kids when school's out. So like spring break is a very slow two weeks for me every year. Like if, if I go back like five years worth of analytics of my channel, it's like spring break sucks every year. When, <laughs> when kids are not in school, my view counts drop. And it's like, I wonder actually if like April is going to compensate a bit for that. Maybe. And give us a, a boost walk going into the into the summer season. Cheers, head. Or head booker, I think is your name, over there in YouTube chat. Glad you like the tutorials. I ain't gotten I got I ain't got none in the summer is your off time. So when you're around at the stream the most well, hey yeah, you get to you get to help comp help help me compensate. It's great. I'm totally fine with this. Works for me. You know what? I'm just going to clean this place up a bit. Please do not mind the rampant cheating that is about to take place. <laughs> that was like 1,400 items I just demolished. How many items down here do you think I'm about to destroy, chat? How many items do you think that is? Just guess. Just type in a number. How many items do you think that that is? 500? Ooh. 2,200? Okay. YouTube chat, do any of you guys have guessed, guesses? 10,000? I don't think it's that much. I'm thinking it's around the 3,000 range. Two thousand eight hundred forty-one. I think Big Bang was the closest. Oh, I also didn't even select all of them. Okay, hold on. <laughs> I missed the bottom. Um, plus 156. Yeah, no, um, you were almost on the money with that, Big Bang. Well done. Also, speaking of Big Bang, apparently you are stealing items. Um, <laughs> I don't know how I feel about this, but you're apparently just going around stealing items in this fort. So that's kind of funny. You are a ghost currently. Big Bang the Third is uh, flapping around my fort in, in ghost format, um, destroying stuff. Speaking of destroying stuff, I'm going to destroy some more stuff now. I just want this fort to look clean for the very end of it. And I'm just kind of accepting that we're never going to actually get there. So I'm using DF hack to clean things up. Oh sweet, that command doesn't kill artifacts. That's good to know. Boom.
Turns out you can take it with you when you go. Come back, grab your favorite items. All right, well. Dwarves are still putting weapons inside. But your, will your cats hunt it immediately? I, do cats hunt tame vermin? I'll be honest, I've never paid enough attention to actually tell you. <laughs> I've never, I, I've never cared. I've never really thought about it. Um, I would hope not. But maybe? Okay, so not that many necromancers in the fort, actually. Big Bang the Third has been put to rest now, though. So that part's good. All right, chat room. Um, This is the fortress. A glorious fortress. This is the Fortress of Subtle Scribe. A fortress that I've spent a rather large number of hours in. I think about three weeks of gameplay was spent here. I'm going to do something real quick, which is save and continue playing. And we're going to call it a, a, a su... I've also learned that I don't know how to spell the word subtle. A subtle scribe. This is now officially the final save for this fortress. When this save is done, I'm going to retire this fortress. Is there anything you guys would like to see or check on before I retire the fort? It's only 30 dwarf bucks? I don't know, that's pretty cheap. I mean, you could just, you could probably put it in a glass terrarium and keep it in that. How many graves do I have? I don't even know how I would check that number. This fort has been a lot of fun, yeah. How many, how is, how is your lich? Uh, okay, so graves, lich. I can count, graves shouldn't be too hard. How many artifacts? Is there a list of that anywhere? I know that there's like the objects list, but I don't think it gives, I'm, I don't know if I want to count them. A lot? <laughs> kind of a lot. Plus, not counting all the ones I stole. Um, brr. Uh, how, how, how many artifacts? A lot. We'll, we'll, we'll just go with a lot for the artifacts. Can you... Can, can I the lava cannon one last time? Okay. What do you want me to lava the... Uh, to, to lava with the cannon? Ooh, I could, I could, I could, I could k k kill off my bear population real fast, um, but that would be kind of mean, I think. I'm kind of tempted to do that. I'm not gonna lie. Just like tell all the bears to go line up in front of it and be like, "Fire the cannons!" But that'd be kind of that. That would be barely even dwarfy. But let's see what we can do. So Telenartho wants me to check the Lich. Um, you are completely neutral. You don't feel anything. Um, you are still married to Can't Find My Zombie, I think. And you do have two kids. Uh, Can't Find My Zombie still associates you as her husband, which is good. Um, and uh, the Brown Spire is your full name. I did one of those in the toilet last night. Um, you... Can't find your 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 um, wife can't find my zombies. Also pretty okay, um, and you're currently socializing, and uh, ch this this is very fitting. This is very fitting.
Pokemon chat. This is very simple. Go grab your favorite dancing emote and post it in my chat. Very simple. Just everybody has to take part in this. You know, we used to get just like walls of multiple pages of these. I feel like I haven't trained you guys well enough recently. That or I've just been in a fortress that doesn't have a lot of dancers. So go grab your favorite dancer party emote or anything that you think is related to one of those things and then post it in my chat. Get that use of lamp. You know, it's the thought that counts, Falstorn. Also, Falstorn, now you have a subscription. You got the fun better. Shout out to Rolf over here, the bone doctor. Oh my god. Rolf was in the middle of that chaos and killed... Okay, actually, hold on. So, so the, 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 the baby here? The insane undead baby. Killed this zombie four times. I didn't know that. <laughs> that's funny as hell. Um, yeah, that's very funny. So if anybody wants this save file, I'll try and remember to... Uh, well, if I don't do it tonight, I'll do it tomorrow. I will stick it up on my Discord in the DF save sharing room. But I think now is the time for us to say good night, my sweet, sweet fort. This has been a fun fort. We will start a brand new fortress tomorrow. Brand new. Nice and shiny. You missed the graves? Yeah, we need to go count those. You are correct. So I'm not going to count all the um, the non-designated graves, but what I can do is this. Multi. 28 plus 171 plus. Three, four... So 28 plus 171 plus two more. I have not put some down here. I think I did. Plus 10. So 28 plus 171 plus 10 plus two. And uh, I never did get the public tavern done, but oh well. Plus all these down here. Plus 45. That's how many tombs we have. You got it now. Plant <laughs> was embarrassed dwelling upon watching a performance. I know the feeling, dwarf. I know the feeling. Goodbye, subtle scribe. You were a hell of a fort. And now, before you guys go, well, time to tune out. Streamers done. Nope. All right. First off, say goodbye to the VOD. Or YouTube. It's okay, though, YouTube. We're, we're sticking around. I will be around for like another hour and a half, by the way.
I already have an idea for the next fort. I know what faction we're going to play. We're going to play the Rack of Lobsters, which is the faction that was just at war with my fort. We're going to be close enough to fight with it. The plan is to fight my old fort. Come on, chat. It's very simple. Say goodbye, YouTube. Come on. Sheesh. I can't put the marker down until I get some goodbyes. There, there we go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can you do a gobble now, too? You are not a tier two subscriber. That's for tier twos. Gobbles is tier twos. Same with the cheeses and everything. Or Patreon. All right. That's that. I don't, gift, I don't give it to gifts anyway. So, like, if you get gifted a tier three sub, I, I won't let you have it, mostly because uh, it's a thing that you have to pay for. <laughs> It's a thing that I give to paying subscribers. This one's way better. And even then, it's hard as hell to, con to keep track of. Cheese for everyone! Respond to that text. Building management stuff. <laughs>